So everyone knows what Naruto is. You either watched it or know someone who watched it. It was about a boy who was being mistreated by his village and was probably depressed because he was alone for most of his childhood. He had no parents or friends and no one he could go to for help. He would play pranks in order to get the attention of the village, but most of them brushed him off as an annoying brat. So he made it his life goal to get the village to acknowledge him and become Hokage. I started watching Naruto around the start of Shippuden. I had to catch up on DVD and I watched it through Kiss Anime and and probably other means throughout the years like on YouTube but in Spanish subs and 360p video quality. Today should be October 3rd, 2022, the 20th anniversary of the first episode. I was thinking about ideas on how to celebrate it because there's already a lot of videos about Naruto. There were tier lists, recaps, power scaling, explained jutsus, reactions, and story videos. But I don't think anyone has ranked every single episode from Naruto and Naruto Shippuden. I don't think anyone really wants to go back and watch the fillers. So if they're being too 220 episodes in Naruto and 500 in Shippuden. This is my ranking of all 720 episodes of Naruto. Number 7, 20 through 708, all of these damn recap episodes. So if there's one thing that I hated the most about rewatching Naruto, it was the recap. There was already 700 episodes and there were 13 episodes just recapping the same episodes and scenes are just pointless. I'd rather have filler of anything else than seeing the same thing. So while these episodes aren't the worst in terms of the story or show itself, the fact that it even exists is what makes it bad. There's 4 episodes on part 1 of the series, a top 5 battles, and part 1 for some reason, Konohamaru's special report from the forest of death, Naruto recalling his rivalry with Sasuke while he's running through the trees, Sai gets a day off and flashbacks to his time with Team 7, Sugetsu and Jugo get through their own recap when Hebi at the time were coming together, Hayate during the war filler stuff gets his own flashback episode, why the hell not, in the Kakashi Anbu arc, they show scenes from his training with Team 7, if you skip the Six Tails arc then Urakata tells and recaps the entire arc to Naruto, and then there's a slideshow with the Nine Tails and his perspective being inside Naruto which is the only good thing but it's shown through the same scenes. Number 707 through 697, 11 episodes from the Jiraiya handbook arc. This filler arc is the worst because it's fan fiction. Tsunada reads Jiraiya's book and he rewrites the Sasuke retrieval arc, a little bit of the pain arc and remixing a bunch of characters like Toby is now Neji's dad. There's a team Jiraiya with Yahiko, Nagato and Konan. Sasuke still wants power even though he has Hitachi in the clan. Naruto has his parents, all the teams from Konoha go on the same mission. This sounds like it could be fun, but it's not. It means that Jiraiya is a horrible writer if you wrote this. Number 696, Truth from Naruto Shippuden, episode 458. A part of this episode is wrapping up the Itachi arc, but that's not important. Zetsu betrays Madara. I still feel the same way when I first saw this. It feels like Kaguya just replaced Madara as the final big bad. Madara was mentioned in the first episode of Shippuden and was a statue in the final valley. It just made sense for him to be the final villain because of all the buildup. Kaguya was mentioned in episode 381 when the Divine Train first came up. And while I don't mind Kaguya as much now as a character and bringing her in to be the mother of all chakra I still can't get over coming in kind of left field and just completely removing Madara out of the picture. I guess Kishimoto wanted Zetsu to do something and not have him just stand around and wait for Madara to win or something. Number 695 Sakura's feelings from Naruto Shippuden episode 206. What did you just say? I love you Naruto. Sakura confesses her love for Naruto and all of it was so that he can remain out of the loop because everyone including Sakura agrees to kill Sasuke. I don't mind Sakura but was there not another way for Sakura to do this? Maybe just don't tell him. She's treating Naruto kind of like an idiot as well. He even says he doesn't believe this. Like it's just ridiculous. And she continues to lie. She didn't even inform Kiba and the others about this plan aside from even Killer B couldn't save this episode with his rapping and singing. Number 694, Simulation from Naruto Shippuden Episode 38, the Tenchi Bridge arc was already going at a really slow pace, so to make the pacing even worse, there's a simulation episode where nothing mattered. Team Kakashi goes through their meeting of the spy and then it cuts back into the woods where Naruto once again says he doesn't like Sai, and that's the entire episode, just completely wasting time, really long shots, Naruto saying the same thing, so I just wasted my time watching an episode where nothing happens in a already boring arc. Number 693 and 692, Quest for the Fourth Hokage's Legacy Part 1 and 2 from Naruto Shippuden Episodes 170 and 171. For some reason, during the pain arc, there's two episodes of filler in between when Naruto meets Nagato and Nagato tells him his story. And these episodes not only ruin the momentum for the pain arc, not even good filler. It's about the search for the Fourth Hokage's Legacy, Naruto and the others find a piece of paper or something. I don't know, I forgot, it's useless. 
Number 691, Beast Alive Again from Naruto Shippuden Episode 28. If you thought Team Guy fighting their clones during the Kazakage arc was useless, then you're gonna love this episode because you see Guy punching and kicking his clone, Lee doing Hurricane Leaf to his in a tree, Neji is using Gentle Fist and Rotation, Tintin is summoning Ninja Tools, and you have to watch this over and over again for 22 minutes. Number 690, Impossible Celebrity Ninja Art Money Style Jutsu from Naruto Episode 174. Naruto has to watch this boy who uses money to solve all of his issues and it's kind of annoying. It went on for so long with the money that I thought he wasn't going to learn anything from Naruto. But in the end, the boy tries to be a ninja and saves Naruto with a rope because he's his only friend. However, he still uses money to solve issues. So while he's friends with Naruto, he will still be annoying to everyone else. Number 689, Eno Scream Chubby Paradise from Naruto episode 192. Eno has to pretend to be another person because the bride doesn't want to meet her partner just yet because of the way that she looks. Eno is a person that looks similar to her. It's an episode that I don't care for. It's more screen time for Eno which is good but aside from that, Eno has to suffer meeting a man she doesn't know and pretend to love him. I'd rather have her do something, you know, ninja oriented. Number 688, The Appearance of Strange Visitors from Naruto episode 161. I was initially excited when this episode was on. It was going to be a Guy and Lee episode, but then it turns out to be an imposter episode where two guys see them and decide to dress like Guy and Lee. They walk around the village and everyone except Naruto knows that these guys aren't Guy and Lee. It takes Naruto to push them out with Guy and Lee's extreme training and kind of the way that they act to get out of the village. So I was just disappointed that Guy and Lee were in the episode, even though initially it was like oh this is gonna be fun love guy and lee but it wasn't that Number 687 and 686, the directive to take the Ninetales and Naruto vs Mega Naruto from Naruto Shippuden, episodes 376 and 377. There's two episodes where Mega Naruto faces off against Naruto, Orochimaru created the Mecha so that it can destroy the Leaf Village. I think I remember seeing ads from one of the games and Mecha Naruto is in it. Kind of a way to get more people to play the game by dedicating two episodes on it. It has a cool fight but I don't care about a Mecha Naruto that ties into one of the games, especially after seeing the Kakashi and Obito fight going from that into two weeks of hey let's mess around and look there's Mega Naruto guess what he's also in this game Number 685, the number one hyperactive knucklehead ninja joins the fight from Naruto episode 14. Pacing is what ruins this episode. There's like 6 to 8 minutes of recap to start the episode and then the episode actually starts. Most if not all the episodes of Naruto starts with the minute recap from the previous episode just to fill in time. Naruto and Sasuke are inside the crystal ice mirrors. Sasuke is using the fireball jutsu and we find out that Haku doesn't really want to kill them. Meanwhile you have Zabuza, Kakashi, and Sakura just standing outside doing nothing really, talking, just you know, filling in the runtime. Number 684 and 683, hit it or quit it, the final rounds get complicated and Dancing Leaf, Squirm and Sand from Naruto episodes 63 and 65. You can kind of skip these two episodes because nothing happens, it's just a lot of waiting around for Sasuke to arrive through the arena. The fourth Kazakage is pleading for Hiruzen to put this match on hold, Naruto pushed Shikamaru down for his match, and then Kakashi and Sasuke comes in with the Dancing Leaf to show off how cool they are. That's it, not missing much. Number 682, The Fake Smile from Naruto Shippuden Episode 36. Why is there a hot spring episode in the middle of the Tenchi Bridge arc? Why is Team Kakashi still talking about Naruto not liking Sai or Sai not working on the team and just all of them just don't like each other or whatever, you know? Just why? And why is this arc so bad? In pace, another wasted episode just hanging around. Number 681 through 679, three episodes from the 12 Guardian Shinobi arc. So they have zombies in this arc. It's a version of the reanimation jutsu, but they have white eyes, blue skin, and move kind of like slow zombies. Furito and his team summoned them to destroy the village because he was a member of the 12 Guardian Shinobi and he portrayed the leaf. And Asuma quote unquote killed him a long time ago. Furito is the leader of the group and has a cane. Fudo is the one with the rock and earth ability. Futen, Futen, is it Futen? Has a genjutsu loop jutsu and Fuka loves her hair. Everyone in the village just fighting zombies while Furito demands Sword to destroy the village but Sora wants to protect the village and beats Sora with his cane mainly because it's revealed later on he's his father. Number 678, Hopes Entrusted to the Future from Naruto Shippuden Episode 413. The filler tuning exams ended in a weird place. After saving Gara and Fu from the bald man, everyone decides just to end it and everyone we know like Sakura, Neji, Ino, and Choji only get promoted to tuning or higher because they had to. So none of them finished or proved that they were better than the last exams. It makes the entire arc useless. During the time skip, everyone except Naruto were tuning or higher. I thought seeing that was going to be cool 
cool and see them fight something or whatever but no they just safeguard and food and that's it the only reason the exams happen is because Tsunade wanted to draw out the Akatsuki Number 677 and 676, Moonlit Night and the Night of the Tragedy from Naruto Shippuden episodes 455 and 359. While these two episodes are from different arcs, it's about the same incident, the Uchiha massacre. We get to see Itachi's perspective of killing his clan and his mindset beforehand on not knowing what to do and then being given two horrible choices. The other perspective is Kakashi but you still go through Itachi's perspective. And then Kakashi and the Anbu cleaning the massacre. My issues with these episodes is that we see the massacre way too many times in the series we see it during the final valley after itachi dies these two episodes itachi shows sasuke the truth in the war arc episode 455 is better animated when itachi goes through killing his whole entire clan and him crying to his mom and dad that is still really good and is better looking than the first time where itachi shows sasuke the whole truth but after seeing it so many times anytime it cuts back to it i just check out and want to skip through it Number 675, Orochimaru's Return from Naruto Shippuden, episode 341. So Orochimaru's back because Sasuke needs him to reanimate the previous Hokages. Having him back always felt weird. Couldn't Sasuke have found another way to talk to the Hokages? I guess not. No one else knows how to use the reanimation jutsu. He just came back and was not punished for any of the things he did after the war. He invaded the Leaf Village and experimented on people, but in the end was let go. Like, I don't know. Just having him back, I guess, seeing through the eyes of Kabuto. Buto, but seeing him trying to achieve everything did not work so i guess that changed him sure i don't know don't really care for all that too much it's just okay it's more like oh he's back all right Number 674, An Invitation from the Sound from Naruto Episode 109. Sasuke decides to leave the village and while he's on his way out, Sakura waits for him and pleads not to leave and confesses her love for him, even seeing that she will go with him. So she's not written well in this moment. She's willing to leave her friends, parents, and village for a boy. Like, god damn. You want him that damn bad? It's ridiculous at this point. At first it was like, okay, yeah, she likes him and Naruto likes her and okay, whatever, you know. Seems like some fun moments here and there to actually use it here and be like, I guess a vital moment for her is just not good it's ridiculous at this point sasuke knocks her out and leaves the village with the sound for Number 673, The Burden from Naruto Shippuden episode 214. Sakura has a plan to kill Sasuke, but before she does, she wants to knock out Kiba, Sai, and Lee so that she can go alone. And then when she's face to face with Sasuke, she can't do it. So why have a plan in the first place if you're not going to commit to it? Comes in to save her and his interaction with Sasuke was cool, but Kakashi now knows what the third Hokage meant. Trying to ignore Rochimaru, seeing that he was a bit off, but try to, you know, just ignore it. Be like, he's a good kid, grown up, and now has to kill his pupil but sakura again i don't know why she does this has to interfere and once again almost gets killed by sasuke but this time naruto comes in to save her making sakura look kind of dumb her plan didn't work she didn't commit to killing sasuke it's her former teammate i get that but if you're willing to knock out your teammates and lie to naruto in his face then you better commit and she didn't Number 672 and 671, Reunion and Title from Naruto Shippuden episode 51 and 53. We saw this reunion back in episode 1, but now we just have the context as to why Kashi isn't there and why Yamato and Sai being there makes a lot more sense now. But because we saw this already, it feels like I'm rewatching the same scene again. And after Sasuke leaves with Kabuto and Orochimaru in a very cool fire technique thing, Naruto feels like he's still unable to get Sasuke back. And it makes his training with Jiraiya feel like nothing happened in between the two and a half years naruto just got better in terms of the basics and learning how to use the shadow clones better that's really it seems that sasuke got way more stronger at least the way it ends is cool where sai decides to finish his painting of team kakashi Number 670, For My Friend from Naruto Shippuden episode 261. Before the war starts, there's some inner conflict between the allied forces, which makes sense. Some of the villagers aren't going to forgive the other nations for past wars or events, but Gar's speech is able to unite everyone. And I think there could have been a story in the background where there's still some, you know, tension and conflict throughout the war, and you can slowly have every nation working towards being an allied force. And then maybe one moment like Madara showing up is what finally unites everyone. That that would have been way more interesting to watch than Gara's speech and then everyone's like, okay, you know what? I forgive you. Have every nation work towards being a team and being an ally force. <gasps> <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Number 669, the ties that bind from Naruto Shippuden episode 364, Neji's death. So there should have been a lot more deaths in the war arc. There are a lot of people that died, but characters that we know and care about should have died in a significant way, like Guy. After opening all the eight gates, maybe most of the five Kage die. In order to save the future, Tsunade having a moment of a Sakura and passing down the 100 sailings technique, something like that. Shikaku and Inoichi dying. That moment with the Ten Tails Beast Bomb going towards HQ was a really good moment and then cutting to Ino and Shikamaru's reactions. So when looking back on the characters that we know and care about, Ineji is the only one that died. Kind of feels like not a lot of people died even though there were because it's war but again characters that we know and care about. Neji, Shikaku, Inoichi, I guess Obito but aside from those three I think that's it right? The very important ones? I might be wrong on that but this was war and clearly people should have died a lot more. Number 668 through 664, five episodes from the arc from Naruto. This is the final arc from part one of the series. It's kind of a remixed version of the Sasuke retrieval arc. The sand is going after the four celestial symbol people. I think they have tech or something like that. Sharing the same powers. The leaf is helping them. There's individual fights with different pairings. These people combine their powers in order to take Shukaku out from Gara. And I do like Gara's relationship with Matsuri. She's the only one who went to him when all the students students were picking and training, everyone is still scared of him and being able to be a teacher goes to not only Matsuri but also Tamari, Konkuro and the others that he's not really a monster, he is still a human being. Also the last episode is half filler and half canon so if you didn't watch all the filler from 136 to now then you're probably going to be confused when you see Gar facing off against a guy who's floating, Jirai takes Naruto on the road for training to end off the first series. Number 663 and 662, Forbidden Words and Golden Bonds from Naruto Shippuden episodes 269 and 270. The Gold and Silver Brothers are introduced and I don't know who they are. Don't know why they are introduced during the war when there's already a bunch of reanimated. Apparently, they were swallowed by the Nine Tails and ate some of its chakra. One brother has a fan that summons most of the natures and the other has a sailing sword, I think. Either way, they're lame. I don't really care about them. It takes Darwi and Team 10 to take them out. I do like that this unit of the allied forces is waiting for Ino Shikacho to show up and help them out being the new team Ino Shikacho. Number 661 and 660, one worthy as a leader and the three questions from Naruto Shippuden episodes 397 and 396. They redo the questions in the filler tuning exams arc but just not as interesting or good. Shikamaru is the proctor and they have to answer three questions but then it leads to Neji tapping on the walls for some reason to get the answers in order to pass the first test but at least I get to see the other ninjas and how they deal with the exams like the hidden rain team who's on the orders of pain or Shira. Number 659, the successor from Naruto Shippuden episode 468, Hagaruma chooses Ashura as the successor and it kind of seems like Aindana didn't like the fact that he was chosen and wanted to go to war with his brother and reincarnate for generations. Black Zetsu obviously had some influence on Aindana's behavior and need for power and ruling the world by using fear and power but still it's like that's it? Alright. The stone tablet that Hagaruma left behind, Zetsu messed with it so that Madara, Itachi, and any other Uchi can fulfill Zetsu's plan to revive Kaguya. Number 658 through 654, five episodes from the Mizuki tracking mission arc. Does anybody remember Mizuki from the very first episode of Naruto? Because I sure did because I completely forgot about him when it got to this arc. Apparently he knew Orochimaru and was in cahoots with him about the curse mark or a version of the curse mark where it turns him into a goddamn tiger. He had a wife, her name was Subaki. She knew about the plans to steal the scroll and all the meetings with Orochimaru which is what cause his change and had hoped that one day he would change but sadly that day would never come. Ino Shikacho somehow gets involved to face off against the legendary stupid brothers who are twins that are big, hungry, and stupid. Number 653, Clone vs Clone, Mine Are Better Than Yours from Naruto episode 36. The Clone vs Clone stuff from the tuning exams always put a halt to the arc. Why are we wasting time going in a loop to fight a bunch of clones with Kabuto? It doesn't do anything in terms of progressing the plot or character development for most of the episode. Aside from the end where it's revealed that Kabuto is working for Orochimaru. It's an episode that just exists, you know, it's here, that's it. 
Number 652, Revenge of the Shadow Clones from Naruto Shippuden Episode 230. While on the boat to paradise, Naruto summons some of his clones and one of them decides to tie up the real one for control over the ship. But it turns out it was all a dream from a shadow and Naruto realizes the worth of his clones and releases them. So essentially, this episode was just a big old waste of time. Number 651, The Ambu Gives Up, Naruto's Recollection from Naruto, Episode 198. The Ambu interrogates Naruto because he knows his old man named Geno, who plans to destroy the Lee Village. So they use the reverse, not self, what is it? Reverse hypnosis jutsu on Naruto, which seems useful if you ask me. Why wasn't this used in the main story episodes or whatever? Don't know why. But aside from this, Geno also plans to fake his death as well. This episode also just confirms that the Anbu are, they're not useless. I mean, they kind of are. They're just fodder characters and back up the teams or whatever, you know, just, I don't know. They should have been a lot cooler, but aside from their mask and armor wear, I felt like they didn't do anything in the series. Number 650 through 649, The Masked Man and Order of Priority from Naruto Shippuden episodes 436 and 435. As Tsunade continues to read Jirai's book, the Masked Man faces off against Naruto and Neji, but then takes them somewhere else and shows them the Hyuga affair. While Team Jirai is just having fun, even though they're the bad guys of the story, Yahiko, Nagato, and Konan have embraced Jiraiya's spirit because they're always smiling, happy to even fight Sasuke, Choji, Ino, and Shikamaru. They're just there, happy be all the time. Number 648 through 646, three episodes from the Land of Rice Fields arc. After the Sasuke retrieval arc, Naruto, Sakura, and Jiraiya go to the Land of Rice Fields to search for Sasuke again. They find followers of Orochimaru. Kabuto and him are there, but it turns out to be fakes. Two guys are posing as them because it wouldn't make any sense for them to be there at all. Last time we saw them, Sasuke and Kabuto were walking with him to the other hideout, so by that alone, never once believed that that was Kabuto at all whatsoever. And then they save a kid because these fakes want her to join the whole like Kabuto will save you bring you to the hideout claiming that Orochimaru will save them but he's not Number 645 and 644, Counterattack of the Curse Mark and Memory of Guilt from Naruto Shippuden episodes 109 and 110. Naruto and Gurren escape from the Three Tails' belly while Gurren's search team and some Konoha team search for them. Gurren's also a good character, feels guilty for killing Imaru's mother, but he forgives her because Gurren has become kind of his new guardian. We get another Kabuto fake out where this guy named Rinjin, Rin, don't know his name and forgot his name, but tears his face off to reveal himself. As as Kabuto, who killed and became him, to convince Yukimaru to use the three tails to kill Gurren and destroy the Leaf Village again, but doesn't really work out. Number 643, Yakugan vs Shadow Clone technique from Naruto episode 60. This part of the Neji and Naruto fight I thought was fine. Pacing and padding out the episode is always the issue. It doesn't even start with the fight. They have to announce it. Then everyone else goes away and waits for their fight. And then Naruto has to put out his fist to flashback when he vowed to beat Neji. And then the fight starts, which is a lot of Shadow Clone and then Neji beating all of them. Number 642 and 641, the rogue ninja Orochimaru and Kureta from Naruto Shippuden episodes 352 and 358. Orochimaru got caught for experimenting and he resent just lets him go. While he's running away, he meets Kakashi and defeats him obviously, cutting his mask off, leaving Kakashi frightened just like he did in the training exams years later. Donzo likes to ruin things and plans to not have a civil war between the Leaf and Uchiha. Donzo's like, nope, I'm gonna protect the leaf my way by taking one of his eyes. Yusui takes his other eye and gives it to Itachi and then commits suicide which awakens his Mangeko Sharingan. Number 640 and 639, I'm always watching an Obito Uchiha from Naruto Shippuden episodes 386 and 385. These two episodes are essentially filler and recap, but they have good scenes with Obito and Naruto. Obito wanted to confirm his beliefs through Naruto because they're both alike. No one at this point had proved them wrong about the world being worth fighting for. He wanted the easy way out to be Hokage and be with his friends who he abandoned and Naruto is there proving that he has regrets and maybe the world that he claims is hell is still worth fighting for. Number 638 and 637, The Nine Tails Unleashed and the Picture Book Story from Naruto Shippuden Episodes 40 and 50. I think episode 40 is where it takes Orochimaru 7 minutes to get back on the bridge after being hit by Naruto. Flashbacks are also included, but goddamn, it does not need to take that long for him to come back. Realizes that Yamato was one of his experiments that was successful. Meanwhile, in episode 50, Team Kakashi is still searching for Sasuke and the hideout, which feels like a long time, but it's only 4 episodes long. I think one of them's running and then it flashbacks to Sai's book and his real mission to kill Sasuke. 
Number 636, an old nemesis returns from Naruto Shippuden episode 265. Kakashi reuniting with Zabuza and Haku was a nice moment from the war, but you know what makes this episode a drag to get through? Flashbacks. These flashbacks are from the Land of Waves arc, and it's nice seeing them, but I also don't need to see them again. And the episode ends when things get interesting, Kabuto summons the seven ninja swordsmen, but getting there through flashbacks was really rough and just kind of unnecessary. Number 635, Kakashi Hatake, the Jonin in charge from Naruto Shippuden episode 179. After the pain arc, Tsunade is still in a coma and the fourth Red Kage calls for a five Kage summit meeting. All the elders, Donzo, and feudal lords have to pick a temporary Hokage for now. Shikaku chooses Kakashi because he was trained under Minato and then Minato was trained under Jiraiya, which he was trained also by the third Hokage, so it just made sense, right? But Donzo, of course, wants it for himself to make the changes that he's always wanted and the one feudal lord it's like okay let's make him as the hokage for now as a way to see if choosing a person that isn't a senju would not cause the village to be destroyed and then after this cuts to kakashi recalling back to meeting team seven for the first time because that's what the episode needed a flashback Number 634, Sakura's Resolve from Naruto Shippuden episode 212. After knocking out Kiba, Lee, and Sai, Sakura plans to kill Sasuke by herself, which doesn't go too well. But before she does, while she's running through the trees, we gotta get a flashback on how she first fell in love with him and, you know, it's more flashbacks. That's what the show is now. A lot of flashbacks because, you know, Naruto, especially Shippuden, loves using flashback. They just love it. Number 633, Despair from Naruto Shippuden episode 69. Sora has a nine tails because some of it was leaked and sealed inside of him by his father. Asuma now realizes that he is the same man that he's killed all those years ago, but now he's here alive trying to destroy the village that he was meant to destroy like 10, 12 years ago. How old is Asuma? I think he's supposed to be in his early 30s. So let's just say 10 years. Plans to use his own son. Naruto tries talking to him because he understands both were alone and outcasts, calling names and whatnot, but that didn't help because now Sora enters his three-tailed form. Number 632, The Secret of the Battle from Naruto Shippuden episode 44. Sai gets a sword thrown at him for speaking with Orochimaru, but after handing over some Anbu documents and paperwork, he goes with Kabuto and Orochimaru. Meanwhile, you have Sakura still healing Naruto, who just caused all of his destruction and this big ass hole in this land and ground. But here's the issue. How come it takes an entire episode for all of these events to take place? It should have been a five minute scene in one episode, but it's gotta take up the entire episode. Number 631, Sasuke's decision pushed to the edge from Naruto episode 75. While Sasuke is fighting Gar in his half form Shukaku, there's gotta be a flashback to Itachi giving Sasuke a reason to keep on fighting, but his body can only keep up with Gar. He's at his limit with the Chidori, and the Chris Mark comes out at the right time for Gar to attack. But it's also where Sakura and Naruto comes in, kicking Gar in his face. Also, wish we would have gotten to see more of the form of Gara. Looks cool, but he's also trying to not get completely taken over by Shukaku as well. Number 630, Squad Everything Falls Apart from Naruto Episode 112. The team getting Sasuke back gets stuck inside Jirobo's rock, slowly draining all of their chakra. Naruto and Kiba try some moves, but it doesn't work until Neji finds a weak point. However, there has to be a shot going around in circles to fill in some time. I'm glad it was another flashback. Imagine if they showed flashbacks to every single character to scenes we had already seen before, and then they're all out by the end. Number 229 and 228, the formation of Team Unito and You'll Be My Backup from Naruto Shippuden episodes 416 and 417. I thought these two episodes were more recaps of Team Unito, but it's not. It's a mission that they went on and how they met in the academy. How they work as a team isn't good because Obito is too busy trying to catch up with Kakashi. Kakashi is way too good and over time becomes less reliant on Obito and Rin. And Rin is there. Wasn't expecting at the end of 417 to get canon scene of Guy saving Kakashi and having his time right that's like the only canon scene aside from that it is kind of like why are we going back to team Minato after 415 where Sakura needs to destroy the Renegon two weeks dedicated to this number 627 two fates from Naruto Shippuden episode 215 team 7 is reunited but things are a bit different now Naruto and Sakura see what the shinobi ward has done to Sasuke Sasuke has fully embraced hatred as his power using hatred as his weapon and vengeance towards the leaf village but it's also blinding him the more angry he gets just as Kakashi is about to use a lightning blade to kill Sasuke, Naruto has other plans. Pull Kakashi and run towards Sasuke with a Rasengan. They show a really cool light and dark image, but then of course it cuts to Naruto recalling, aka a flashback to their fight at the final valley. Why the hell do we need this? And then some other things because that's what the episode needed a flashback to remind everyone about their rivalry. 
Number 626 and 625, The Oath of Pain and Zero Visibility, The Sharingan Shatters from Naruto Episodes 8 and 15. The issue with these two episodes is that it just takes a while to get going and even when it does, it feels like a drag to watch. Naruto and Sasuke face off against Zabuza. Both were able to trick him. Getting there was like, why do we have another moment on Naruto's thinking or on the bridge? We see Haku throwing needles at Naruto and Sasuke and he does that for the entire episode while everyone else is on the outside with the fog. They're just standing there waiting for something number 624 through 622 three episodes from the tenchi bridge arc from naruto shippuden they're still searching for sasuke in the hideout split into two teams because we gotta do this for a couple more episodes on the bridge i love when naruto's skin is being ripped off he's getting stronger but also slowly losing control of the nine tails but also slowly losing control and the nine tails getting closer to controlling him then sight doesn't care about team kakashi because he let sakura fall off from the bridge he's going towards his real mission and sakura decides to go towards naruto who's already in his tailed beast form and gets attacked even if she heard from Kabuto that the nine tails is all that's left and then it flashbacks to something her running towards him to say stop seems like a really dumb idea number 621 my name is konohamaru from naruto episode 2 i like konohamaru in his introduction but this episode always felt out of place for me konohamaru gets reintroduced a bunch of times in the series establishes their rivalry and konohamaru's goal for the rest of the series however it puts the story at a halt and konohamaru only shows up every now and then so i don't think there needed to be an entire episode Number 620 through 618, three episodes from the Sasuke retrieval arc. Finding out that Sasuke needs to kill his best friend in order to awaken the Mongeko Sharingan didn't need to take three episodes. It all could have been one episode. The flashbacks to the Uchiha were nice, seeing how where Sasuke's relationship with Itachi was, trying to impress his father. All of that was good, but all these episodes end as a tease to finally see Naruto and Sasuke fight, but then it doesn't, and you get to watch three flashback episodes for three weeks. I would be pissed off if I got teased week after week for a fight only for there to be more flashbacks. Number 617, the longest moment from Naruto Shippuden, episode 135. Most of this episode is recap until the end where Sasuke finally meets Itachi in a Genjutsu battle. Sasuke was already under his Genjutsu. Sasuke figures out that someone else was there with him to slaughter the entire clan, and it was Madara Uchiha, who Sasuke only knows because of the Nine Tails mentioning his name back in episode 1. Sasuke didn't think anything of it because he doesn't care about him. Why should he? Madara isn't gonna come up be the person that's pulling all the strings. He is totally dead not alive, wearing an orange mask, acting all goofy. Number 616, The Loser Ninja from Naruto Shippuden, episode 432. Tsunade's still reading Jiraiya's awful book. Naruto has everything that he's wanted. Kushina is waking him up to eat some breakfast. Minato's the Hokage. Sasuke also has everything. So everyone's pretty good. Nothing bad is gonna happen. That's why Minato has Team 7, 8, 10, and Guy go out on the same mission to meet some Akatsuki members, Toby Hyuga, and Team Jiraiya. Again, just really weird, wacky fanfiction. Number 615 through 611, 5 episodes from the Land of Tea arc. This arc was fine. It's about a boy who has to compete in a race in order to save a whole family from being banished. I might get some of the filler stuff wrong because I forgot probably most of them, but it's about racing for a family. The specific reasons is probably something else. Team 7 is different backup and encourages Idate Aidate to keep on running and protect them from other ninjas. He's also the brother of Ibigi is a really nice dude and not always thinking about torturing people. Even if he's like, I don't have a brother anymore. He's proud of his younger brother for growing up. Number 610, The Unfinished Page from Naruto Shippuden, Episode 46. Team Kakashi is going after Yamato's clone, who's still chasing after Sai, Kabuto, and Orochimaru. Both teams have to stop for rest, water, weapons. Sakura decides to open up Sai's book and sees an unfinished drawing of Sai. And Team Kakashi is very interested in this book. They have nothing else better to do. Maybe get to the hideout faster than wasting time looking at a book. And then Sai meets Sasuke, who's in the dark. The glow is coming from his eyes. Number 609, Naruto's School of Revenge from Naruto Shippuden, episode 181. Team 7 has to take care of an ostrich. However, I think the ostrich doesn't talk yet. He talks later on. This is all from Sakura's recollection of Naruto being annoying. The team's on a mission. There's some issues. They deal with it, and that's really it. There just so happens to be an ostrich that's annoying Naruto and Sasuke as well. Number 608 and 607, Orochimaru's test subject and their own paths from Naruto Shippuden episodes 353 and 354. During the Kakashi Anbu arc, he meets the Iburi clan. They have a smoke jutsu where they can transform and travel by smoke, but they can't go or live outside because if they're outside and it's windy, they'll disintegrate with the wind. Kakashi and Tenzo go to their hideout and wait for Orochimaru because he promised the clan lots of things, giving them false hope, and needs them for his experiments after spending some time with Yukimi. 
Tenzo wants a protector because her clan like him were stuck and always had a hope that someone would save them. Both go outside and have some fun, but eventually they have to go their separate ways. Yukimi and the smoke trails of her clan turn her into a goddamn tree. 606 and 605, Gutsy Master and Student, Training and Record of the Ninja Gutsy Master and Student from Naruto Shippuden episodes 187 and 188. There's two episodes on Naruto's training with Jiraiya during the two and a half year journey. There's Jiraiya's shenanigans in this research. They come across an issue that I don't really care for and I forgot about it. So it's just two episodes of Naruto and Jiraiya hanging out and learning nothing really. 604, Tauntaun, I'm counting on you from Naruto episode 143. I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently Tauntaun has way more screen time than Tenten. I don't know if that's a joke somebody made or someone actually took the time to see how much both were on screen. It seems ridiculous if it is true. Tauntaun helps Asunade and Naruto join the Mizuki art. Tauntaun needs to sniff out him and the legendary stupid brothers. That's it. Number 603 and 602, Deploy Team Tenten and My Hero Tsunade from Naruto Shippuden episodes 184 and 237. Tenten gets two episodes about a mission she went on with Naruto and Neji and her wanted to be like Tsunade. After the pain art, Tenten recalls fighting ninjas with different weapons and Naruto and Neji just so happened to be there. And in part one of the series, Tenten said that she wanted to be great and well known like Tsunade. But by the end of episode 237, instead of becoming another Tsunade, she has to be a new Kinoji that's known for something else. Else. Number 601, the Allied Mom Force from Naruto Shippuden episode 281. During the war filler, Konohamaru is ordered to watch over the leaf and then sumo wrestlers decide to attack the village in the middle of the war because why not I guess? But also why sumo wrestlers? I know this is filler but where the hell were they this entire time? Were they underground or lived in a smaller village and just never came out? This forces all the mothers from the Allied forces to fight off the sumo wrestlers and Konohamaru uses the Rasengan to get rid of them. Number 600, the girls Get together from Naruto Shippuden episode 232. This episode is about getting all of the girls together and hanging out. I think Tintin invites all of them to a restaurant. Tsunade shows up drunk and invites herself to the girls get together and I guess since Naruto needs to be in the episode, the boys have a get together as well and talk about the exams because why not? Just an entire episode about nothing. Number 599 and 598, The Vengeful and the Underworld Transfer Jutsu from Naruto Shippuden episodes 305 and 304. When the Sound 4 initially came back as part of the Reanimation Forces, I was excited because they could face off against Neji, Shikamaru, Kiba, and Choji, but they're a lot stronger now. However, it didn't need to be stretched to 3 episodes. It's a lot of, you're now stronger, but guess what? We were holding back in the Sasuke Retrieval arc, and this is and this is our true power, and it's like, okay, should have been one episode of reuniting and then getting rid of them but instead we gotta wait for naruto so there will be a lot talking and waiting around number 597 crescent moonlight from naruto ship within episode 308 unlike the recap heavy episode this episode dives into how yu gi met hayate and how they became a thing anytime she sees a sword it's a reminder of hayate but she has to overcome this in order to defeat hayate who's reanimated during the war and gets her closure with them also i want to see more of her she just looks cool maybe there could have been an onbu arc with her and kakashi because she was under his wing for a little bit. Number 596, Sai and Shin from Naruto Shippuden episode 263. Sai gets his closure with Shin, find out how much it takes to become an Anbu member. Sai and Shin had to kill each other in order to prove they had no emotions. Shin already had an illness, so he let himself die, but because of that, Sai wasn't able to finish his drawing. Shin and Sasuke both get defeated by getting their closure, being at peace, and Sai is able to complete his book. So emotions is one of, if not the only weakness aside from sealing the reanimated forces. Number 595, Friends You Can Count On from Naruto Shippuden episode 236. Shino tells a bunch of students a story about Naruto. Hinata, Naruto, and him went on a mission that's forgettable and they probably come across some enemies and they make it out alive. It's a very fine story by Shino, but there's one funny bit in the beginning and end of the episode where Naruto doesn't remember a bug user from the village and still doesn't at the end. It's Shino. Somehow, Shino knows that Naruto doesn't remember, so he gets pissed off. Number 594, the reanimated allied forces from Naruto Shibuden episode 316. This war filler episode is just Kabuto summoning more of the reanimated forces by using Tarun. There's probably other things that happen in the episode, but you're not missing much, probably. Maybe there's some scenes with the allied forces talking about how weak they are, but you know, more fighting of the war, that's all. 
Number 593, Inari's Courage put to the test from Naruto Shippuden episode 180. Inari who is a lot older and Tazuna reunite with Naruto and Sakura and I thought the episode was going to be about them catching up and seeing what they're going to do in the future but no, it goes into a flashback where after Gato gets killed by Zabuza, the people that work for him are still going after team 7 so I was kind of disappointed by that. I wanted to see what Inari and Tazuna were up to after team 7 left. Number 592, Follow My Lead, The Great Survival Challenge from Naruto Episode 158. Most of the Konoha 11 are mentors to a team, and Naruto of course gets Team Konohamaru. They have to go out into the woods and mountains and survive. Naruto at this point isn't the best person to be a mentor or teach anything to anyone because all of them almost die. So it's just another day at Hidden Leaf Village where the Hokage is willing to put kids in danger. Number 591, The Weight of the Prized Artifact from Naruto Episode 208. Naruto and Kiba have to protect this artifact because it's important to this one guy, but once it's gone, he's like, don't worry about it. People are more valuable than objects. So essentially, I wasted my time watching Naruto and Kiba wasting their time protecting an artifact that this guy can make anytime he wants. And number 590, Open for Business, The Leaf Moving Service from Naruto Episode 187. Naruto, Hinata, and Choji help out peddlers move from the land of vegetables. There's a land for everything in Naruto. Land of iron, snow, rain, rice fields, eddies, wood that are specific towards weather or food. But along the way, they meet a group called Janin? J-A-N-I-N? Probably not in the right way. Anyways, they're a group who causes an issue between Naruto and them and wants to steal Number 589, please Mr. Postman from Naruto episode 177. So there's a bit of these episodes that I don't care for and this Postman is one of those episodes. It's not a bad episode nor a great episode. It's just okay, fine, filler episode of fill in time. That's it. I don't feel one way or another about it. I just don't care about them. Naruto helps out a Postman who dropped a lot of his mail and helps him deliver some of them and that's it. Naruto has nothing else better to do. Number 588, The Ninja of Benizu from Naruto Shippuden episode 224. While on the ship to paradise, Naruto stops by an island and meets Sakura, Ino, and Choji, and they're getting medical herbs for the village. Naruto also meets a merchant who lost some of his things, so they give him, I think, 50% of their herbs in order to help him. It's just a nice, chill, and fine episode where nothing happens. Number 587, Naruto and the Old Soldier from Naruto Shippuden Episode 190. Apparently back in Part 1, Naruto knew this old man who just so happens to be a soldier as well. Years later, after the pain arc, the old man tells a story about how he interacted with them and both fought together and he's telling this to people in the village who don't believe him. Because Naruto is known as a hero and sees his old man trying to use Naruto's success as a way to prop himself up. But it's a true story and only he and Naruto only believes it because they lived through it. Number 586. The Old Master in the Dragon's Eye from Naruto Shippuden episode 312. Lee and Guy meet the Taijutsu Master and because they want to push their limits, obviously they want to defeat this master and they kind of have to in order to seal him away. But apparently Lee met this master back in part 1 of the series and Lee made it his goal to someday defeat him and they both do. Just a random war filler episode to fill in some time. At least it's Lee and Guy that are the main focus. Number 585, Kidnap, Naruto's Hot Spring Adventure from Naruto Episode 97. This episode is top tier quality stuff. After dealing with Orochimaru, Tsunade wants to go to a hot spring. Jiraiya is waiting for his moment to be with a very beautiful woman. Naruto gets kidnapped because Tsunade didn't pay off her debts. But these two guys didn't check the receipts because Shardy did pay them off. Just a whole lot of nothing but just a little bit of fun. Number 584 and 583, The Air Rank Mission, Food Fight, and The Fallen Castle from Naruto Shippuden Episodes 309 and 310. Of course, in a flashback, Team 10 and Naruto go on a mission to kidnap a kid. Choji becomes very useful because there's a food contest and he has to eat but not win due to the mission. And then Deidara and Sasori get involved in this. They're here to either kill Tatewaki, which is why we have these two episodes, or they just so happen to be there. I forgot which one it was. Team 10 and Naruto succeed in kidnapping the kid, but the castle falls because of Sorcery and Deidara. Number 582, Neji Chronicles from Naruto Shippuden episode 192. Konohamaru is going around interviewing people for stories about Naruto. When he gets to Neji, Neji tells him a different perspective and story from Konoha Crush arc. He woke up seeing a big ass snake and met up with Kiba and Akamaru along the way. They get rid of some ninjas but in the end he didn't tell a story about Naruto to Konohamaru so he wasted their time when he could have just said go find somebody else at the beginning of the episode. 
Number 581 through 579, three episodes from the war filler arc. Previous eight tales meets with Killer B and they have a battle with some flashbacks here and there. Unlike Killer B, Blue B, which I forgot was his name, wasn't able to fill in the void of his heart for being a Jinjuriki. Killer B just didn't care and kept on rapping. Amori gets a moment in the war arc, too bad it wasn't canon. What he does when his unit meets with Sorcery and Daedara. And then Conqueror gets a moment with Chiyo. I don't know why this wasn't canon. Chiyo was a significant character in the beginning of Shippuden. So why reanimate? her when there are no plans for her aside from hey i remember you they talk about congo being the right person to be the new puppet master Number 578 and 577, The Ones Who Will Inherit and Naruto's Rival from Naruto Shippuden, Episodes 422 and 423. For some reason, there's two episodes about Konohamaru in between the war arc, specifically after Naruto and Sasuke get their six paths power. It's Konohamaru's doing his thing, thinking about Naruto because they're rivals, we get more sexy jutsus, which is what I wanted to see, from a pointless two episode arc that does nothing for Konohamaru. Number 576 and 575, The Adored Elder Sister and Hanabi's Decision from Naruto Shippuden episodes 389 and 390. Once again, during the war arc, two episodes about Hanabi and watching Hinata grow as a ninja, not being able to keep up with father's expectations because they're in the main branch of the Hyuga family and clan. But my question is, why were there two Hanabi episodes? I don't mind her, but was there a Naruto movie coming out at the time to like promote it? Because the Hyuga weren't gonna be a part of it. You just get to see Hanabi's perspective on how things are done in the Hyuga clan. In the end, things are different, especially after the pain arc, her father seems more relaxed and Hanabi is excited to be stronger while adoring her elder sister. Number 574 through 573, three episodes from the war arc filler. Akibino, the wielder of the axe hammer sword from the ninja swordsman, gets his own episode. His sword can cut through any defenses, which I don't think is completely true. Can he cut through the Susano or perfect Susano? The swords themselves are way more interesting than the person that has it, like Amayuri Ringo. She has a lightning blade, which is the sharpest blade if I remember correctly. It summons a bunch of lightning with it as well, but I'm more interested in the blade, not Ringo. And then the allied forces seal both of them up at the end of their episodes. Pakura who knows the Scorched style, it's a cool ability. It evaporates all the water inside a person's body, leaving their body dried out. Too bad we don't see much of it. I think she was in one of the movies, the one where Kakashi is slowly walking towards an arena or area and she's one of the people there. Maki was a student of hers and she gets her closure with Pakura. Number 571 and 570, Recklessness and Dawn from Naruto Shippuden episode 491 and 493. Two of the episodes from the Shikamaru arc, I thought were okay. The mission that he goes on, I couldn't care less about. It could have been anything else, but it's just another mission. I do like that he still has nightmares about Asuma dying, still hasn't got over his death, and the way that it ends is finishing up the mission, and they asking Tamara out on a date, which makes sense. They were always bunny heads and somewhat flirting with each other. So I also ask Eno out on a date, which is random, comes out of nowhere, but sure. Number 569, The Medicine of Youth from Naruto Shippuden, episode 186. This episode is ridiculous. Lee has a special medicine drink and Naruto accidentally drank the last one. So instead of going on a mission with Sakura and Ino, Naruto goes to find some flowers for Lee, but it was assigned to him by Guy. Naruto also wears the green jumpsuit, which looks great and gives him extra thick eyebrows, which is mandatory. Guy then tells Lee the real ingredients of the medicine, which is sweat, tears, and love of himself. There's no secret ingredient or shortcuts to achieving youth. And number 568, Battleground from Naruto Shippuden, episode 268. There's some cool stuff that happens. Dari does his Black Lightning, Black Panther Jutsu. The Keke Tota gets introduced and explained by Shikamaru. It's like a Keke Genkai, but instead of two chakra natures creating a new release, it's three chakra natures combined to create Mu and Inoki's particle release. And then other things that happen in the episode that I don't really care for. Chiyo, Hanzo, and Kimimaru arrive for backup. The Hyuga brother, Neji's dad shows up. Why not? I don't care about him. Him, and the Golden Silver Brothers arrive and they're lame. I don't care about them. Number 567, Shino vs. Tarun from Naruto Shippuden episode 317. This was a cool confrontation between Shino and Tarun. It would make sense that they know each other coming from the same clan. Shino was Donzo's choice for the foundation, but not only did Shino's dad decline it, Tarun accepted the role. That was the last time that they would see each other. Despite not being blood relatives, they were like brothers to each other. Over time, Shino became immune to Tarun's poison, and like with most battles in the war, Naruto comes in to finish him off, but Shino's immunity towards his poison paralyzes Tarun and seals him 
him away, getting to say goodbye to him. For 566, Ibusu returns Naruto's toughest training yet from Naruto episode 52. A whole lot of nothing happens in this episode until the end. It had been so long that I forgot who he was. Kakashi assigns him to be Naruto sensei, but of course, Naruto doesn't like him. There's a chase throughout the entire village until Naruto gives in, teaches him how to walk on water until they see a man with white hair doing his research, knocking out the sensei, and Naruto has no choice but to, you know, ask him for help. Number 565 through 563, three episodes from the Jiraiya Handbook arc. Most of the Kanoha 11 face off against Sorcery and his 100 puppets, which was a cool fight. Seeing a what if getting level with Sasuke and Choji go against Sorcery is something that I didn't think was possible, but it is. Naruto and Enji are still with Toby Hyuga, make it to the fight, and Naruto uses his shadow clones, causes Sorcery to retreat for now, while Sasuke is grunting because he's jealous of Naruto. Number 562 and 561, Bonds and Infiltration, The Den of the Snake from Naruto Shippuden, Episodes 48 and 47. They are still in the goddamn hideout on the outside as well. Saimi Sasuke and is obviously intimidated by his eyes and presence. When they eventually get to Sai, they mention Sai pressing his emotions because he's a part of the Roots or Foundation who are told and forced to show no emotions for the better part of the mission, but he still has a book as a way to vent out his emotions. Naruto is able to use Talk no Jutsu as a way to get Sai out of this mindset. Meanwhile, you have Kabuto walking back to Sai's room slowly as well, taking his sweet ass time, getting that key, unlocking it, finding out that he's missing. Number 560 and 559, the missed target and the powerful helper from Naruto episodes 199 and 200. It's cool seeing the Konoha 11 working together and finding what will cause the leaf to explode. One of them finds that there's a tag in one of the targets in the academy and most of them try to prevent it from going off but then they find out that Geno set a bunch of other tags and explosives in the entire village 30 years ago so if one goes off it causes a chain reaction. Number 558 through 556, three episodes from the Peddler's Escort arc. Naruto, Toji, and Hinata's movie mission turns much more dangerous when a guy named Renga with his magnet style jutsu and they also have the protect who is a princess. I forgot the reason why he wants a kidnapper. It's probably for money or other selfish reasons. Every filler arc ends mostly the same way. Naruto, most of the time, defeats the bad guy while the others save another person and they save everyone, completing the mission and go home. Number 555, The Heart's Eye from Naruto Shippuden, episode 306, another flashback episode where Nanji recalls a time when Hinata was healing her eyes because of training. She is relaxing, waiting to see the fireworks. So Nanji and Team Kakashi go out to find a medicine to heal her eyes, but they don't get to her in time. She just hears the fireworks. It's an episode that's pointless, but also very sweet. Nanji wanted to do something good for her. Number 554, Joning Leader from Naruto Shippuden, episode 360. Before Kakashi got Team 7 as his team, he had two teams that he failed because they failed at teamwork, which triggers a lovely flashback. They had no teamwork. Kakashi uses that as a baseline on if he'll pass a team. One of the teams decided to kill each other for the belt test, completely abandoning their comrades, and the other team followed the rule according to Kakashi. They didn't abandon their comrade, but always following the rules isn't the best choice as well. Number 553, the Mizukage, Giant Clamp, and the Mirage from Naruto Shippuden episode 300. The second Mizukage is kind of lame. I like his water gun technique and his giant clam. He's written as a joke and if that's all that he is, then I have no reason to believe that he's a major threat, especially compared to the third Raikage. The allied forces fail at getting a hit on him and then he tells them a couple of times on how to defeat him, but they don't really listen. And then he kills Anoki at the end and it's totally not a clone or anything. Number 552, A Father's Hope, A Mother's Love from Naruto Shippuden, episode 297. Gara's reunion with his dad was good. He was able to say sorry to his own son and how he robbed Gara of his happiness and childhood. Gara is able to forgive him, but the one thing that Naruto loves doing is a flashback. It's flashbacks to Gara's past and his mom and his dad, and I would've wanted to see more from Rasa and his gold sand, but him and Gara clash with their sands and just talk it out, you know? Number 551, Kanoji Rumble, The Rivals Get Serious from Naruto, episode 4. 41. Sakura and Eno's names were chosen for the next match. After some dodging, throwing kunai and shurikens, Eno just slaps Sakura and then it goes into a flashback when they were younger, picking flowers, protecting each other until Asuke came around and they became rivals. This is their first part of the fight and it's like alright, I get it, let's get to the fight. It's flashback and insulting each other before the actual fight. Number 551 worth betting on from Naruto Shippuden, episode 287. And this episode just reconfirms Tsunade's phobia of blood. I don't know when this filler takes place. I think it's after Tsunade and A try to stop Naruto and B. He has to perform surgery on a ninja and blood splatters on her, which triggers her blood phobia. A would have known about this. He wouldn't have put his ninjas in her hands. Just retreading the plot from the Tsunade arc. 
Number 549, the legendary Inoshika Cho from Naruto Shippuden, episode 239. There's like four or five episodes that has the Inoshika Cho as a title that I don't know which one it is. I think this one is where Inochi walks into Ino. Apparently during the Konoha crash, the team took down some ninjas even though Shikamaru couldn't fight anymore because he fought Tamari and Shadow Possessed and they're not even telling their story. It's another ninja that knows about them that's telling their story. Number 548, Naruto's Vow for Naruto Shippuden, episode 242. This episode is just a pit stop for Naruto before he goes to the island. He gets some ramen, Chojuro, and some of the other Kage bodyguards are there because, I don't know, they're there to drink or something. They're just kind of there. But that's it. This entire episode is just to conclude the Paradise Life on a Boat arc to lead into the War Countdown arc. Number 547, Naruto's Imposter from Naruto Shippuden episode 233. Naruto meets his double ganger and Yamato and Guy can't help but laugh because this imposter looks like a barbarian. He has a big ass cane and is super big. He's using Naruto's name and reputation to become famous. This is after the pain arc. After the confusion, the team helps out Eggy to protect his banana and go on their way. I don't know how they would. After seeing an imposter ninja and protecting a banana just seems super ridiculous. Number 546, The Forbidden Jutsu, released from Naruto Shippuden, episode 150. Most of the Six Tales arc is good, but there's one episode where Naruto and Urakata are stuck and have to watch Kotaro's seal go away and get open for most of the episode because I guess they need more time so that they can pad out the episode with the same thing happening for the most part until both Naruto and Urakata use their tailed beast chakra to get out. Number 545, Drive Towards Darkness from Naruto Shippuden episode 196. The last past arc episode reconfirms Sasuke's journey towards darkness. Naruto and Sakura have to babysit a girl, but the issue is she wants Sasuke. Because he saved her at a waterfall, Sasuke's on a different mission, but then that eventually leads back Naruto and Sakura and this girl. And then this one dude just had to mention Itachi and Sasuke just beats him even after he dies. He just beats on his head over and over again, scaring the little girl, Kashi, Naruto, and Sakura. Number 544 and 543, a shinobi's dream and pursuing hope from Naruto Shippuden episodes 382 and 383. It was cool seeing the very first Five Kage Summit. Hashirama hopes that in the future, someday, every nation can be united and be allies, which will come true just, you know, 80 or so years later. Sasuke's Sage Susano transformation looks cool. Everyone else is alright. Hashirama and Madara face off again because why not? It's the same battle. Most of their fight is recreating their fight back in the day. Naruto and Sasuke's fight Obito I always thought was okay. Flying in the air, one major hit and blow. Naruto and Sasuke combined their powers to recreate the Nine Tails Susano was really cool. And then Obito's speech to Naruto felt like it was retreading what Nagato had already said to him back in the pain arc. Number 542 through 540, three episodes from the War Countdown arc. These three episodes are preparing for the war, so the five Kage have a lot more meetings on how to go about it, go about the war, and what to use. Tsunada wakes up from her coma and starts eating like crazy. Sasuke just got his new eyes by transplanting Itachi's eyes into his. Naruto is about to get some ramen, but gets transported to Mount Miyabugi for prophecies. And everyone who was at the five Kage summit went back to their villages to inform about what happened and prepare for war. Number 539, War Begins from Naruto Shippuden episode 262. The war officially begins. Each captain of their division goes to their side of the battlefield. Amoi is the one character that's scared and who wouldn't be? There's a high chance that you'll die and you'll see other comrades die right beside you. But Konkuro reassures him he'll be fine. Konkuro and his unit engage first with Deidara's sorcery, controlling bodies through chakra threads. And Deidara uses Shin as his own explosion device, which obviously the side does not like at all whatsoever. Just treating a human being but also just a dead body as well like a tool Number 538 from Naruto Shippuden episode 328. While Naruto is in Son Goku's mouth, he plans to not only get out from his mouth, but also get the rot out of him. Naruto uses the multi shadow clones to cause the four tails to throw up and have a Naruto both on the inside and outside to pull out. Meanwhile, you have the nine tails recalling flashback thinking about Naruto's achievements and simply just says he should do what he always has and act. It would be a prelude. Naruto's KCM transformation. Too bad there's a flashback. Could have done without it. Number 537 through 531, 7 episodes from the 12 Garden Shinobi arc, Naruto and Sora meet for the first time by butting heads with each other. What would be the relationship for most of the arc? We get to meet Chiriku, see how close he was with Asuma. Only saw him for like an episode during the Hidon and Kakuzu arc. Sora is allowed to be part of Team Kakashi for some reason. Asuma is getting rid of Kazuma permanently this time and Sora and Naruto are able to be friends and plan to make more plans by traveling around the world. There's also a canon scene where Two Tails is being chased by 
by Hiron and Kakuzu. Jupiter started having filler episodes that would mix into canon. That scene of Shukaku throwing out Kakashi's name as the next Okage, it's in a filler episode. And if you're following a filler guide, then you're not gonna see it. Naruto's timer that he had back in episode 54 comes back around on top of the fire temple that he saw in the nightmare. The fire temple is where all the monks live. Danzo even gets involved because he's always suspicious. And there's already build up of tension between him and Tsunade. And then at the same time, Sora attempts to assassinate Tsunade but fails. Everyone is still dealing with zombies. Katsufuka is here to end their fight that started 10 episodes ago or something like that. Both Sora and Naruto have a tailed beast battle where both of their skins start peeling off. But Naruto is able to wake up Sora by stabbing himself. 520 and 529, hot blooded confrontation, student versus sensei, and the third super beast from Naruto episodes 196 and 195. A student arrives in the village and beats Lee at Taijutsu, which is an issue because we're not gonna get a cheerful and youthful Lee, but this student is an imposter trying to trap a guy. Turns out this student and his two brothers want revenge for a guy defeating their father and causing him to die, but it was their father's dying wish, another match, and always respected him, so all of this could have been completely avoided if there was some communication between the brothers and the father Number 528 through 526, three episodes from the Naruto's footsteps arc. Angesai was the most interesting one because Pain only sent one team for the exams and it was already suspicious that Tsunade only wanted the exams for information about the Akatsuki. The team is interesting enough where you want to see more of them, but her team is more quiet and cautious of everything. Her and Tintin fell and got stuck underground. Boo is a fun character and is probably the best character in the arc. Despite being a Jinjuriki, she also wants friends. Even in dangerous situations, she's so happy and optimistic. She's the one to stop all the commotion during the night before the exams. The Papa girl, Daya, is a creepy ass character. She wants Sakura and Ino for herself while Choji faces her teammates. This part of the fight is Sakura thinking back on what she learned from Tsunade. There's even a random scene at Orochi Maru's hideout with Sugetsu and Karin because why not? Number 525 through 521, 5 episodes from the Cursed Warrior arc. When this arc first started, I was excited because it seemed like a good and interesting filler arc, but the more I kept watching it, the more I just didn't care about it. There's a story going around that there's a ghost in a warrior costume, but there's more to the story. It's a fake, and later Kakashi gets involved to fight a copy of Kakashi, but just doesn't look as cool. At least the ending is fun where the ghost that they encountered was indeed a real ghost and Naruto just freaks out. 520 through 517, 4 episodes from the Gantetsu arc. Gantetsu is a criminal that Naruto, Lee, and Sakura need to guard in case his comrades try to get him out. However, this guy has a vendetta against him because he thinks he killed his younger brother and parents. It was pretty obvious that Gantetsu not only saved his brother but saved other children. Todoroki isn't able to forgive him but is willing to falsely report that he died in order for Gantetsu to, to continue protecting the kids. Also, why couldn't he forgive him? He protected his brother. I guess it's the lie that he can't get past. Number 516 and 515, bringing back reality and vanished memories from Naruto episodes 214 and 213. Memo was found by Naruto and claims to have no memory of who he is. Naruto brings him to the village for medical help and has to learn some things again. But Tsunade and Neji suspects that he's a ninja that's tied to whatever is going on because acts and moves like a ninja and is probably pretending to lose his memory to either infiltrate the village or gain something and take it back. Naruto is the only person who doesn't suspect anything because he's Naruto and wants to see the good in everyone. One. Number 514, Infiltration, the setup from Naruto, episode 171. Ango gets some screen time. She's captured during the submission with Shino, Ino, and Naruto. Seeing the pods reminds her of the time she spent with Orochimaru, and it ties into the capturing of the Kaima. Kaima was one of the many experiments done by Orochimaru to use a human and change their physical appearance. This girl is human, turned into a fish monster, and Ango almost cures it, but it would lead into the team collapsing and his building. Number 513, The Dark Creeping Clouds from Naruto episode 155. Raiga is supposedly dead, so the team takes the little boy or girl back to the curry shop to regroup. They deal with some trouble along the way, but it's all good until another dude named Karashi decides to revive Raiga by giving his own chakra to him, in a way undoing everything that Naruto and the others fought for earlier. Why defeat and kill him if you're gonna bring him back immediately in the next episode? Number 512 through 509, 4 episodes from the Stargard arc. I like the training in this arc. Everyone in the village thinks that it will improve their skills, but slowly you learn it's really hurting them. And, and there's some other people that know this and want it for them only. The team meets Sumaru who helped, but then his mom was the one that kidnapped him and she left him as a kid to spare him from being exiled. The star brings out the greed in everyone in the village. 
number 508 and 507, the super secret S rank mission, and assemble allied shinobi forces from Naruto Shippuden episodes 254 and 256. So there's an armadillo dick in episode 254. I didn't even know that you show armadillo dick. Is it in the manga? Can I even show it in this video? I don't think I can. But aside from that, Naruto and B deal with more animal shenanigans while Kabuto reanimate Deidara in order to infiltrate on the turtle island and then the allied forces get their final preparation set up. There's the short, mid, long, and special range divisions with their captains and it has a good shot of the entire allied forces. Meanwhile, you have Kabuto and Madara setting up their army with the reanimated forces and their 100,000 white zetsu army. Number 506 through 500, 7 episodes from the 3 Tales of Parents arc. Naruto gets to know more about Gurren and vice versa. Gurren is Naruto's enemy but decides to save her because he's just a nice guy. Gurren's crystal style is really cool as well. She can crystallize anyone and anything that she wants and it's visually cool to look at as well. I think Shizune, Ino, Sakura, and Hinata set up a barrier to trap the 3 Tales two times in the arc because Orochimaru's search team messes things up the first time and then the second time, Yugimaru tries to control it but fails and then the frog stuff that was useless in the arc and i was getting tired of it but it turns out it will come back around for naruto to use wind style in conjunction with gamatatsu toad oil to create toad oil flame bullet number 499 and 498 to each their own leaf kabuto yakushi from naruto shibuden episodes 335 and 336 kabuto gets his own backstory he was no one and had no identity was brought into an orphanage and had someone to go for for help but all that would not last because donzo just had to come in and ruin everything his mother was once part of the foundation and donzo wants her to pay back some debt kabuto is forced to kill her who didn't recognize her because she was brainwashed to believe that he was someone else and then orochimaru gives him his new name and identity becoming a spy throughout the different nations. My only issue is that I don't care about Kabuto. The fact that he was a major part of this war is still kind of jarring. Back in part one, I would not have thought that he would become like Orochimaru and compete with characters like Itachi and Sasuke. Number 497 and 496, Creeping Shadow and the New Akatsuki from Naruto Shippuden episode 347 and 348. After Obito's Hell episode and before the Kakashi Anbu arc, there's a couple episodes on how the Akatsuki was first set up. While it's cool to see, I don't know if it was needed because Nagato told his story to Naruto already, so it feels like they're retreading, but we haven't seen this, so it's kind of cool. We see the humble beginnings of the Akatsuki helping out the world, being hopeful and optimistic until Yahiko kills himself and trusts his dreams to Nagato, which would be the change in turn for the new Akatsuki. Number 495, The Artist Returns from Naruto Shippuden, episode 255. Kabuto uses Deidara to get into the big ass turtle by having a snake bite its leg. Starts slithering around, posing as Orochimaru to swallow Yamato and use him as the main source of power for all the white Zetsu army. And Yamato would not be seen until like episode 426, I think? Something like that in the infinite Tsukiyomi. So if you love Yamato, then it's gonna be a long ass time before you get to see him. And I do miss Deidara. So see him back and talking about art was a lot of fun. Number 494, The Power of Uchiha for Naruto Shippuden Episode 52. Most of this episode was seen in the first episode, so it's kind of a recap. Seeing the same flashback to their final valley fight, Sasuke is able to see the nine tails and burst them away with a touch. And then there's some new stuff. Sasuke is a lot stronger than everyone. Sai and Sakura ain't nothing to him, so they're just no issue for Sasuke. Seems that Orochimaru made a lot more progress with Sasuke than Tsunade and Jirai did with Sakura and Naruto. Number 493 and 492 of The Darkness of the Akatsuki and the Pain of Living from Naruto Shippuden episodes 456 and 453. Before Itachi was teamed up with Kasame and Orochimaru, he was teamed up with Juzo, who was a part of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen. He had the Executioner's Blade, then Isama got to Zabuza later on. They come across Yagara, and Itachi is the reason why he was being controlled by Tobi slash Madara slash Obito for so long. News Amaterasu on him in an attempt to save Juzo, but he dies. The meetings are always interesting because most most of them are there because they were kind of forced to. Kakazu's partner died, which we all know he hates working with, so probably killed him. And Orochimaru tries to take Itachi's eyes, but we all know where that goes. His cat mission was fine, kind of ridiculous. Confirms that there are talking cats that live their lives and a cat that can get drunk. All of this is to reveal that he awakened his Sharingan after experiencing friendship and then loses it. Toby killed his friend right in front of him on a mission. Number 491, the new three-way deadlock from Naruto Shippuden episode 374. Team 7 is the new three-way deadlock and while it's cool, it is a retread of the same thing. They were the students of the Sanin, but I can't really get excited when it's the same thing that's happening again. Kamaikichi has grown up and has his own pipe and cigarette to smoke out of and still look cool out of the summonings. Sasuke has a stick and Sakura has her own slug. 
Number 490, The Infinite Dream, for Naruto Shippuden, episode 425, Madara finally cast the infinite Tsukiyomi after mentioning it a bunch of times. It better happen, especially if it's going to lead to internal peace. Sakura wasn't able to destroy the Renegade because she's written horribly when it comes to important moments. And Madara set up everything for Obito. Knew that Rin would die, not the Kakashi part, but it played well into Madara's plan. He knew a kind boy like Obito would turn to hatred if he experienced loss and pain. Number 489, Connecting Hearts from Naruto Shippuden, episode 93. Tsunade continues to observe Gurren's crystal style on how it works and what its weakness is. Naruto continues his training with the frogs, which again, thought wouldn't really come back. It felt like it was there to fill in some time. But everyone knows that image of Naruto and Jiraiya leaning back against each other. It's in this episode. I thought this scene occurred after he used the Rasen Shuriken on Kakazu, but it's in a filler episode. So I'm assuming that most people, again, didn't see this scene until after seeing it on Google or social media. Did anyone stick around to watch most of the filler all the way through week to week because after a while I would get tired of it and just wait until canon episodes came back. Number 48 and 487, Despair, A Fractured Heart, and The Battle at Sea, The Power Unleashed from Naruto Episodes 172 and 173. After being stuck, Ongo summons a giant snake to escape with the team. Naruto uses a bit of the Naruto chakra to get out of a trap and fight whoever is in charge of watching over the girl. He's able to show her that she doesn't have to be afraid of being a monster, but in the end decides to go to the leaf in hopes that Tsunade can cure her. And luckily, the fillers don't use Naruto's chakra too much as a way to solve the issues. It would get repetitive and born after a while. Number 486, our past to be erased from Naruto episode 215. Turns out Menma didn't lose his memories. He was a part of the bandits, but after spending some time with Naruto, he decides to protect and sacrifice himself to fight off the bandits because Naruto just has an effect on people. And over time, whether it's an episode or an entire art, Naruto will change Morris' death by eating some ramen during the sunset to end the episode number 485 from 484 untitled and the consequences of betrayal from naruto shibuden episode 37 and 45 team kakashi wastes more time on size painting in a book he doesn't have a name on any of his art hence the title of the episode being untitled naruto once again seeing that he doesn't like sai yamato's wood clone continues to follow kabuto in them but kabuto has a pretty cool and messed up trap he uses a fake body of sai in order to stop yamato and then gets close explodes killing yamato it's a really good fake out on your first watch because you're like is that it didn't really care for a side but damn okay Number 483, the supposed seal ability from Naruto episode 207. Yakumo was a student of Kurenai and plans on killing her because she betrayed her and didn't care about her. She got sealed away, but the truth is that a demon known as the Idol? Ido? I do? I don't know how to pronounce it. Is inside of her. That's why Kurenai decided to leave her. She did care about her. So all of this was just misunderstanding that could have been solved if Kurenai was more honest from the start. But that's okay. The village could have, you know, been destroyed. Number 482, Hoshikage, The Buried Truth from Naruto, episode 181. Naruto, Neji, and Tenten's mission could have been over, but the Star Guard arc needs to keep on going. It's revealed that the star is actually killing most others, obviously want it for controlling over the village or for their own power. But the entire episode itself is a lot of waiting for Naruto to get up and then at the end, the team arrives to help out the villagers. A lot of waiting around, doing nothing. Number 481, Naruto's favorite pupil from Naruto Shippuden episode 234. All I remember from this episode is the fight between Konohamaru and Tamari. He's the one to initiate the fight because he wanted to prove to himself that he was Naruto's favorite and best pupil. And he almost beats her with the Rasengan because she wasn't expecting him to have a jutsu like that. But he does it when Tamari is impressed with the next generation of ninjas. Everything else though, I don't really care about. Number 480, Things You Can't Get Back from Naruto Shippuden Episode 286, the fourth Fry Kage and Tsunade have an arm wrestling match because he needs her to heal a ninja from the Cloud Village and she just wants to be lazy and sleeping all day. A waits outside the entire night just to confront her about the same thing. That's when Tsunade offers him a chance to beat her in an arm wrestling match. He almost loses but with speed, he wins. It's a cool but random moment. Number 479 and 478, The Search Mission and Team Jiraiya from Naruto Shippuden episodes 433 and 434. You have Hidon looking for a teammate, I think. Naruto and Neji are off doing their own thing with Tobi. All other Jonin leaders have disappeared, which means that all the teams are on their own, which means that the other Akatsuki can show up and defeat, getting kind of easily but not easily as well. Kagazu shows up to capture Kakashi, which is when Hidon retreats as well. Team Jiraiya is fun to watch. They have Jiraiya's spirit, especially Yahiko. He arrives on a frog and has the same mannerisms as Jiraiya, who is dead in this story I think. Maybe not, maybe I forgot.
for 477 and 476 Kiba's Determination and Kiba's Long Day from Naruto Shippuden. Episode 240 and Naruto Episode 184. Kiba wants to become stronger and better than Naruto because he can't stand the fact that he was dead last in the academy and somehow saved the village. Goes to Kakashi Sensei to help train him but he just straight up disrespects him, summons his dogs to train him and leave him with them. Kakashi probably wants to read his books but it's still like you're not worth it so I'll just summon a dog train you. Kiba immediately gives up which means that he's not going to reach Naruto's level, never giving up but eventually Kiba beats Naruto's time racing to this tree and the Akamaru gets infected with a special bacteria and Kiba is just stressed throughout this entire episode not knowing if Akamaru is gonna make it. Starts attacking people and someone mentions he might need to be put down. This cure that's a 50-50 and Kiba is able to inject it to Akamaru. He almost dies doing it but Akamaru was also trying to prevent himself from killing Kiba. It's surprisingly good because you don't want to see a dog get put down especially on Naruto. Number 475, the worst three-legged race from Naruto Shippuden episode 194. Naruto and Sasuke are once again forced to work together as a team. Team 7 needs to retrieve a golden bear. Sakura gets captured because she needs to be, I guess. Gimmick this time is that Naruto and Sasuke have this purple goo, forcing them to do things together and have the kiss again. Because why not? By doing this, both learn how to work as a teammate and comrades again. Number 474, Animal District from Naruto Shippuden episode 185. The ostrich is back and he talks and tells some baby ostriches about his rival with Naruto who kept trying to prevent his freedom. It sounds ridiculous but I don't know if maybe I was in a good mood or I wasn't feeling too well because I didn't mind this episode. The ostrich name is Condor. Naruto is able to get Condor back to the village and then after Condor finishes his story, Naruto spots him and chases him again. Also, at least our spots in a goddamn kangaroo which is great. It's just ridiculous was fun number 473 and 472 where Ten Ten belongs and to the dream world from Naruto Shippuden episodes 428 and 427 we see Ten Ten's dream in the infinite Tsukiyomi she just wants to be acknowledged as a great ninja in the village and she wants her weapons to sell Guy and Lee are great in the episode both are wearing beach attire in the village even though there's no beach to be found aside from that just a fun what if from Ten Ten 471, the Byakugan sees a blind spot from Naruto episode 190. Hinata is able to save Naruto from Jiga and use her new Byakugan and gentle fist to cut off his chakra flow, which makes him unable to turn off his magnet jutsu and bury himself in a vortex. This will not be the only time that she comes in to save Naruto. Also, I kind of forgot that Toji was part of the mission. He's dealing with the other ninjas until Naruto and her get back until they encounter another ninja. That's the last criminal that they had to deal with. 470 and 469, the treasure hunt is on and run, dodge, zigzag, chase or be chased from Naruto episodes 175 and 176. Naruto, Kiba, and someone else go on a treasure hunt mission, but instead they meet their double kingers and are tied up. The fakes go to the leaf village to live the life that they took, leads into some moments with the fake Naruto pissing off Sakura, and then the real one shows up only to be punched by Sakura. But here's the thing, the mission was a fake one. It was just a test teamwork, which at this point cop out for things that happen in filler. If I was Naruto, I would not trust anything that Tsunade says and then the treasure itself was a bill for all the services. I guess Tsunade got a taste of her own medicine for wasting everyone's time. Number 468 through 466, three episodes from the past arc, Team 10 went on a mission with Team 7 back when they were still all getting. It's more of their teamwork and how they compare and contrast to Team 7. Team 7 who work well together when it matters and it's mostly Naruto and Sasuke that work well with each other. Naruto gets sick and Tsunade claims that this sickness is very dangerous and it's a chakra virus which sounds ridiculous but this will affect a person's ability to mold chakra. All of this would lead to nothing but it's still a fun episode of Naruto trying to fight for his life. You have people trying to inject him with a cure while everyone else is wearing a mask and quarantine, trying to stay inside. Sounds very familiar. Number 465, Ghosts from the Past from Naruto Shippuden episode 303. This was the initial first episode where the Sound 4 came back and they reunite with Shikamaru, Kiba, Neji, and Choji, seeing how they've all grown up and defeated them. But the seals around them don't seal and we get them for two more episodes. But this first episode was good, just kind of sucks that it was dragged out. Number 646, Danger, Jinpachi, and Kushimaru from Naruto Shibuden episode 288. Like with the other ninja swordsmen, Jinpachi and Kushimaru aren't all that interesting. It's their swords. Kakashi and Kai being in the episode helps because Guy always turns anything with Kakashi into a competition. And so while at first both struggle on how to defeat them, once they have their back at each other, the fight starts favoring Guy and Kakashi and eventually both are sealed up. Number 463, Aesthetics of an Artist from Naruto Shibuden episode 280. This episode starts 
starts and end off the same way which means that nothing really happened or changed but I like Deidara so much that I'm willing to forgive the episode for doing nothing. He escapes and tries to use his art but after knowing more about the reanimation jutsu he sees it as being incompatible because his art is supposed to be a solitary moment and then I think this is where he finds out Sasuke is still alive or you know what it might be in a canon episode. I'm not sure but Deidara is shocked to find out that Sasuke wasn't even killed by his art. Also why didn't he use more of his C0? He can use it, explode himself during his big ass explosion and then come back. How come Kishimoto didn't think of that? Don't know why. Number 462 through 458. Five episodes from the Naruto's footsteps arc. I wish there was more of Ino's mind transfer jutsu. I think there could have been a cool evolution of messing with a person's mind. Maybe even killing a person by simply with one thought. Maybe Kishimoto could have come up with something better but he had no use for Ino. She's able to help Sakura and Choji when a team attacked during the exams by forcing herself to transfer her teammates thoughts to another of attacks and could see from the blind spots of where their enemies were coming from. That was pretty cool. It should have been a thing in the canon episode. Sakura is a part of Team Asuma due to Naruto and Sasuke being gone and Shikamaru is one of the proctors. Sakura is able to make Ino into a better ninja because she's always pushing herself to see where her limit is. Tintin and the team rain are stuck underground and meet a big ass giant ant. Both eventually kill it. The only good thing that comes out of this is that both teams wait until the third part of the exams to fight. Team Kurenai is busy fighting Team Kazami who I don't remember. I think there's that one big fat dude in the team. They think they got him but Team Kar and I are able to fake their death and come back later on. Number 457 and 456 Dark Clouds and Cloud of Suspicion from Naruto Shippuden episodes 490 and 492. Shikamaru gets chained up, chokes himself with his own shadow. Sai, Ino, Choji, and Jamari tag along. I forgot the other characters that were there with him, but Shikamaru's mission is to find out what happened with Sai and his team and capture or assassinate Gengo. Sai's team was killed except for him being used as a puppet. Gengo was able to gain power due to getting a branch of young shinobi and brainwashing them under his control during and after the war, eventually wanting to unite and have Ashinobi take over, it's a fine motive and goal. Number 455 through 452, four episodes from the 12th Garden Shinobi arc. Team Yamato and Sora are being separated for their individual fights. Sakura is with Sora, looking for Naruto. Naruto is stuck with Fuka. Yamato is trying to avoid being buried alive by Fudo. Sai is in a maze, being stabbed by Fuin. All of them make it out alive, and some of these would carry over when zombies show up. Sora talks to his father about the four bodies and how they're important to destroying the village. And since they're bringing Sora to the village, he meets some of the characters and doesn't get along with them too well. Calls Choji fat and is pretty Pretty much rude to everyone. He met Tsunade, immediately knocked his ass out and then had to apologize right then and there. Number 451 through 449, three episodes from the Land of Ricefields arc. Jiraiya takes Naruto and Sakura on a journey to the Land of Ricefields to search for Sasuke. Jiraiya of course has to leave them to go to a bar for a woman but that would pay off because a bunch of people start attacking him and they know about Orochimaru and how they helped out this land and by the end Sakura goes to Tsunade to take her under her wing which is a needed change and development for her. Number Number 448, The Man Who Died Twice from Naruto Shibuden, episode 193. Ghosts are confirmed to be in Naruto. Naruto ripped the attack from a rock or something and freed this guy. He wants revenge for the person that killed him. Naruto allows him to possess him for a bit to find the man that killed him. Turns out he was a part of the Anbu and helped find out if there were any spies in the leaf. Turns out this spy would be Kabuto and would kill the man that killed this ghost guy. But at least in the end, he knows that he got justice served. He went to prison and whatnot, but then he got killed by Kabuto and is able to move on. Number 447 through 444. Four episodes from the Borotsky arc. Roraiga is back and the team clearly knows because of all the lightning bolts around the area. The only reason Naruto comes along for the mission is the fact that Raiga is one of the ninja swordsmen and might have ties to Kasame and Itachi which can lead to Sasuke. Raiga has the lightning fang sword. Ninja is unable to see due to the fog which sounds super convenient and then after getting rid of him they find a basket case that has a boy in it. His name is Ranmaru and was Raiga's eyes and the only thing that he cared about. I thought the basket had a messed up conjoined twin because I just recently watched the basket case trilogy for the first time and it's pretty wild and weird so I was hoping for something like that. Number 443 and 442, Remembrance, The Lost Page, and The Closed Door from Naruto episodes 169 and 170. Anko is ordered to go to the Land of Sea to check out what this monster is with Naruto, Shino, and Ino. They come along because they have nothing else better to do I guess. But I do like the odd teams that come out of the filler. There's not a single moment I think where there's a team move that they can do because how would Shino's bug work with Naruto's shadow clones or Ino's mind transfer jutsu? Can she transfer into a bug and then relay info for the 
team. Naruto helps out a girl who's getting things thrown at her because she's a monster or she looks like one. Later on, she saves him from drowning. Kind of like Naruto being an outcast in her own village. They see her as a monster. And we see how Uncle fell about being with Orochimaru and then eventually being thrown out. She thought he cared about her like Kimimaru and anyone else under his wing. Going on this mission gives her PTSD from her time being around the pods and her curse mark paralyzes her. Number 441 and 440, Road to Sakura and Prologue of the Road to Ninja from Naruto Shippuden episodes 271 and 311. These two episodes kind of blend together for me. Both were prologue, essentially kind of like a promotion for the movies. Sakura goes to another world and sees that everything is different. Every character that she knows, they're all different and they mix it back. The other episode is definitely more memorable because Lee gathers everyone together and he's the last one to show up but through the roof but is suspected of being a pervert. There's a scene like this in the movie. The only difference being that Lee is wearing women's underwear for some reason super random but funny number 439 viva dojo youth is about passion from naruto episode 193 lee wants to challenge his skills so he sets up a dojo for any challengers naruto dodges a bullet because he doesn't want to face off against lee especially in taijutsu naruto bumps into the guy and wants him to face lee so that he can get rid of the signs in this house or shed that he built out of wood but of course guy is proud of lee and both find positivity in anything however guy is called by tsunade for a mission so a thief comes in and transforms into guy naruto brings him to lee and obviously he loses and then Tsunade assigns Naruto for a village because a thief is inside the village but he already has him there so this also means that this was the fastest mission that Naruto has ever completed. Number 438 Kakashi my eternal rival from Naruto Shippuden episode 241. This is a fun episode showing how Guy and Kakashi became rivals. It was mainly Guy who would always initiate the challenges but once they started they never stopped. Guy also accidentally sent a SOS message to Kakashi which is his notification when things get really bad they're at sea and guy doesn't believe him because he's been seeing some weird stuff at sea eating mushrooms seeing weird ghost ships doppelgangers other naruto but then eventually it takes yamato and even more proof that he is indeed real Number 437 through 427, 11 episodes from the 12 Garden Shinobi arc. Team Kuranai fights Gurren's team that consists of Slimy Guy, Stretchy Guy, Gas Guy. Yeah, I kind of forgot their names, but they have unique abilities, you know. To counteract Team Kuranai, Kakashi comes in for backup and reminds them that this fight will continue and gives Gurren something to look forward to because Kakashi is a challenge to her. Gurren's crystal style is an ability that was thought to be non-existent by using Orochimaru's flower. Before Naruto starts training with the frogs, him and Dry hang out for a bit and discuss not wanting to have another incident where he is overtaken by the nine tails there's some toby and dead that i've seen throughout this arc which is a shame because again they're good and a lot of people probably didn't see it getting to see their banter just chill and eat until they part ways and come back again toby sees the three tails and tells them to come back and they easily capture it because they had no host in the end Gurren quote unquote dies and is still gonna be with yuki maru because they need each other and are better off with no one knowing that she's still alive Number 426 and 425 Crisis, The Hidden Leaf 11 Gather, and Multiple Traps, Countdown to Destruction from Naruto Episodes 197-01. The start and end of the Konoha Plants arc are the only episodes that capture what it's all about. Naruto meets this nice old man named Geno, and they eat ramen all the time. Turns out he plans on destroying the village, but changes his mind because of Naruto, kind of reminding him of his own son, so he turned his traps into a scavenger hunt. Does make the rest of the episodes feel useless, but the core of it all is Geno and Naruto having a bond while eating some ramen is just simple and effective number 424 kakashi love song from naruto shibuden episode 191 this is kakashi's love story with hanare hanari love how team 7 is just straight up following them throughout the whole village kakashi's mission is to watch over her because she's a spy from another village they meet many years ago and see each other now would be jarring and hanari can get inside a person's mind when that person is searching within her mind which is kind of trippy but kakashi isn't able to kill her so he lets her go to live her life somewhere else Number 423, a special mission from Naruto Shippuden, episode 469. This episode finally showed Kashi's face and you know he looks good. He's got a mole on his face. Sarangan drains his chakra and body as well. So he just looks cool just to cover his face like that. He had this whole elaborate plan that included Team Guy, Team 7, 8, 10. All the other ninjas just wanted to see his face for some reason. Super random. I thought it was just Team 7 but everyone was like, hey, let's see his face. 
Number 422 and 421, The Closed Route, and Fight Rockley from Naruto Shippuden episodes 231 and 228. I like these episodes mainly because they're Shikamaru and Lee centric episodes. Shikamaru starts feeling the pressure of the upcoming war and shortening his friends' lives, so he wants to ease his mind by going on a ship that Naruto's on, and he chose the wrong time to get on because the fog gets thicker, water starts going crazy, pirates or criminals starts coming in, but the episode does meander a bit halfway through. Episode 228 starts off with a drunken fist Lee, but it's the dream which sucked but guy decides to take lee to a restaurant and accidentally drinks some alcohol and becomes the drunken fist version again just completely annihilating this entire restaurant gotta take him out in the sea so that he can just get some seasick and then eventually cool down and not be drunk anymore Number 428 Terror, this theme in from Naruto Shippuden episode 302. This is a much better episode for the second Mizukage. He's still a joke, but his exploding water clone is pretty cool. A mix of water and oil. Each time the clone moves, the oil heats up and eventually causes a violent explosion. Gar is able to stop him by using gold sand, which is what calms down the second Mizukage and declares Gar the golden egg of the current Kage, or just the best. Could have just said that, but I guess golden egg works as well. Number 419, The Infiltrator from Naruto Shippuden episode 270. After the Team 7 reunion, Sakura has to wake everyone up and apologize for having a stupid ass plan. Karina is able to fill out Naruto and she likes his vibe, but there's this dark feeling when she gets closer. And Kisame is still alive, the double lariat getting his head chopped off by B and A. That wasn't him, that was a white Zetsu. He is currently inside Samehara. And meanwhile, you have Killaby who doesn't care about this war or anything. That's a set up his own concert, but the fourth right Kai has to calm down and ruin his parade because having a concert is not the best thing to do, especially when Madara declared war number 418 through 416 three episodes from the chunin exams arc these three episodes are the breathing room episodes naruto and sakura are curious about these scrolls and are about to open it but kabuto conveniently stops them but if you do you get your ass kicked and you're just kind of out of the exams before all the matches start kabuto decided to drop out because of his injuries but he's also putting on a facade for naruto and sasuke because he's still a spy jiraiya teaches naruto the summoning technique but can only summon a goddamn tadpole and they always forget that hayate dies in his episode because he was spying on Kabuto. Number 415, Astonishing Truth, Gara's identity emerges from Naruto episode 74. Shino and Conqueror get to have their match. That was supposed to happen in the exams. Kinda wish I had more time. A puppet user and a bug user makes for a really interesting match. Shino inhales some poison early and has to hold out until he gets a bug on Conqueror. Conqueror has an issue of attacking long range but is left open to be attacked which Sasori would fix. Conqueror gets bugs all over him which Shino gets some poison. Once Sasuke catches up to Gara, Gara starts trying transforming into Shikaku Number 414, An Impossible Choice, The Pain Within Tsunade's Heart from Naruto Episode 89. Orochimaru offers Tsunade her brother and Dawn back, which I didn't really see as an impossible choice. Obviously, she hasn't gone over them, but dwelling over them when she knows how especially Orochimaru works. I might not know the details of experiments, but he straight up says he killed the third Hokage. I'd be like, hell no. But she misses them. Clear that she hasn't moved on just yet, keeping her mind off the village and shinobi stuff. 413, Killer Kanoichi and a Shiki Shikamaru from Naruto Episode 43. Half the episode is Tenten and Tamari fight and it's alright. Just continues to throw ninja tools at her and does nothing. Just takes Tamari like a couple of wind style jutsus of her fan to defeat her. The other half is Shikamaru's fight with the song girl and it's good. It goes the way that you would expect it but then you start hearing the theme and then he knocks her out by banging her head against the wall. She was so busy focusing on killing him that she didn't check her surroundings. This would be a prelude to his fight with Tamari being steps ahead of his enemies. Number 412, Long Time No See, Jiraiya Returns from Naruto Episode 53. So there's quite a bit of Jiraiya's dialogue that doesn't hold up. After hearing him say some stuff in this episode, if I was Naruto, I would not want Jiraiya to be my teacher. Jiraiya is able to remove the seal that Orochimaru put on him and is allowed to walk on water. He's having trouble doing it. And then it's revealed that he is one of the legendary Sonin, aka a pervert, aka a pervert sage, aka the sage master, frog master. Number 411 through 408, four episodes from the Kakashi Anbu arc. So Itachi joins the Anbu and Kakashi immediately wants to make him feel like a part of the team because all the other ninjas and Anbu are like testing him, but he's just a kid. Part of the episode is dedicated to Itachi and his father talking about the tension between the Uchiha and the village. And Danzo wants Tenzo to steal Kakashi's Sharingan because Danzo loves messing things up. Both end up in a room full of pods and a big ass Orochimaru looking snake thing. Tenzo failed and had a change of heart. Plays that root tattoo that Sai has on 
his tongue to Tenzo, but the third Hokage stops by and saves his life. Now we're getting under him. Probably should have suspended Donzo or something because he's a hard doing some weird shady stuff. And we get to see what happened after the whole Ninetales attack, how they chose the new Hokage. Donzo wanted more Chimaru, but the third just came back and was like, okay, I'll be Hokage for now, but that for now will be a long ass time. Number 407 through 404, four episodes from the Itachi arc. After Orochimaru left, the Akatsuki, Sasori, and Deidera go after him, and it doesn't go quite the way that they want it to. Sasori is surprised with a reanimated third Kazakage, which he is able to somewhat fight back. Then Itachi is teamed up with Kasame, both going to the leaf to get the Nine Tails. Before the arc even started, there were some dreams shown, like Konkuro's big ass mecha puppet, Kiba wants a dog day, Shino found a new big ass bug. All that was really cool. Seeing Itachi during the third Great Ninja War, this would obviously turn him into a pacifist, tries killing himself in this episode which I forgot about, he jumps off a cliff but then stops himself, in the academy he's leagues better than everyone and of course there's gonna be some jealous kids, Itachi isn't one to show off, he's just doing his thing, just leaves a shot on Claude anytime he goes and go out and meet Jisui. Number 403 through 397, 7 episodes from the Sage of Six Paths arc, I don't think it's called the Sage of Six Paths arc but I don't know what else to call it, Hagoroma has Ashura and Indira go out and fix the village and bring people together, Indira uses power power and fear while Ashura takes months and time to help these people and bring in people and bring them together wants to find a successor between them. Kage is essentially an alien that came from space and is immediately dealt with conflict. Some people don't want her out, some people don't. So she decides to end all the conflict by eating chakra fruit and becomes the mother of all chakra. First initial reaction to Kage was like an alien from base. That seems a bit weird. This is a show about ninjas but the more I thought about it, the show kind of stopped being about ninjas even all the way back in the first arc because when I think of ninjas I'm thinking of the the black suit, sword, and sneaking around. Very first arc, you have Kakashi and Zabuza doing water style dragon jutsus. This show is never gonna be a straightforward and traditional series about ninjas. Both Hagoromo and Hamura are born and are immediately vicious of Kaguya's actions and not getting close to the tree. It's killing and eating chakra. So Hagoromo trains for Sage Bone, and that frog sitting in that chair that gave Jiraiya and Naruto their prophecies is this frog, which means that he is eons old, like hella old. And then after learning Sage Bone, getting the Sharingan and the Renegon, he and Hamura seal Kaguya and go live their lives until they pass away but they didn't see that she fed out Black Zetsu right at the end, be the one to mess with the stone tablet and set everything in motion essentially number 396 through 391, 6 episodes from the Paradise Life on a Boat arc. So some of these episodes from the Boat arc are fun and good. Before Naruto goes out and sails off, he like helps out a guy try to catch a giant marlin. Cause you know why not? Naruto turns into Pirates of the Caribbean for an episode. Pirates decide to attack their ship but they don't know that they're messing with ninjas. Naruto, Guy, and Yamato are starving and eat a bunch of mushrooms. A merchant and his gang put something in it so that they can steal some stuff when they all die but they didn't. Naruto's being forced to marry this lady because back when when Jiraiya saved and defeated this one lady, marriage is a way to rule their village. So Naruto's avoiding any interactions with them. For some reason, they end up in a volcano because a giant ass bird took Guy away to like feed his birds, but he's just kind of entertaining them. It turns out there's a beast here that was being researched on, so then it turns into a kaiju episode. And then there has to be a ghost ship because Naruto and the team aren't the only ones that sailed through the sea. There just had to be some people that died when they were at sea. Number 390 through 387, 4 episodes from the childhood arc. This arc was good, seeing childhood versions of our characters. Sasuke wants to train with Itachi, which we've seen like a bunch of times already. There's a rumor going around that Sakura has a crush on Sasuke, didn't really need to see or know that. Anytime it cuts to Gara's backstory, always sad. Back in the dreams, he had a dream about wanting to be a kid and hanging out with Kid Naruto. Gara never really had a good childhood because it was taken away from him. Shikamaru is bored at the academy, he and Choji start their friendship and both seem to welcome Naruto anytime he's a around. They didn't bully him or tell him to go away. As long as they were having fun, they allowed Naruto to come in. Jiraiya was always a little pervert. He wants Orochimaru to join him. Clearly not interested and obviously gets caught for it. Kakashi always has to clean up and do everything by himself because his dad died. So washing the dishes, cleaning the toilet, cleaning the house, everything. He did it by himself. But Rene and Obito is always watching him and then obviously he notices them. So he invites them over to have dinner together. And the best episode is the Naruto and Hinata one. Naruto didn't have money for food. So he went out, go fishing, catch a fish and along the way the third Hokage will come in to you know scare him at first but say hi be around him and just have some company over and then Hinata's story I think we've seen it one time where she doesn't want to be a ninja but is forced to because she's a part of the main branch of the Yuga clan that part is like okay we know this but it ends off with Naruto walking her home 
Number 386, The Divine Tree from Naruto Shippuden, Episode 381. Madara gives Hashirama a history lesson on Kaguya, how she came to be, and how she ate fruit from the divine tree to have all the chakra to end conflict. She doesn't get any build up beyond this, so it was necessary to at least show something of her. Obito summons the divine tree and immediately starts sucking up chakra from the allied forces, leaving their body kind of mummified. And it happens quickly as well. When the tree came up, I was like, okay, what's the big deal? You know, it's just a big ass tree. And then it just starts killing and sucking people really quickly. Quickly. Number 385 and 384, Surprise Attack, Naruto's Secret Weapon, and Akamaru Unleashed, who's top dog now from Naruto episodes 45 and 44. Start of this fight is a bit slow with the flashback, but it helps add on to the fact that everyone is doubting Naruto and his ability to win and beat Kiba. They still see him as that annoying brat that had no talent. He was able to prove everyone wrong with the transformation jutsu, but then Kiba gives Akamaru food pills and throws some smoke using Fang over Fang, which is the only jutsu that he knows, I think. Okay, maybe not the only one, but it's the only one that he uses all the goddamn time. And then one unpredictable thing happened. Naruto farts in Kiba's face and does his new but also copycat technique that he saw Sasuke did. The Uzumaki Barrage and defeats Kiba. Number 383, the Blue Beast vs. Six Paths Matara from Naruto Shippuden episode 418. It's now Guy's turn to face off against him. He opens the seventh gate, but that's not enough. It's a teaser to the eventual opening of all the eight gates. And then guess who returns? Kabuto. He is out of Itachi's Izanami and has accepted who he is. Like with Orochimaru, it always felt weird that Kabuto was just kind of let go of all the things that he did. Even Sugetsu mentions that he's partly responsible for this war. And he's like, yeah, that's right. Just nothing's gonna happen. All right. But he's here putting some eggs into Sasuke to save him and then there's some my guy and die flashbacks which are nice because more of guy is always good Number 382 through 377, six episodes from the Naruto's footsteps arc. Choji, Sakura, and Ino finish their fight with Team Saya. They're fighting multiple dolls around the sandstorm, and Sakura is able to remove the poison. They were friends. Her training with Tsunade turned out to be useful. Bald man that's playing his music starts his secret plotting by capturing Gara and extracting his one tail. But Fu comes in wanting to save Gara, but gets caught as well. You can't help but just like Fu because she's so positive, even when she's getting her seven tails extracted. It takes Team Guy and I think the other teams that help. Gar and Fu get out. Shira is another good filler character. Some San Shinobi don't like him, so they put Shira down and his teammates. Any chance that they get, Team Guy comes in to help them. Lee and Shira are pretty much the same character. They only use Taijutsu, can't use Genjutsu or Ninjutsu, and both have their own versions of the eight inner gates. Number 376 to 374, three episodes from the search for Tsunade. Tsunade was not able to save her brother or Dawn, even with medical ninjutsu. So after all these events, she kind of just shut off and went on her own journey. If she couldn't save her loved ones, what makes her think that it's going to change the way the village goes about their missions and kind of including one medical ninja on each team? Drugs Jirai and knocks out Izune so that she can go and kill Orochimaru and Kabuto, which was kind of a dumb idea on her part. And then she's back in the same situation. This time, she has to save Naruto and almost believes that that the results will be the same but Naruto touches the necklace and is still on about the promise that she made. She was able to save a person and now she accepts her role as the fifth Hokage and she also uses the Todic Regeneration Jutsu to heal herself and all the Sanin used the summoning Jutsu for the deadlock. Number 373, the Junin exam, stage 2, the force of death from Naruto episode 27. After Anko states the rules about the second part of the exams, the gates open and all the team run in and get ready to survive for days and get one of the scrolls from the other team. Team 8 quickly defeats one of the team and takes their scroll. The grass team has plans to go after a certain team and the leader loves using her tongue because she's the one that hands back Anko her kunai. Team 7 is doing fine until the clone team attacks them. Number 372, miscalculation, a new enemy appears from Naruto episode 119. The Sasuke retrieval team has the upper hand for once, but it's short-lived because Kiba and Akamaru fall down the cliff with Sakon and Ukon. It leaves Shikamaru and Naruto to fight Tayuya, but then Kimimaru shows up, takes Sasuke, meaning Naruto and Shikamaru have to split up. Shikamaru stays to fight Tayuya while Naruto goes after Kimimaru. All are split up and have their own fights that they have to deal with. Number 371, the tension bridge from Naruto Shibuden episode 39, Team Kakashi is Finally, at the bridge, Yamato is disguised as Sasori to meet up with the spy who turns out to be Kabuto. After exchanging some words, there's a Orochimaru jump scare, or at least I wasn't expecting it at all, to cut from his face really quick. Just kind of lurking in the back of the woods, and then comes out, call out Yamato's lie and disguise, and gives the orders for the team to come out. And Naruto is already pissed off, ready to attack. The episode still suffers from pacing. 
Number 370, my first friend from Naruto Shippuden, episode 388. While Naruto, Sai, and Hashirama get Madara, Gara has an opportunity to talk to Shukaku. Sora needs him and he agrees to help. However, it then leads into an unnecessary flashback, but it reshows how both of them met Naruto and just kind of grew up the same in terms of being lonely because they were a Jinjuriki, just shunned by their own village. It's the same sad story that everyone knows about, and then Gara leads the way to join the battle. This episode should be lower because of the flashback, but I like Gara enough that I'll just let it pass. Number 369 and 368, Roar and Hal, the ultimate tag team, and to each his own battle from Naruto episodes 120 and 121. Kiba, Ukon, and Sakon fight is my least favorite fight from the Sasuke retrieval arc, but it's still a good fight. Sakon and Ukon are twins that can switch places with each other and go inside another person's body like one of them did with Kiba. Kiba's two-headed wolf jutsu was cool, but it leads to fang over fang again, and it was a ballsy move on Akiba's part to stab himself. The Akamaru kunai explosion was cool as well, and then Kiba and Akamaru have their retreat. There's also some scenes to other fights, but they go nowhere other than filling in time. Number 367, Power to Believe from Naruto Shippuden episode 158. While Conan and the Six Paths of Pain continue their attack, the two elders suggest that they should hand over Naruto and Tsunade obviously tells him to back off. The village always treated him as an object and power that can be used. They never consider him a comrade or being a part of the village and it has to cut to a flashback because you know, that's what it needed. Donzo was in that room the whole time and killed the frog that was supposed to warn Naruto. Donzo plans on using Pain's Assault as his leverage to becoming the next Hokage and most likely blaming and Tsunade for letting the village get destroyed. Number 366 through 364. Three episodes from the Kazakage arc, Sasori shows Chio and Sakura his true face and he still looks young. I think he should be in his 30s. It's Eri seeing a guy like Sasori who still has the face of a teenager killing people and poisoning them because you're not expecting someone like that to be a murderer. However, it is bogged down by Tamari and Conqueror stuff. Both go out with the team to help get Gar back but gets tired. Chasing Deidara would be a thing for the next 8 or 9 episodes. If it weren't for those scenes, then episode 21 would be a lot higher. Team guy's gonna have to fight their clones for a long ass time. Both Kasame and Itachi start their fights with Team Guy and Kakashi. Guy deals with the water waves and large amounts of chakra while Team Kakashi takes a little longer because Chiyo explains how to never fight in Uchiha 101. It's always best to have someone wake you up if you get caught in a genjutsu or knock out the Uchiha who cast it. The only issue is that Itachi is just different. He's able to cast a genjutsu on Naruto without using his eyes. Number 363, Naruto's counterattack never give in from Naruto episode 29. Despite how bad it looks, Naruto's never gonna give in or give in to fear. So I love that he stops Sasuke from giving Orochimaru their scroll and especially when the giant snake comes towards Sasuke and Naruto is able to stop it and cause Sasuke a scaredy cat, calling back to the time Sasuke saved him. Sasuke at this point is more skilled than Naruto, but Naruto isn't gonna be phased at all. And Orochimaru seals Naruto's access to the Ninetales chakra. Number 362 and 361, Kashi and Lion and Hiroko versus Tu Kanoichi from Naruto Shippuden episodes 29 and 20. Kakashi uses his Kamui to take out Deidara's other arm. It's not the most visually pleasing to look at in terms of the Kamui. It gives Naruto an opportunity to attack Deidara and retrieve Gara. and this whole time Naruto was hoping that he would still be alive but he's not and pummels Deidara until his hands are bloody and the Ninetales Jogger starts leaking out from Naruto. Chiyo and Sakura start their fire sorcery and dodge everything, dodging needles and needles inside traps. It's revealed later that Chiyo was controlling Sakura. Chiyo doesn't have the power to destroy the puppet but Sakura does and Sakura doesn't know his movements that well but Chiyo does so their combination works well and they're able to destroy the puppet. 360 the first and last opponent from Naruto Shibuden episode 266. Both Sugetsu and Jugo get some screen time for exposition. Sugetsu explains each of the swordsmen. Twin Sword is the one that Chojuro has and can store and emit the user's chakra and take on various forms. The helmet splitter is an axe and hammer. That can crush any defenses. If you're counting Susanos, then almost anything. The Thunder Swords are the sharpest of the swords with some lightning thrown in there. The Executioner's Blade is the one that Zauza has. It's a giant butcher knife that can regenerate when it absorbs blood. The Needle Sword is my favorite because it can piece and sew enemies together. Samehara is a sword, but it's more like a parasite that just so happens to look like a sword. It eats chakra and will make the user stronger. And then the last sword just has a bunch of explosion tags on it and you'll explode if you get hit by it. Kakashi goes through the same events as he did in the Land of Waves arc. He has to use the lightning blade again to hit Haku again and then with the help of his unit heals Zabuza. There's a good flashback to the bridge where Naruto liked his enemies, Haku and Zabuza even though they were his enemies. 
359 and 358, the complete Ino Shikucho formation, and true kindness from Naruto Shibuden episodes 274 and 273. Ino Shikucho are forced to fight Asuma. All have the advantage. Choji can't do it. He's too kind. Both episodes go into how Choji can turn his kindness into strength. Chozo is worried that Choji will be too kind in a fight, but he doesn't want to hurt his friends or sensei. It takes Ino to talk with them in his mind and for Asuma to call him fat or fatso to finally hit Asuma and seal him away. Asuma has nothing else to say to them. They've become the complete Ino Shikacho. It's a wholesome moment for Choji and Asuma and all of Team 10. Number 357 and Shinobi's Determination from Naruto Shibuden Episode 90. Orochimaru's hideout is once again the main point of a mission. After using the Rasen Shuriken, Naruto can't use it anymore because it will affect his ability to mow chakra. It also means that he can't eat ramen, so Sai tries to help him out by trying to feed him, but Naruto doesn't want that. Sai's still trying to figure out how to be a human and act normal. Kashi also explains why he didn't use Kamui against Hidan or Kagazu. He didn't want to be in a hospital again for like a week. Number 356, Banquet Invitation from Naruto Shippuden Episode 134. Toby needs to stall some time for Itachi and Sasuke, so he messes with Naruto and the others, Wakamo, Jutsu, and wasting their time. Both Kasame and Sugetsu have their sword fight, and this episode is after Jiraiya's death, so it's more of a breather episode to let things calm down before heading into another fight with Sasuke and Itachi. 355 Live or Die, Risk It All to Win It All from Naruto episode 56. Naruto keeps summoning a Tarpo, so Jiraiya gets tired of it and takes him to different areas of the village to do everything that he's always wanted. Jiraiya plans on pushing Naruto into a pit. Naruto needs to feel that he's in danger and pushed to his limit in order to truly get strong. Speaking with the Nine Tails for the first time, it lends him some power so that both of them don't die, need each other at the moment, and Naruto is able to summon Gamabunta. Number 354, a new training begins, I will be strong from Naruto, episode 86. Guy heads back to the village, but before he goes, he gives Naruto a green jumpsuit, and while he doesn't wear it now or in any canon episodes, Naruto does wear the jumpsuit in a filler episode. This episode is more relaxed, Jiraiya and Naruto have some fun in a town until Jiraiya uses a Rasengan, starts the balloon training, and Tsunade is known as the ultimate sucker because she always loses her bets. Number 353, the final rounds rush to the battle arena from Naruto episode 59. Before Naruto gets to the final round, he gets a nice and good looking bowl of ramen by the ramen guy because his match is tomorrow and it's, you know, good luck. And then while he's going to the arena, he meets Hinata. He gives him some encouragement as he also encouraged her during her fight with Neji. And then Naruto calls her weird, timid, always afraid of everything, but then adds on he likes people like her. She only heard the I like you part. She didn't hear anything else. She's just standing there, still looking. And then Naruto racing to the arena, that part always felt filler to me. Him meeting Konohamaru and then there's a bunch of bowls with him and then he goes right into the arena meeting the other contestants. 352 Five Kage Summits Eve from Naruto Shippuden episode 198. Kari beating on Naruto felt kind of unnecessary. Naruto was willing to protect Sasuke even if he's getting beat. Donzo starts messing things up by ordering a handful of Anbu to find and kill Kabuto before Anko does because he has ties to Orochimaru and it might look bad for him if everyone in the village knew that he had connections to him. And Madara is driving Sasuke towards more darkness by telling him to go to the Five Kage Summit to assassinate Donzo. Number 351, Village in Distress, a new A-ranked mission from Naruto episode 69. Kakashi orders Sakura to wake up Naruto and Shikamaru to go help Sasuke with Gara. Shikamaru was pretending because it would be a drag to do something about the invasion. Orochimaru and Hiruzen start their fight on a rooftop and it's the first time the reanimation jutsu would be shown. Summons first and second Hokage, stops the third casket because Minato would have probably changed the way that this fight would go down. Number 350 and 349, Haku's secret jutsu, demonic marrying ice crystals, and the land where a hero once lived from Naruto episodes 13 and 11. Team 7 leaves without Naruto to go to the bridge, but Naruto has to stop two of Kato's men who attack Inari and his mom, and then Naruto shows up at the end for a cool entrance. Team 7 is dealing with Zabuza and Haku. Sasuke is stuck inside Haku's ice mirrors for the most part. Inari gets some backstory because he and the rest of the town would help Team 7 fight back against Gato and his men. There was once a hero in the land and Gato just got to him, leaving Inari with no one to go to for help. Gato also caused the land to go into poor poverty. People are still and asking for food and then Naruto and Sasuke are still outside in the forest trying to reach to the top. Number 348, Forbidden Secret Technique, Reaper Death Seal from Naruto Episode 73. The third Hokage summons the Reaper Death Seal to seal away the first and second Hokage and eventually Orochimaru's arms. Their tug of war would last six episodes and I think every episode from 74 through 79, they keep cutting back to it and every time nothing happens aside from filling in some time. So every time I think back on this fight, I'll always remember how it ended with a tug of war. 
episode 347, The Will of Fire Still Burns from Naruto episode 99. Lee is still down because of the news from Tsunade. He should stop being a ninja. His injuries are too severe. Sucker hands him flowers and he plays will he or will he not until Tsunade decides to help him get back on his feet. And then Konohamaru doesn't accept Tsunade as the new Hokage because he fears that everyone in the village will forget who the third was. But later accepts her because she's willing to help Lee even if she stated that it's impossible she will try. Number 346, The Secret of Jinjuriki from Naruto Shippuden Episode 16. Team Kakashi and Guy's fight with Itachi and Kasami were just a waste of time. Gara was one of the bodies that was used and it also means that the Akatsuki has already started the extraction and Gara will die if they complete it. We also see what the Sam Village is going to do about Gara's kidnapping. Some of them weren't even down with Gara as a Kazekage. The only reason was to calm down Gara's one tail power so that he doesn't wreak havoc on the village. Some of them are even glad that he's gone saying that this is a good chance for a clean slate and they keep getting their kage either killed or kidnapped. Conqueror obviously doesn't like hearing any of this and tells them that they have good points but he's not gonna write off Gara because he's his little brother. Number 345 Jinjuriki vs Jinjuriki from Naruto Shubuden episode 325. Naruto and B have to fight six of the tailed beasts with each one having a Sharingan and a Renegon and each of them have their own unique powers. The six tails has a liquid ability. Yagura can mirror yourself. Urokata has bubbles that can explode. Han has a mist ability that can do something that I forgot about. And Yukito is just a big ass fire cat. All of them give Naruto and B a hard ass time and need some backup. And so they have a backup at the end with Kakashi and guys showing up. Number 344, the light and dark of the Mangeko Sharingan from Naruto Shippuden episode 136. This part of the fight was cool, but I just wanted to see Sasuke and Itachi fight. Tell Sasuke the story of Madara Uchiha. He had a brother after using his Sharingan way too much. Through his brother's eyes, that's when he awakened the eternal Mangeko Sharingan, which grants the users not to go blind at all. So that's Itachi's entire plan. Use Sasuke and his eyes because he's going blind. Number 343 and 342, Assassin of the Moonlit Night and Light vs Dark, the two faces of Gaara from Naruto episode 76 and 77. In flashbacks, we see how he grew up, mostly alone for the most part. He had his uncle both talk about pain and how some pain can be healed like a cut on a finger but a wound to the heart won't be able to heal or it will take the longest to heal. This will come back as he's the one to try to assassinate Gaara by the orders of the fourth Kazakage because Yashimaru hasn't healed from his sister dying due to giving birth to Gaara and can never forgive him. Gara's sin that protects him is his mom, still protecting him and cursing the village with Gara who's supposed to be a monster. This analogy always stuck with me. It's just a good analogy about the heart not being able to heal both literally and metaphorically. Number 341, Naruto enters the battle from Naruto Shippuden episode 296. There's a big recap at the beginning because there was 12 weeks of filler. They gotta remind people what happened. Once it's past that, Naruto enters the battlefield and doesn't hold back. He uses three Rasengas at the same time to get rid of the Zetsus. There's the Rasenga absorption, many Rasen Shuriken, sends out multiple clones to every battlefield. It does create an issue. Naruto just completely takes over the war and the rest of the allied forces seem useless. Everyone just waits for Naruto to come save them. In a way, kind of winning the war kind of by himself everyone does help but mainly naruto's like just doing everything essentially number 340 who are you from naruto shippuden episode 343 obito was toby and madara this entire time luckily i wasn't spoiled on who he was when i first watched it didn't really theorize about the identity of toby i had maybe like one thought about it and then just moved on it does show flashbacks to obito and team minato the beginning parts just had music there was no dialogue whatsoever the music was happy and calm and then it cuts to kashi guiding episodes john kakashi and obito's faces together and then cutting to the present now a completely different person There's that he let Ren die and then at the same time Madara shows up just to make things a lot more harder. Number 339, The Serpent's Pupil from Naruto Shibuden episode 113. Sasuke decides to kill off Orochimaru after spending 3 years with him. Sasuke finds him disgusting for experimenting on humans for a ridiculous goal of achieving everything. He sees him like Itachi trying to achieve a goal by killing others. He like spits himself out and is a goddamn giant snake to easily get inside another person's body. And the snake has become the prey as if thrown outside with the hawk grabbing a snake. Number 338, Unison Sign from Naruto Shibuden episode 277. Naruto Naruto and the Ninetales have a talk about hatred and how Naruto can't bear all of it all by himself nor can he stop the war all by himself. It's good that they're talking to each other. It's still not the best way to have a relationship with a powerful fox inside of you but at least they're calling to each other now that Naruto has its chakra and the unison sign would be important because Naruto and Sasuke didn't do the unison sign but would need to do it by the end of the series.
Number 337, mix it, stretch it, boil it up, burn, copper pot, burn from Naruto episode 168. This episode is about ramen. I just like looking at food being cooked. Naruto and Choji are learning how to make ramen because the ramen guy is closing his shop due to his daughter getting kidnapped. But I don't care about that. I want to see more cooking. They use their ninja skills to make the perfect bowl of ramen. Also, I might have been hungry when I watched this episode. That might be the reason why I put this episode this high. Number 336, The Cursed Warrior from Naruto episode 162. The initial premise and start of the Cursed Warrior arc was promising. Naruto, Tenten, and Neji go to the land of birds to search for a ghost. Naruto believes in this and they come across a warrior and Neji confirms by activating his Byakugan that there's no one in the armor, meaning that it's gotta be a ghost. What else can it be? And it probably should have been more about this than whatever we got because it's not as interesting. Number 335 and 334, the tuning exams begin and the new tuning exams begin from Naruto Shibuya within episodes 395 and 394. Once again, the initial start of the filler tuning exam was interesting. Tsunade set it up to draw out the Akatsuki because it's been quiet from them. The other nations are a bit cautious about the exam. Anogi declines the offer. The Sand and some other village and nations accept it. Hina is obviously suspicious of this offer. Kakashi is going to offer them info and was already feeling something wasn't right. But Pain sends one team for 333 through 331. Three episodes from the war filler arc. These three episodes are about Yota. She had a run-in with some of the Konoha 11, played with Naruto, Sakura, and Team 8 and Team 10 when they were all still at the academy. They were all having fun until disappeared. Turns out she could control the weather but had died because her body was too weak. But of course Orochimaru just had to bring her back through the reanimation jutsu for his benefit which means when they all met her she was a reanimated shinobi. But at least this time she could just say goodbye to all of them unlike last time. Number 330 and 329, the Jinjuriki's Tears and Ron Conqueror from Naruto Shibuden episodes 9 and 7. Nothing really happens in episode 9 but the one scene where Naruto kind of reiterates that both him and Gar are the ones that know what it's like to be alone due to being a Jinjuriki and both looked upon as monsters to the village and then Tamari feels his tears as he's the one ahead of everyone else. We also see Sasori's mouth which moves individually and then Conqueror runs after Deidara and Sasori to get Gar back for an entire episode. Number 328, Waizetsu's Trap from Naruto Shibuden episode 279. The White Zetsu's cloning in the war was a good idea on their part because you're not gonna expect your teammate to stab you in the back. Team 8 had to deal with this. Kiba, Ino, and Hinata all experience this imposter versions of themselves and then have them run away because of the shock and then later on seeing that it's imposters. But using the Byakugan won't help as well because all the Zetsu's copy not only their parents but also the chakra as well. Number 327, a symbol from Naruto Shibuden episode 121, Tsunade forms the 8-man squad for Itachi Pursuit, which is also kind of a mission to get Sasuke back to the village again. Both Kasame and Itachi hunt and defeat the Four Tails, but it's mainly Kasame. But before they seal him up, Pain informs all of them that Sasuke has killed Orochimaru, which prompts Deidara to go after him. Just seeing how both Kasame and Itachi work, but also just how things are like during the meetings. They're just kind of like, okay, do your own thing in a 2-man squad. If you capture a tail beast, that's great. If you don't, that's fine. Fine. Number 326 through 324, three episodes from the war arc. Day one of the war ends with Toby coming in and summoning the Gyoto statue to wreak havoc and also get the Gold and Silver Brothers Nine Tails Chakra. A remains adamant on not letting Naruto and Killer B go, which means that Naruto has to prove to him that he's much faster than him. It's a way to confirm that both will be fine when they go to the battlefield. Was it unnecessary for A to do this? Kind of, but it gives A and Killer B's backstory and how fast Naruto is compared to him. And then Kabuto summons Mu to summon the second Mizukage, the third Raikou, and the fourth Kazakage to the battlefield while Shikaku plan things out on the battlefield and goes through every possibility if things go wrong. Since Mu is out there and has the particle style, Anoki to go out to the battlefield to fight his former teacher. Also, his planning, it's great. Most plans, something goes wrong all the time. So while I do like it, it's kind of like, how the hell is he going to have all of this work out? And it kind of does. Well, I mean, it doesn't because poor Kage and Madara shows up, but all of this doesn't go according to plan. Number 323 and 322 formation, new team Kakashi, and an unnecessary addition from Naruto Shibuden episodes 34 and 35. Size ability is cool, but I don't know if it could have been expanded on further than ceilings and flying. Maybe he could have drawn a big ass dragon or bear and killed people in one attack. Starts attacking Naruto, Shikamaru, and Choji, test out Naruto's strength, and then later says he was nothing impressive. When they all meet up, it's not the best first impressions of each other. Size pretty much rude and just right off the bat towards Naruto and Sakura, Tenzo, or Yamato would be the temporary leader for Team Kakashi and before they leave for their mission, he sees Jiraiya at the hospital tell his story about Ninetales Chakra leak from Naruto, saw at least four tails pop up and his chest was permanently marked from their training. 
number 321 surpassing the master from Naruto Shippuden episode 156 one of the many benefits from learning sage mode is that you can't get injured easily Naruto falls from the balancing board and he's fine he decides to learn a new technique when all the frogs go to sleep he's going out and training late at night meanwhile Taka is chilling resting up before going to the leaf village but Sasuke's vision starts becoming blurred and then the fourth fry Kage is still hung up on killer B so he calls for a five Kage summit meeting 320 through 318 puzzles us from the 12th Garden Shinobi arc. Naruto begins his Rasen Shuriken training with Kakashi and Yamato. We learn that each Shadow Clone can have a different experience, but once it's gone, that information goes back to the original body. Naruto has one nature, and you can combine different chakra natures to create a new nature release like Yamato's Wood Style. And since Asuma is the only Jonin in the village that has one nature, he teaches Naruto about how to use it. Also, I didn't know that these three episodes were the official start of the 12th Guardian Shinobi arc. I thought it was episode 56. Seven, but apparently it starts at 54 so we see naruto having dreams of the fire temple and the nine tails attack all that stuff is just scenes for the filler arc number 317 the old monk's prayer from naruto ship within episode 75 asuma shikamaru and the team arrive at the fire temple to see the aftermath of what hidon and kakuzu did the bald guy isn't there as he's a 30 million dollar bounty both hidon and kakuzu are i think the best and my favorite duo they don't like each other at all and bicker quite a bit but work so well with each other i think kakuzu does most of the heavy lifting because Hidon can just take a hit and be fine. Both can't die in the traditional sense. And then Kakashi takes Naruto to go get some ramen and he's got to deal with a new menu but ends up eating the new dipping ramen and, and Kakashi is able to show Naruto that he can also use the Rasengan as well. Number 316 and 315, Izanagi and Izanami and the Izanami activated from Naruto Shippuden episodes 338 and 337. So Itachi explains how Izanami works. It's essentially putting a person in an endless loop until that person is able to accept who they really are. Itachi cast it on Kabuto because he thinks he deserves a second chance which is like okay sure. Also this is another forbidden jutsu from the Uchiha clan. Like how many forbidden jutsus do he has have? But Kabuto will be stuck in the Izanami until episode 400 or something? It's somewhere around there. Number 314, The Price of Power from Naruto Shibuden, Episode 89. Naruto's Rasen Shuriken is so strong that he destroyed Kakuzu's entire chakra system and disconnected his cells. The only downside is that Tsunade can't treat the scar in Naruto's arm, so he can't use it. And then Shikamaru visits Asuma's grave, places lighter, and starts working towards being a teacher because Kurenai is pregnant with Asuma's kid. So they did have a thing going on before he left because it seemed like they had a thing for each other, but then both never really said anything about it. Asuma entrusted Shikamaru to become this kid's teacher 313 and 312, the last mission and Naruto's wedding from Naruto Shibuden episodes 498 and 494. Hino and Kiba's gift for the wedding is honey wine, and this mission will be their last together as Team 8 because Naruto is getting married with Hinata. Kiba's gonna do something, breed dogs or whatever. I don't know. And then Shino plans to be a teacher at the academy, which comes out of nowhere. I didn't really see him as a teacher. He seemed like he wants to be left alone, but it's a setup for Boruto. This wedding arc starts off by Kono Hamaru recording messages from each ninja, and Haruka is having a hard time coming up with something to say and since everyone has to be in this arc kakashi declares getting a gift for the wedding as a mission for everyone number 311 through 308 four episodes from the yakumo arc i like this arc mainly because of her ability her paintings can affect the village but whether she's doing it on purpose or not is a mystery kurna is also a complete mystery in this arc she leaves team 8 as leader she's having secret meetings with her hokage about stealing away her power and then she puts the entire village in her own genjutsu where the village was destroyed but all this could have been avoided if kurna just told her that she had this entity and demon inside of her trying to destroy the village then she wouldn't have made this painting have like light Lightning Bolt just destroying houses and putting everyone under a genjutsu. 307 to 304. Four episodes from the Bigoju arc. Naruto and Team 8 search for this bug that can track down Sasuke if it spells his scent. Naruto thinks he's found it in an episode because he can't tell the difference between a normal bug and this bug. But there also has to be a bug clan that's going after this bug as well because there needs to be some fights. And apparently they were rivals for Dino's clan. But again, we've never heard of them before. And then Hinata gets her own arc. She wants to prove that she can still hold her own and protect her comrades. And she does. She has her own version of the 64 palms that's not canon but still cool to see her cut through chakra thread and it ends in the same way that the filler arcs in the first series where they all fail the mission because if they succeeded then they will have to find sasuke and naruto is back to square one 
Number 303 and 302, Hunt or Be Hunted, Showdown at the OK Temple, and Bounty Hunter from the Wilderness from Naruto episodes 160 and 159. Naruto, Kiba, and Hinata need to capture a thief who turns out is being pursued by a bounty hunter and that hunter is trying to prove his innocence. Apparently he's a criminal and also being hunted by another bounty hunter. This hunter's name is Sazanami and is being accused of murdering a family and the main suspect that actually killed him is this thief. Both him and the team are tracking him down. In the end, he's able to prove his innocence while the team fails the mission. Also, this didn't feel like Naruto. It kind of felt like it was from another show, which I didn't mind at all because there's 720 episodes. I welcome any variety when it comes to the concepts and stories from filler. For 301, the star's radiance from Naruto episode 183. Like the way that the star guard arc ended, everyone in the village stands up to protect their village from the star that's poisoning them. This one greedy ass person wants it so much that he fuses his body with the star and causes his chakra to go out of control, easily defeated by Naruto. The star itself is what poisoned the village in the first place. It led to some people being really greedy for it. Number 300 through 294, seven episodes from the Six Tales arc. Hotara wants Urakata as her teacher, but every time she asks, he declines or gets her away, tells her to do something difficult. She comes back every time because she learned it quickly. Urakata can't accept her because his sensei saw the Six Tales inside of him as a burden and learned a way to extract it out of him. Didn't really accept him for who he was. Eventually, he does accept her as a student, but once he does, Pain comes by and takes him for extraction while Hotaro is still waiting for his return. 293 and 292, Minato's death and a mask that hides the heart from Naruto Shippuden episodes 350 and 349. Minato is now the fourth Hokage and a Anbu member tells him that Kakashi is kind of scary on his Anbu missions. So he gives Kakashi a mission to watch over Kushina who is pregnant and it was to lessen the darkness in his heart. This would backfire because Toby attacks the leaf village with the nine tails and both Minato and her die. So in the end, it would make things worse for Kakashi. Still has nightmares about killing Ren and is still washing his hands. Still see blood on his hands and broke his promise to Obito. And this arc also goes in third, just they don't want to be it no more. Donzo wanted Orochimaru, but everyone knows like he's super suspect. And then after Minato died, the third just came back and just remained the third Hokage and, until he died. Number 291 and 290 on the brink of death and the two manga go from Naruto Shippuden episodes 414 and 415. Both Naruto and Sasuke were just killed by Madara. Gara takes Naruto to Minato to get the other half of the Nine Tails chakra with Sakura pumping his heart. While Team Taka and Orochimaru head towards Sasuke, Karin gets the chains like Kushina because I guess she needs an upgrade. They come across White Toby and blast them, but he's fine. Zetsu takes the other half of the Nine Tails. Kabuto injects Sasuke with some eggs and Obito fights back against Madara and then cuts a flashback to a young Akashi and Obito and start a two week filler episode. Number 289 and 288, the promise that was kept and a heart filled with comrades from Naruto Shippuden episodes 387 and 384. Obito loses his battle with Naruto and his comrades. He had no one by his side because he decided to run away from them. Kakashi comes out from Kamui Dimension to kill Obito, but Minato stops him as he doesn't want to see his students kill each other and Obito has regrets for not being able to become Hokage or hang out around his comrades. Could have gotten all those things, but Madara got to him. Seeing all the Konoha 11 use of Rasengan was really cool as well. Especially especially Lee, who can't use any ninjutsu, so it's kind of him using ninjutsu for the first time, kind of in a way. Number 287, the day Naruto was born from Naruto Shippuden episode 380. The entire episode is about Naruto's birthday. The dark half of Kurama talks to Minato about how much Naruto has gone through and grown. Naruto gets praises from Tobi Rama, but the big thing that happens in the episode is the transportation of everyone. Naruto bumps his fist with Minato to combine their powers and touch everyone through the Nine Tails chakra that's also touching Minato's Nine Tails to transport everyone that was in the barrier. Number 286, Sasuke's answer from Naruto Shippuden episode 370. After Hashirama finishes telling his story, there's some unnecessary flashbacks, but Sasuke makes his final decision to protect the leaf because Itachi's sacrifice would be wasted, but everyone knows he's lying. He's got his own version of protecting the leaf, and then all of them go to war. Sugetsu is again going towards the battlefield, which I'm with him. I don't want to be anywhere near the battlefield, but then that's when Karin comes back in, and it's still the worst character in the series in terms of writing. But before they all leave, all of the four Hokage jump down on their four stone faces for a cool ass pose and shot. Number 285 and 284, World of Dreams and Obito and Madara from Naruto Shippuden episodes 346 and 344. Other than the flashbacks, it was cool seeing how Obito survived and met Madara. However, I don't know how he survived. Half of his body was crushed. Even Madara was like, I don't know how you're able to make it, but here you are. The first Okage cell are not attached to him, but how is it going to replace half a brain, lung, or organ? Whatever, you know. Obito wants to get out, but he needs to heal and Madara wants him here. Took over the Madara and Tobi persona after Madara 
to him his plan to be resurrected by Nuzi and Nagato who Madara gave him his Renegon and then episode 346 goes into the rain village and how Yahiko set up the Akatsuki. Number 283, The Infinite Tsukiyomi from Naruto Shippuden, Episode 426. Yamato is finally back after hundreds of episodes. He's the one under the white Tobi Zetsu thing, and once he's lit out, he's immediately casting the Infinite Tsukiyomi. It was a good decision to show how the Tsukiyomi worked by using Yamato because he hasn't been around, and most if not all the dreams are happy, feel good stories, but then cut to the divine tree, showing it's just a dream. Yamato's dream is to become the new and official leader of Team 7, and is the one place where he feels he belongs to. Number 282 through 283 episodes from the war arc, Naruto, B, Guy, and Kakashi continue their fight with Obito and Madara. The Ninetale gives a bit of his chakra to Kakashi and goes into the Kamui dimension to punch Obito while he's passing through attacks. The Tintails is also arriving and both Obito and Madara start merging to control it. And just as they're about to lose, the allied forces come in to save them and put a stop to the Tintails. Shikaku planned everything out from the info he got from Kakashi. They use the hidden mist jutsu, bug jutsu, Nara clan holds it with their shadows. They bury it with cement. They try everything and all of it will be for nothing because it escapes and starts killing everyone. And then after some motivation, Naruto tags everyone to get their own nine tails chakra to get at least one hit towards Obito and Madara. And then it cuts to Sasuke to see what he and Takara are up to. He needs Orochimaru to revive the previous Hokages, which I guess was kind of intentional to see contrast Naruto and his comrades. And then Sasuke who has Taka and Orochimaru, but I don't think he really considers them comrades at all really. Number 279, Connecting Thoughts from Naruto Shippuden, Episode 470. Once Obito wakes up and realizes that Kage is using a space-time jutsu to switch from different dimensions, he takes himself and Sakura to switch from each world to see and find out where Sasuke is, while Naruto fights Kage alone with Shadow Clones. Sakura uses her 100 ceilings technique to help Obito's duration of Kamui. They find Sasuke in a desert world, and he's able to get by by using his Renegon to switch places with the jacket that Sakura dropped, and then Kakashi's just there because there's nothing he can do until he gets something very soon. Number 278, Naruto Uzumaki from Naruto Shippuden, episode 479. The war has finally ended, long as war. Naruto and Sasuke did the unison sign to free everyone from the infinite Tsukiyomi. Kakashi is the new and sixth Hokage. Tsunade doesn't have to do any more of those paperwork. Sasuke is in jail because of all the things that he did, but not Kabuto or Orochimaru. Again, that's pretty weird, but is let out due to Kakashi being the Hokage, and Sasuke needs to go out on a journey. And then along the way, he meets Naruto to give him back his original headband back in part one. It's a good ending to the war which went on for way too damn long. And then Naruto is still a Ganon before he becomes the Hokage. He needs to work for it because there's no shortcuts to becoming the Hokage. Just making the Hokage already. He stopped pain in the war. Like come on. Number 277 and 276, two of them always and you better. From Naruto Shippuden episodes 471 and 472, Kage switches to a high gravity dimension to get rid of Naruto and Sasuke. Both Obito and Kakashi run towards Kage's bones through and Obito decides to be useful and sacrifice himself and saves Kakashi. Team 7 is vital to defeating and saving everyone else. Obito is able to see Ren again in the afterlife. He's no longer living in hell. He has what he wants and Zetsu just has to talk shit about Obito and how much of a cockroach he was for lasting as long as he has, which prompts Leonardo to cut off one of Kaguya's arms that Zetsu was on. Number 275, High Level Shinobi from Naruto Shippuden, episode 216. Back to Team 7's reunion, Naruto wants to confirm to Sasuke that if he does attack the village, he'll be ready to fight and die with them. Both now understand each other by exchanging blows. I thought Naruto was gonna say something different, like he's gonna kill him or try to reason with Sasuke because of what everyone told him beforehand, but his response was perfect. He still considers Sasuke a friend, and if he's on the other side, then he's gonna die with them. And Sasuke, by this point, is far gone, fully embraces his hatred. Number 274, the next step for Naruto Shippuden, episode 76. Kakashi shows Naruto his Rasengan as a great example of shape transformation. Naruto needs to incorporate his wind nature with the Rasengan, create the Rasen Shuriken. But he didn't stop smoking because of him. It's because he knows he has a kid that's coming. And then both Hidon and Kakuzu make it to the office to collect their 30 million bounty. While Hidon waiting outside, Asuma and his team attack him. Number 273, a message from the heart from Naruto Shippuden, episode 275. Naruto and Pete want to leave the island because they want to go out to the battlefield. And Naruto wasn't just going to be like, yeah, okay, I'll stay behind and not help out during the war. Uruka hides a message in Naruto's headband just to say good luck and come back alive. He was the one to help out Naruto and continues to believe in him. And then all those people that were guarding Naruto with this big ass barrier, pretty funny. Because they were told that Naruto the only one that they should worry about. But Killer B comes in to help out and so leaves them defeated and speechless.
Number 272, Secrets of the Reanimation Jutsu from Naruto Shippuden, Episode 264. The Eight Tails teaches Naruto how to get into the Tail B state, but both him and the Nine Tails need to come to an agreement and cooperate because if they don't, then Naruto dies. At this point, Naruto and the Nine Tails aren't on talking terms just yet, and then Kabuto explains how the Reanimation Jutsu work. It's along the lines of the Summoning Jutsu. He needs the body and the blood or DNA of a dead person to revive them. So Madara just takes out Fu and Torun and just snaps his neck. However, killing Kabuto won't stop the jutsu kabuto or someone else trolling him needs to weave the sign dog horse and tiger and utter release to stop the jutsu because why not this jutsu is already an overpowered jutsu why not give it a difficult way to stop it as well number 271 and 270 a failure's true power and ultimate defense zero blind spot from naruto episodes 62 and 61 <laughs> fight's okay, but the best parts were Neji using his 64 palms on Nar, which probably should have been it for him. And then Neji explains why he's so set on destiny. He's a part of the side branch of the family and only exists to protect the main branch of the Hyuga family. And his father died as a way to not have war between the Leaf and the Cloud Village. One of their ninjas invaded and tried to take the eyes, but was killed. And since Neji was chosen as his opponent, Naruto was destined to lose. His uppercut was still awesome, hiding and waiting for his chance to get one blow on him. And then Naruto was able to humble him because Naruto was a failure he wasn't able to use the shadow clones but through hard work and the will of fire naruto was able to change that which means neji can also change his destiny as well number 269 through 265 five episodes from the sasuke shinden arc this arc is pretty good however the more it goes on the less i start to care about it there's exploding humans at the village and everyone is trying to stop them this all leads back to sasuke who's out and comes across the same exploding humans he's able to use the sharing to stop them he goes to orochimaru for some help this leads to a coliseum he's looking for fushin chino who's not a little girl and a guy who turns out to be fushin sticks close to sasuke both were a part of the kataraki clan apparently they've been around for a while but this is the first time again that i've heard of them they have these eyes and they use blood as the way to use any sort of jutsu but also change their appearance they have these minus like eyes or like dash also the uchiha drove them out valley of the hell and she wants her revenge sasuke obviously defeats her but doesn't kill her because he's still trying to figure out what to do after all he's done and then the hidden mist village will take chino and fushin to their village because i don't know I guess there'll be a better fit with them. Just a really cool like side quest with Sasuke after the war arc. Number 264, Keep On Training, Pop Goes the Water Balloon from Naruto Episode 87. Moments like Naruto training should be boring or not interesting, but I like some of the episodes that leaves for breathing room in order to show how hard it is to learn the Rasengan. Or have a moment like Jiraiya getting a popsicle for Naruto. Probably noticed that he saw a kid and his father getting the same thing. He would be Naruto's father figure just by hanging out around him for so long. Naruto needed someone he could go to for help or anything and Jiraiya was that person. Number 263, The Acknowledged One from Naruto Shippuden Episode 2. 299. Reanimated Nagato is scary as hell. All the six paths of pain are now just in one body. His mechanic arm hand was animated pretty well, which he was about to blast Killer B with, but it actually helps them out because he's freed from Kabuto's control. Each use their most powerful jutsu to take out the planetary devastation. Then Itachi stabs Nagato with the Totsuka blade to seal him away. Nagato gets to say goodbye to Naruto again and be with Jirai to watch, and Naruto can do everything by himself, claims to stop this war all by himself, but Itachi stops him in his tracks, saying that he needs to trust his comrades and not rely on his power and then Itachi goes after Kabuto while Naruto and B move on to the next battle number 262 zero hour the destruction of the hidden leaf village begins from naruto episode 68 the invasion of the leaf stops sasuke and gara fight giant snakes giant snakes take down the walls conqueror and tamari leave Agara, who wasn't supposed to use the one tail to the evasion but their fight got out of hand sasuke chases after them dwarf kazakage turned out to be orochimaru hence the constant pleading for him to wait for sasuke and kakashi gives sakura a a rank mission because sasuke needs some backup Number 261 Encounter from Naruto Shippuden Episode 92 This one scene of Sasuke defeating 1000 enemies was badass. He didn't kill any of them. Sasuke in this part of the story is still kind of a good guy. Not willing to kill anyone for the sake of killing them. And Orochibaru claims that he needs a kill in order to be heartless and then Gurren just watches from the woods. There's some other stuff in the episode like Kawato taking the little boy out to the lake to control the three tails. Or Naruto painting with the frogs but that doesn't matter. Sasuke defeating 1000 enemies is why this episode is this high. 
number 260 through 257. Four episodes from the Itachi Pursuit arc. Sasuke gathers his new team. He needs Karin for her healing and ability to sense chakra. Her initial introduction made her out to be cool and assertive, but then she's obsessed with Sasuke. Until the end of the series, Sasuke needs Sugetsu for additional fighting. He's a brawler and wants the Executioner's Blade. The water drops that indicate him defeating the enemies was really cool. And then finally, Jugo. He's the main source of the curse mark. He's got split personality. He can be cool and calm and talk to animals, or he could turn into a murdering maniac. Kills anything that's in his way. And Kimimaru was the only way to cool him down, but now he's gone and wants to be left alone. And then Sasuke encounters Toby and Taitara, which would lead to their fight. While Naruto encounters Kabuto, who's gone completely insane, plans to be like Orochimaru and totally will not come back as a third party during the war number 256 through 254 three episodes from the past arc these three episodes are filler but i think they still happen that's a big i think we get to see how much naruto suffered from the villagers resentment towards him and this is after the pain art so it's a contrast to just how they treated him everyone from the kids to the ordinary people even aruka in the beginning but eventually becomes one of the people that helps him out the rama guy gives him free bowl of ramen because somebody has to help him out at some point these kids send him to the hills to find something to bring back in order to become friends with them but there could still be enemies in the area Shikamaru stands up for him because again someone has to and that scene with him and his father was really good he had to ask him about Naruto and instead of his dad kind of imposing his thoughts and will to him he asked Shikamaru about what he thought about it and just told him just to ignore the others and treat him how you want to treat him Naruto almost dies trying to get this knife both Aruka and Kakashi help him out and then the episode ends up with Aruka back at that tree where he made a promise to Naruto now known as a hero Number 253 through 250, four episodes from the Akatsuki Suppression arc. Both Hidon and Kakazu slowly go through the land of fire. They first defeat the two tails, then they go to the fire temple to get the bald man. And once again, it ends with Hidon getting stabbed and then getting up. While they're doing that, Naruto needs to cut a waterfall in half by using his wind chakra. There's a point where Yamato makes the waterfall longer so that there can be a cool shot of Naruto cutting it. And then he adds on another clone to help him out complete the Ross and Shuriken. And then everyone else learns of Asuma's death with a dramatic wind because there needs to be one every time something bad happens number 249 through 247 three episodes from the tale of jiraiya the gallant arc jiraiya isn't great at torturing but is willing to turn one of the rain ninjas into a frog for information about pain hanzo was one of the strongest ninjas that jiraiya fought so the fact that pain killed him came as a shock to him and he was very thorough he killed hanzo's family and anybody that was related to him tsunade and jiraiya have a moment to think about minato and kushina but also make a bet that tsunade would win and we found out that the frogs and any summoning are still in the same world they're just kind of hard to find or get to on but Jura found what he thought was his purpose, which was getting all the pretty girls. But then after training at Mount Miyaboku, this old ass frog tells him about the prophecy, look for an apprentice that will bring peace or bring about destruction. Number 246 and 245, Sound versus Leaf and the vessel arrives too late from Naruto episodes 111 and 118. Sasuke's second state curse mark will be teased by the Sound 4. All have their own and come across some Leaf Jonin. The Sound 4 were able to defeat all of them, but it takes a large amount of the chakra because they all seem tired after using it. And then Orochimaru's arm is looking super burnt he needs another vessel really quickly and then the team finally reaches to yuya sakana ukon they get sasuke back just for a bit when kimimaru gets out of bed and comes for sasuke as well Number 244 through 233, 12 episodes from the Kazakage arc. After the time skip, Naruto and Sakura have a battle with Kakashi to test out how much they've grown. They beat him by giving spoilers to make out tactics, but Naruto couldn't have spoiled anything because he didn't read the book. Deidara gets inside the sand village only to meet Gar and his sand. Team Kakashi heads out to see what's going on with Gar in the village. They meet Lady Chiyo, who at first seems like an old, annoying lady who's stuck in the past, but eventually you grow to love her. She tags along with Team Kakashi, and Team Guy also gets brought in as well gara actually dies which he will come back later on but i also wasn't expecting him to die i thought he was gonna be fine sasori recreated his parents as puppets because they were dead and shio couldn't tell him so he would go to sleep with them and try to feel love but you can't recreate love if it's not real which is why he turned himself to a puppet so that he can feel nothing and still look young naruto kakashi still running through the logs chio uses the reanimation jutsu to revive gara and in a way give back to the younger generation and finally move on and accept change there's a great moment where her brother half expected Chio to get back up because she always pretended to be dead but now she's actually dead and at peace.
number 232 through 228 five episodes from the land of waves arc every time i hear the first op it brings back good memories the first episode is a good way to introduce naruto he wants to become hokage so that he is acknowledged by everyone in the village aruka has been there for him since the beginning and saved his life the multi shadow clone jutsu would be renews quite a bit throughout the entire series because it's naruto's specialty and then we meet sasuke and sakura who would be important to naruto in the story all past the bell test because unlike the other teams that kakashi failed they had teamwork and this is the first time that naruto is out of the village and has to deal with the real counter he gets scared kakashi and sasuke deal with the tuning level ninjas realizes that the ninja world and the academy are two completely different worlds you have to be ready for anything so he makes an oath that he'll never back down he doesn't when zabuza shows up Number 227 through 223, five episodes from the Chunin exams arc. There's a bit of hanging out before Team 7 meets the Sand Team. Konkro, Tamaru, and Gar are intimidating and they're here for the Chunin exams. Kasha didn't tell them until super last minute. All of the Konoha 11 are introduced with the Naruto narration because he finds both of them really annoying. And then I forgot about Kabuto and his cards that can show character information in other lands. Seems a bit, not random, but it was more like, oh yeah, this was a thing. The curse mark is causing Sasuke pain whenever he molds chakra, so he got some inspiration from Lee to create the Lion's Barrage, which Naruto would also copy from. Sasuke defeats the guy, what's his name? Yoroi? I totally forgot about his name. Choji and Dosu's fight is super short, probably because you can't top that Lee and Gara fight. Then there's going to be a one month break so that the 10 remaining Ganon can rest and develop something new for their chosen opponents. And then Kabuto was going to kill Sasuke because Orochimaru just ordered him to, but Kakashi stops him and Kabuto quickly gets out. And then it also seems like it was setting up for Kakashi and Kabuto to have a rivalry of some sort because right before the invasion ends, Kabuto and Kakashi meet again, implying that the next time Kakashi won't let him get away, but then this would never be touched upon again. I guess Kishimoto forgot or just wanted to do something different with the characters. Number 222 and 221, Sakura Blossoms and the Ultimate Battle Cha from Naruto episodes 32 and 42. Sakura gets some moments in the exams. He's left to care for Naruto and Sasuke after dealing with Orochimaru, but the sound team was ordered to target Sasuke. And Lee even comes in to help. Sakura holds her own until she breaks down, and then one of them decides to insult her for needing way too much time about her looks. And at this point, Sakura cuts her hair. She is no longer going to rely on her looks or Naruto and Sasuke to save her. Bite Zaku until Team 10 arrives, and then do like her fight with Ian. Eno, Eno too cuts her hair as a way to move past her looks to become a ninja but also as a threat to hold Sakura in place so that she can use her mind transfer jutsu. Sakura's cha energy, whatever it is, is able to counteract it because Naruto was able to trigger it but also she finds him annoying and so I love that it's able to get Eno out of her head and then they continue their fight for quite a bit until it's a double KO. Both aren't going to move forward in the exams but Sakura has grown. I will say if both were fighting anyone else, they would lose. This in the previous episode were telling both of their stories number 220 a feeling of yearning a flower full of hope for naruto episode 55 jiraiya for most of this episode is researching for his books while also teaching naruto how to summon a frog but keeps summoning a goddamn tadpole however the best part of the episode is rock lee sakura and ino bring flowers to sasuke and lee sasuke is gone because he's out training with kakashi and lee despite being injured still insists on training because he isn't that type of person to give up even if the doctors tell him to stop still wants to continue to prove that he can become a shinobi even if he doesn't know any ninjutsu or genjutsu or in this case being injured he needs to do 200 push-ups but doesn't quite reach 200 he's always one away from completing his set Number 219, Bushy Brows Jutsu Sasuke Style from Naruto Episode 66. Sasuke and Gar start their fight with some Taijutsu from Sasuke and Gar doing his usual thing and defending himself and a sand clone as well. Sasuke is really fast and essentially like Lee in terms of speed. It causes Gar to go into a sphere to transform into Shukaku. And then there's a great moment between Kakashi and Guy. Guy always wants to compete with Kakashi and sometimes Kakashi doesn't listen and according to Guy, always have to act cool. Number 218, Return of the Morning Mist from Naruto episode 81. So the village is in ruins after Orochimaru's invasion, which means that there needs to be someone to stand up and be the new Hokage. The elders choose Jiraiya, but he doesn't want to be Hokage, but instead wants Tsunade, who hasn't been seen or around for a long time. Meanwhile, you have both Kesame and Itachi that are inside the village, just hanging out, getting some drinks until Kakashi sees them and has Asuma and Kurenai go after them, but it doesn't end well for them because Itachi probably cast a Genjutsu on them already. Asuma gets hit with the the Samehata sword and then Kurenai thinks she can use Genjutsu on Itachi but we all know Itachi is just the best at that. 
number 217 through 214 four episodes from the five kage summit arc finally getting to see the other kage all leave their village to go to the five kage summit turns out donzo cast koro matsukami on mifune in order for him to be leading the allied shinobi forces but he could have gotten that if he just didn't do anything because the leaf is the only village with the tailed beast alias's emotions get in the way of things gar is still too young anogi's way too old and may said that the akatsuki might have started from the mist village which means that donzo was the only choice all of their abilities are cool as well a has the lightning release he's able to move really quick and hit hard as well may has boy release and bits lava out and then there's another kk genka that i'm forgetting about anoki has particle style which if he has this why the hell would he need to hire the akatsuki the fact that he can defeat enemies by incinerating a person atom by atom seems op as hell once sasuke makes it to the summit he grows colder and kills the samurai that are in his way showing that he doesn't care anymore he's chosen hatred as his weapon Number 213, The Forbidden Visual Jutsu from Naruto Shippuden Episode 210. Donzo uses Izanagi for his fight against Sasuke. It's an ability that allows the user to redo anything or retry like a video game after you die or fail. Donzo in the entire fight is getting one shot by Sasuke while he's growing tired from using the Susano. Madara is essentially the audience just watching this entire fight. He's analyzing the fight while Karin's figuring out why and how Donzo's arms work. Each time that he dies, one of his eyes always close. Number 212, Return of the Kazekage for Naruto Shippuden, Episode 32. Turns out Deidara isn't dead and escaped Kakashi's Kamui and gets teamed up with Tobi. The teams and Gara make it to the village, commemorate Chiyo, and leads to an alliance with the Leaf and Sand, which was already there to begin with, but the handshake between Naruto and Gara just confirms the alliance and their friendship. And then Guy carrying Kakashi on his back could always happen, whether it makes sense or not, just have it happen whenever. Number 211, the new target from Naruto Shibuden, episode 33. We get to catch up on the other characters. Shikamaru wakes up right before his alarm goes off. Akamaru has grown so much that Kiba's able to ride him on his back. Shino got an upgrade in terms of his costume. Hinata still gets higher on Naruto. Choji also has new and better costume. Loved the bit when Naruto couldn't remember Shino. Sakura tells Tsunade about meaning about the spy that Sasori mentioned and Naruto hears it and starts looking for a third member. That's when Sai introduces himself by attacking Naruto, Shikamaru, and Choji. Number 210 and 209, Killer B Rapunin Part 1 and 2 from Naruto Shibuden Episodes 429 and 430. Killer B's dream is to gather all the tailed beasts so that they can be captured. With a title that says Rapunin, I was expecting much more rapping from B, but I'm glad it was about the other Jinjurikas to get to have more screen time and all of them have a small version of the tailed beasts on their shoulders and talking to them. And when they're all together, they all wear matching costumes and combine their powers to blow away the statue and the Akatsuki. Number 208 Storage from Naruto Shippuden Episode 221 Naruto is summoned to Mount Miyabogu for the prophecy stuff and that frog roll that was inside Jiraiya's mouth goes inside Naruto's mouth for storage. The other storage comes from Kabuto. He meets with Madara and implies that he's using a vessel but Kabuto's storage is the reanimation jutsu. He summons the Akatsuki members as a way to align with Madara for the war and just to back Madara in a corner Kabuto summons one more person and we don't see who it is but it would be exactly 100 episodes before Kabuto Kabuto summons this person who turns out to be Madara Uchiha. Number 207 Sasuke's Paul Encyclopedia from Naruto Shippuden episode 189. This episode is just an adorable one-off where Team 7 goes to the cat lady to capture a giant cat. These cat missions tie back to Itachi. Sasuke would capture a cat and get their paw as a fun game that Itachi set up in order to keep him busy. Team 7 wears cat ears as a way to talk and understand all the cats. Sasuke eventually captures and gets the cat's paw on a giant piece of paper. Number 206 Papa's Youth from Naruto Naruto Shippuden episode 419, before Kai opens all the 8 gates, there has to be an episode dedicated to him and his father, whose name is Might Dai, and he dies by saving Guy's team and killing 4 of the 7 ninja swordsmen. Dai was like Guy, he only had Taijutsu to get him back and give Guy his self rule in the 8 inner gates. Only use it when you have something precious enough to give your life for. The 3 times that Guy opens the gates, it's always awesome. He has the red vapor and charges at Madara. And then also those 2 ladies that were always by their side like watching them, like go away. They were always there for some reason they're always like is this like domestic violence or whatever which i mean kind of is but they're just there just kind of like talking shit and then both guy and dyer are like thank you for the support and it's like yo just go away what the hell Number 205 and 204, Risk of the Reanimation Jutsu and Reanimation Jutsu Release from Naruto Shippuden episodes 333 and 340. I put these two episodes together only by name. I didn't know whether it was connected or not and luckily it was. Tsunade lays out the rules of a medical ninja and then the five Kage resume their fight with Madara. Kabuto gives an off-screen recap of the word of Sasuke and Itachi before. He shows his tongue and starts their fight but in the end Itachi is able to release the reanimation Jutsu. Everyone says their goodbyes. Don is able to save Tsunade and give back her 100 ceilings technique because the 
the diamond is back on her forehead, but there's one person who doesn't want to go back being dead, and it's ya boy, Madara Uchiha. Apparently, this guy knew the signs to weave when Kabuto wasn't controlling him, so he is still here with ultimate chakra and a body that can keep on coming back. Number 203, Madara Uchiha arises from Naruto Shippuden episode 391. After an unnecessary recap in the beginning, it is now Madara's turn to take over and he quickly gets to work. Zetsu gets on Obito's body to revive him. He knocks Sai and Naruto down, steals Hashirama's chakra to get sage mode, then proceeds to go after the tailed beast and just doing all the work that Obito did but just in 2-3 to three episodes. Number 202, She of the Beginning from Naruto Shippuden episode 459. Kaguya arrives and when she just close by Sakura and Kakashi, treating them like nothing and not worth her time, she then switches to a different dimension to get rid and take back her chakra from Naruto and Sasuke. Both are frozen by fear when she travels through her portal to them and starts crying because both remind her of her sons who she shared her chakra with and they betrayed her. Zetsu then tells them about how Kaguya came to be and how she was sealed in the next couple of episodes. Number 201 through 196, 6 episodes from the power arc. This arc is clearly different in terms of animation. Animation shouldn't be the only thing carrying a show. I need a good story for me to keep on watching. I also googled why this was animated so well and apparently it was supposed to be a movie but then somebody decided to turn it into 6 episodes of the show. But I'm not sure if this is true or not. Either way, this arc is pretty good. Kabuto decides to test out the reanimation juice before he uses it for war. Team Guy gets involved because there's a tailed beast battle of a clone of Naruto. I don't remember the specific story surrounding the village that Kabuto was after and the special weapon that he's after but this is a couple that's you know not doing so well. There's a girl that's special. That's the only things that I remember from the arc. The couple does get a nice end because they're able to love each other once again plans to get married. Aside from that I don't remember anything else but I do remember liking it quite a bit. Number 195, The Mysterious Curse of the Haunted Castle from Naruto Episode 194. Naruto, Hinata, and Kimba go on a mission to find a person that went missing and they come across a castle. This castle itself is alive because it's trying to kill them, blitting them up, people and pictures are moving and books are flying. It turned into a haunted house movie for a bit. Some guy put a curse on this castle years ago and now anyone that decides to walk into it, they will likely die. But then it turns out this castle is actually a giant chameleon carrying out a master's order for 50 guys damn years and then by the end chameleon is let go and can finally move on because it's been stuck Number 194, a legend from the hidden leaf, the Onba from Naruto episode 185. Onba is this cute little animal that attaches itself on Naruto's back. He wants it to be off at first, but over time he doesn't mind it. However, Tsunade and everyone else in the village knows that this Onba will turn into a giant monster. So instead of telling Naruto, they send him into the woods so that he can deal with it. Seems pretty messed up just to send him off like that. The Onba grows bigger where its feet has reached the ground. Naruto meets the mother and attacks Naruto and gets her child back. The Onba comes on the mom and both leave to live their lives. In the back at the village, everyone has an onba on their backs, a bit of karma for them for sending Naruto out. Number 193, Laughing Shino from Naruto episode 186. Most of the time, Shino is calm and to himself, so seeing him like this was breath of fresh air but also a bit jarring. The entire episode is to try not to laugh at Naruto. This family is trying to make him laugh. At first, it's supposed to be Shino who was supposed to be in Naruto's seat but eating some rice that had something in it made him laugh. So it's up to Naruto now and he's struggling at this funeral. But this whole funeral is all an act because the father faked his death in order to make the family laugh once again. Seems kind of extreme just to have family come to Together and just laugh. Number 192, Surviving the Cut, the Rookie 9 together again from Naruto episode 37. Before moving on to the next part of the exams, the Third Hokage explains that these exams are a way to maintain peace and prevent wars from each of the nations. They need to send their best ninjas and fight other ninjas. Now the exams are essentially training children to be soldiers at a young age. Even if there's no war at the moment, there's tensions between nations or someone like Orochimaru who's already planning to destroy the village and any ninja have to be ready to fight whenever. Number 191, Medic Ninja in Danger from Naruto Shippuden episode 278. It was a great plan for the White Zetsus just to touch the allied forces and then during the first night where most of them are relaxing and preparing for the next day, the Zetsus copy the chakra and pretend to be them and then kill them. Neji and Sakura deal with them at this medical area and then the episode plays out like a whodunit. Sakura realizes that it's not Neji, tricks Neji into thinking that Tauntaun is a human and gets rid of him, informing everyone to be careful of everyone that's around you. 
Number 190, Mifune vs. Hanzo from Naruto Shippuden episode 272. I wasn't expecting to like this fight as much as I did. Mifune gets a second chance to fight Hanzo again, and the whole fight is about being true to yourself no matter what happens, not losing your way. Mifune and his samurai are a neutral nation, and they don't really get involved with the Shinobi world. They have their own techniques. Also, I wish there was more screen time with them. Why were they a neutral nation? I mean, I guess it's probably because they don't care about what the other nations do as long as the other nations don't bother them. But you know, I would have liked to see more of them. And Hanzo as well why did he continue war when a lot of people were suffering from it number 189 to see that smile just one more time from naruto ship within episode 431 carving's backstory is messed up her parents died because of war and probably getting bit way too much one of the guys take her to the hospital because she's the only one with this ability to heal others by letting others bite her and every time they show the bites it's so messed up and inhumane most people see her as an outsider so the people are also not treating her right but then i guess her savior but not really orochimaru is able to find her it takes her to one of his hideouts but she's doing the same thing he needs some experiments to stay alive and Karin is a perfect person to bite on. The only person who was nice to her was Sasuke, which does explain why she's so obsessed with them. Back in the tuning exams, he saved her life from a big ass bear, I think, but it also doesn't excuse her bad writing. 188 Kakashi Hatake the Hokage from Naruto Shibuden episode 219. Kakashi is the new Hokage and to celebrate this, Guy challenges him to a race in the village. It's a fun race that involves weapons, reactions from Team Guy, Naruto, Sakura, Shikamaru, and Choji. There's great music, which there's always great music in Naruto. Kakashi beats him and Guy did this as a final challenge because Kakashi won't have enough time anymore to compete. But all of it doesn't matter because Tsunade wakes up from her coma and all of this setup was all for nothing. At least it was fun and there's a good beginning and a bit where the guy that carves all the stone faces gets tricked two times into thinking that there's going to be a new sixth Hokage. Number 187, Team 7 Assemble from Naruto Shippuden episode 373. Everyone gets a moment. Sakura gets her 100 healings technique, which wasn't set up at all and comes out of nowhere. Like with Tsunade, she was building up Chakra. Kiba summons a third clone for a new technique. Hinata gets her 64 palms in the twin lion fist. Dino punches a Ten Tails monster and slowly has a bug crawl into one of them and starts infesting it with bugs. Team 10 does a yo yo jutsu and then all of Team 7 recreate the Sani deadlock. Number 186, The Promise of Victory from Naruto Shippuden episode 330. There's one scene in this episode where Toby thinks he's sweating but it's just the rain. Stating that Naruto guy B and Kashi can never make him sweat is the most disrespectful but also badass moment from him. Not even worried about them and to boost morale and lighten up the mood, Chikaku makes everyone at HQ laugh a bit because everyone is stressed and worried about dying and he allows anyone who wants to leave or sleep allows them to go. Meanwhile you have Sasuke who is still outside in the rain and there's a cool shot of him in his eyes as he's looking back because there has to be. Number 185, reinforcements arrive from Naruto Shippuden episode 321. The only reinforcements that arrive for the allied forces is Naruto. He saves Sakura and Gara's units. On the other side, Kabuto summons his reinforcement, which is Madara Uchiha. He was the one Tobi or Madara was worried about. Everyone in the desert is shocked to find out that the real Madara was actually dead. But now the question is who is the man underneath the mask who claims to be Madara, which there's no way that no one could have guessed that right well i mean i guess if you read the manga it's way ahead but if you just watch anime only i was like madara's in that casket what the hell i thought it was like the fourth hokage or like the first hokage that he was scared of but nope it was the actual madara uchiha Number 184, Sibling Tag Team from Naruto Shippuden episode 334. Most of the time when there are flashbacks, it's unnecessary, but the flashbacks to Itachi and Sasuke goes well with what's going on with their fight with Kabuto. They redo the same training, but this time, Sasuke hits the tail, trapping Kabuto, take down this snake that's right in front of them like a boar in the flashback, and then Itachi already cast the Izanami on Kabuto once Kabuto stabbed him. Number 183, the 5 Kage symbol from Naruto Shippuden episode 323. Madara has Kurama so worried that he's willing to share some chakra with Naruto and he causes all the 5 Kage to get together to face off against him and have a cool shot of them standing together. And because of his arrival, the plan changes from protecting Naruto and B from protecting the allied shinobi forces in the world. The 5 Kage tells Naruto that they'll win, which would not be the case at all. And their fight is seen throughout the war but mainly through the 13th OP. Probably would have been a good fight because Anogi can make a faster or heavier, all can combine their powers, this should have been an entire episode of them fighting. 
Number 182, Four Tails, the King of Sage Monkeys from Naruto Shippuden, Episode 326. With Kakashi and Guy's help, they're able to fight some of the tail beasts. Kakashi brings out the lightning cable, and Guy uses the eight inner gates. DA Tails is talking to Kurama and pleads with him to help out Naruto, who's going to be swallowed by the Four Tails. And he does bring a good point. Every human that's controlled them always treated him like an annoying pet or a force of nature. Madara controlled them with the Sharingan. Hashirama's wife Mito and Kushina always treated him like a pet that needed controlling and claimed every human is the same and always lies but he knows damn well that naruto is different naruto told him straight up to his face that he'll come after his hatred as well despite this the four tails swallows naruto but has a chance to talk to son goku help him out by removing the chains Number 181, The State of Affairs from Naruto Shippuden, Episode 489. This episode shows what things are like during the peace times after the war. Shikamaru has a boring job on the desk, helping on Kakashi, eating out with Team Asuma. Just the daily life of Shikamaru before he has to go out on a mission to see what's up with Sai and his team who hasn't been responding. Number 180, Hole from Naruto Shippuden, Episode 371. Obito lays it out for Kakashi. He didn't start this war because Rin went towards Kakashi's lightning blade because the Mist Village put the three tails inside of her, plant and use her to destroy the Leaf Village. Rin dying was the catalyst for Obito being cynical. The Shinobi system itself is what caused the villagers to want to fight each other, which is why he doesn't think the world isn't worth saving and wants to create a world where there's no conflicts or Shinobi. He wants to fill the hole in his heart with a world full of peace where everyone is happy. He wants to take the short cut to becoming the Hokage and have his ideal version of Ren and his comrades. Number 179 to rise up from Naruto Shippuden episode 224. Naruto and Sasuke arrive with their new CJ6 pass power. Naruto has the look and senses while Sasuke has the Renegon. Both share the same power that Madara has. Naruto also has all the tailed beast chakra which means that he's able to use lava style and Shukaku's seal Rasengan. Limpo seems OP as hell because it's kind of like their shadow clone but it's invisible and probably just as strong as the original body. Sasuke is able to teleport and uses it to teleport Madara when he and Naruto use their Rasengan and Chidori, but Madara escapes and goes to steal Kakashi's Sharingan and use Kamui into the other dimension to get his Renegon, and Sakura has to destroy it and she takes her sweet ass time to do it, but she doesn't. Number 178, Vogel Point, The Mark of the Leaf from Naruto Episode 88. Naruto's having a hard time popping the rubber ball. He thinks back when Naruka told him about the leaf and how it can be used for motivation to accomplish anything. But then Naruto, Choji, and the students didn't listen and just jumped outside the window. Turns the spiral on his palm that Jiraiya drew on it into a leaf symbol and finally pops the rubber ball. Orochimaru is out because he's also searching for Tsunade in order to heal his arms. And when he and Kabuto finally get to her, he decides to reintroduce himself by completely destroying an entire building or castle because he's gonna have a dramatic ass intro I guess. Number 177 formation from Naruto Shippuden episode 118. Sasuke reminds Jugo that Kimimaru fought for him before he left he told Jugo that Sasuke is the new vessel and will be his reincarnate which means that Sasuke would now be Jugo's way to calm down. After getting his team he plans on killing Itachi and the Akatsuki at the same time Naruto and Sakura learn of Orochimaru's death and Sasuke's plan not to come back to the village. So Naruto plans on searching for Itachi before team Hebi became Taka. Their group was the gray area of the series. They weren't bad or good. They were in the middle and didn't want anyone ruining their plans or Sasuke's plan. They didn't want to be held back by the rules of a village or a mission. Number 176, My True Dream from Naruto Shippuden, Episode 369. Hashirama and Madara form an alliance and their dreams came true. They set up the village, hid in the leaf, and have places for kids to be kids and not have to go to war. And they still have their childhood mannerisms like Hashirama getting depressed and Madara getting annoyed by it. But Madara finds out that even setting up village and forming the alliance couldn't really bring true peace because Tobirama and the others in the village still fear and don't trust him. And Madara probably holds a grudge against Tobirama for killing his brother. He sees shinobis themselves as the issue. So after reading the stone tablet, he comes back to attack village and have his last battle with Hashirama. Also, some of the flashbacks don't need to be there. Number 175 or 174, Decryption and the first challenge from Naruto Shibuden episode 154 and 155. Jirai's message on Fukasaku's was deciphered to say the real one's not among them. Someone else is controlling the six paths of pain. Kakashi having to read out loud is something that resonates with me and anyone else that doesn't like public speaking. Naruto then goes to Mount Miyaboku to learn stage mode, being one with nature but not having too much or else he'll turn into a frog which is why Jirai sort of looked like a frog because he wasn't able to completely master stage mode. He has to stay still but it's hard staying still and continues to get beat. Naruto finally reads the book that Jiraiya first wrote and the hero's name is Naruto and thinks back when he didn't care about the book saying that they would never sell and would never get an autograph for him. But Naruto thanks him for being his father for a bit and then Killaby hasn't been captured because Sasuke brought an octopus leg. 
number 173 through 169. Five episodes from the wedding arc. The rest of the wedding arc is fun. Once Kakashi turns finding the gift, wedding into a mission, you got Konkuro convincing Gara to do a really cool gift, but then Killer B comes in wanting to sing for them, so now Konkuro wants Gara to sing, but he doesn't want to. Rock Lee was thinking about weight, but it's not right for him and goes to eat some ramen and figures something ramen related would be the perfect gift. Choji gives them a nice and big meal. Shikamaru takes Tamari with them, find his gift, which is their first date. And that's how finds out because everyone sucks at lying. Orochimaru is also in the background just chilling and hanging out while Yamato is spying on him. And then there's a really nice moment where Naruto wants Aruka to be his father during the wedding. He was there for Naruto from the beginning and it just makes sense for him to be there at the end as well. And then the anime ends with both holding hands and walking off to get married, having kids, completely ending. There's totally not going to be another series following their kid because who the hell wants that? Number 168, The Leaf's Handsome Devil from Naruto episode 123. Sasuke is finally out of the box and teases his curse mark transformation. This is also where Rock Lee comes in as a Leaf's Handsome Devil. He stopped the continuous Shadow Clone versus Kimimaru fight because there are just a few clones attacking them and then the rest are just waiting for some reason. And now it's Lee's time to fight Kimimaru. He does well at first, but then he starts drinking his medicine, which is Sake, and it turns him into the Drunken Fist. And the next episode will be amazing. Also, I love Guy running to Tsunade about how Lee's doing only to fight now he's gone and taking the sake number 167 through 165 three episodes from the kazakage arc chiyo and sasori's puppet fight leads to both moving really fast destroying their weapons on the puppets both are the best puppet users of the series mainly because aside from Konkuro, they're the only ones that are on screen and important the team's fight against kasama and itachi were good but it's bogged down by the flashbacks however it is new flashbacks so i don't mind them but they still ruin the pace of the fight and episode guy opens up the sixth gate in order to defeat kasami while neji frees himself and the team kashi tricks itachi with the shadow clone and gives Naruto the time to form a massive Rasengan to take him out. All find out that they were fakes only to waste their time. Number 164 and 163, The Hidden Heart and a True Ending from Naruto Shippuden episodes 392 and 393. Madara is able to capture all the tail beasts in one episode, unlike Obito who took 16 years to get all of them. One scene with Shukaku and one of his previous hosts. This guy is saying his goodbyes and hopes one day a human can pretty more than a powerful pet. It's out of place because Madara is capturing all of them, but I guess he found the one human being, Gara, who wants him as a friend. And then Madara kills Naruto and Sasuke. He's not playing any games. He gave Sasuke a chance to join his side. He's able to stick some rods into Toby Rama as payback. So essentially, if Madara was alive before the war, he would have done all this in two episodes or maybe like 50 episodes with some filler here and there. Number 162, Run the Curry of Life from Naruto episode 157. There's only one thing that matters in this episode and it's Dragon Fist Lee. Lee loves curry made by this one place and somehow alcohol got into it and while Lee is knocked out, someone feeds him the curry and we get the best version of Lee, Dragon Fist, again because you know, it's great. He's the only one that defeats Ryan because he's unable to read the movements of the drunken master and defeats him but will come back later on but that doesn't matter drunken lee is the best and that's all i care about Number 161, The Ultimate from Naruto Shippuden, episode 401. Lee and Shira's fight is pretty cool. Wasn't expecting a good fight during the filler exams. Lee offers a fight to Shira because he sees him as a worthy opponent. Lee has the 8 gates and Shira has the 7 heavens breathing method, which is his own 8 inner gate that he came up with. It's just a really good fight that's in a filler arc. And again, most people probably didn't even see this. They only saw it when somebody told them. And then of course, Lee wins the battle. Number 160 and 159, The Angelic Hero of Death and the Bridge to Peace from Naruto Shippuden episodes 252 and 253. Konon plans to get rid of Madara, but there's flashbacks to Nagato talking to Naruto, but the scene is good, so you know what? I'm fine with it. Once it's over, Madara meets with Konon and tells her he was the one that told Yahiko to set up the Akatsuki and gave Nagato his Rinnegan. He was the one pulling the strings. Konon's 1 billion or whatever paper bomb jutsu must have taken her so goddamn long because the whole like sea and water, everything is filled with paper bombs. He had super extra Batman prep time. She plans on continuously using the paper bombs to explode. Madara can't continuously slip through objects, but of course he has the Izanagi to rewrite the outcome, killing her and getting back his Rinnegan. And one paper that has blood flies to the house where Jiraiya trained him and it lands on Conan's card, which would tell Jiraiya who's out to signify that Jiraiya and the team have been united in the afterlife. Would have wanted more from her because she has the coolest abilities, being able to have paper as a weapon, but she was always under under Pain's shadow. She was always there every time Pain appeared. This next Taijutsu is far beyond even my last move. It's a special single blow attack. 
number 158 and 157 Battle in Paradise Odd Beast vs the Monster and The Man Named Kasame from Naruto Shippuden episodes 250 and 251. Guy decides to sit in front of the waterfall to encounter his inner self, criticizes his desire to stay youthful and meets his inner self who turns out to be Kasame. This leads to Kasame and Guy's last fight. Guy opens the seventh gate and uses Hirodora which is just quickly punching Kasame's shark. It's that ninjutsu even though it looks like it and before Kasame lets his own shark eat him we find out that he's always been a shark killing his comrades and eating them up like sharks do when they're inside their mother's uterus. He's still Samehara. Madara show his face to him but bites his own tongue to prevent his identity being out. And then his encounter with Itachi I don't remember being as cool. Both are partners but also need to watch their backs just in case they betray each other and Guy finally remembers Kasame because of his death for some reason he didn't even remember him but it was brought back and paid off. Even after death Kasame was able to trap everyone within the water bomb jutsu and get Goro back to Madara and Kabuto. The time. Open the inner gate formation! For 156 and 155, the 8 inner gates formation and the Sage's 6 path. From Naruto Shibuden episodes 420 and 421. Guy opens up all the 8 inner gates and is able to go toe to toe with Madara. Minato and Kakashi help him out, help him out with an opening and punches Madara out of that black sphere. And then his final attack, Night Guy was awesome. Running towards Madara, bending space and time and kicking the hell out of him. Bones are breaking, but Madara still alive because he's Madara. Guy was meant to die, but Naruto comes in and put on seal or whatever it is is to prevent his death could have died. Kishimoto set up that the gate of death kills the user when they open it and it feels like a cop out because he didn't commit to what he already set up. There's also scenes with Naruto and Sasuke talking Hagoromo. I'm indifferent about this. They're the reincarnation of Ashura and Dada, and you can make a point on how everything that Naruto and Sasuke work for doesn't mean anything anymore because it was destined to happen but it doesn't bother me. I was like okay and then moved on. There are other things in Naruto that bother me way more like character moments Number 154, Fate from Naruto Shibuden, episode 140. Madara tells the story of how Itachi was ordered to murder his entire clan. And so the story starts all the way back when the Senju and Uchiha were at war. Eventually, they stopped fighting and had a peace treaty. But Madara was the only one who still wanted to fight because his brother would have died for no reason. He leaves and comes back with the Nine Tails to fight Hashirama, but supposedly dies and everyone forgets about him. Later down the line, the Nine Tails attack the village and the elders assume that an Uchiha was behind it because the Sharingan is the the only thing that can control it. This causes distrust and tensions between the Uchiha and the Leaf. They put the police force on the outside so that they can be watched. Some of the Uchiha noticed that they're being watched and the Itachi was the one in the middle of this whole situation. He was a double agent giving information to the Uchiha and the Leaf elders and since the Uchiha were planning to take over the village, they decided to wipe the entire clan out. Number 153, somber news from Naruto Shippuden, episode 152. That talk Itachi had with Naruto that gets cut off comes back. Itachi mentions what if Sasuke were to attack the leaf and how he's a blank canvas that can be changed into any color. He puts a crow in Naruto's mouth to come back whenever it's convenient. And then Naruto finally learns of Jirai's death. He obviously doesn't take it too well. He just couldn't get Sasuke back again and then to learn of his mask who he admired just died as well. So it's just a bad time for him. And then he starts remembering the things that they did number 152 and 151 Tsunade's warning ninja no more and sensei and student the bond of the shinobi from naruto episodes 98 and 100 Tsunade arrives at the village and starts healing naruto keeps calling her a granny to everyone she wakes up sasuke goes kakashi for being in a hospital bed and then when she gets to lee she informs him that he should quit being a shinobi because she's unable to heal him lee walks away and goes sits by himself to think about what to do but Tsunade plans on performing a surgery on him that's a 50 50 chance that it will be successful there's a great scene with Guy and Lee questioning whether to take the surgery or not because of how much he wants to be a ninja in order to prove that even a nobody can become one. And then Tsunade figures out a way to up the percentage to 58%. Number 150 and 149, a cry on deaf ears and a promise that cannot be kept from Naruto episodes 128 and 135. Naruto is able to reach Sasuke at the final valley and he doesn't care that some of his comrades almost died trying to get him back. Naruto tries to reason with him but Sasuke has made up his mind to leave and get power in order to defeat Itachi. Kimimaro's theme is playing in the back was a perfect choice because you've seen two friends who are going to be apart by the end of all of this. Both want different things. In the end, Naruto and the team failed their mission when Naruto wasn't able to keep his promise to Sakura. Shikamaru thinks he's failed as a leader, needs to reflect on his mistakes, better himself in the future. Nanji and Choji were able to be saved. Jiraiya attacks the Naruto about giving up on Sasuke. Can't remain a fool your whole life or else you're gonna die. But Naruto is stubborn and plans to remain a fool his entire life.
Number 148 through 142, 7 episodes from the Land of Waves arc. Team 7 gets Chakra training to walk on a tree, anything that has a surface. Sakura has the best Chakra control out of the group, but she doesn't utilize it until Shippuden. Their first encounter with Zabuza is still awesome, throwing that big ass blade. Immediately recognizes who Kakashi is and vice versa to Zabuza. Seeing the Shogun for the first time is still cool, being able to copy the enemy's movements, almost like reading their minds. And then, the second time around, Kakashi summons his dogs to bite his arms and use the lightning blade and it looks and sounds cool. Naruto gets pissed off to a point where the Ninetales chakra comes out, breaks Haku's ice which lends to a great shot of ice falling down around him, punches Haku. Haku sees himself as a weapon for Zabuza to use and shinobis themselves are in a way weapons to be used. He has no other purpose aside from that. Zabuza took him under his wing only as a weapon and then Haku uses himself as a shield to protect Zabuza. Number 141 and 140 break down the deal is off and attack Fury of the Rasengan from Naruto episodes 93 and 94. Kabuto surprises everyone because he's able to stand toe to toe with Tsunade. He wasn't weak or anything but even on this rewatch I was like oh he can hold his own. Tsunade might be a bit rusty as she's been busy gambling. She's able to mess up Kabuto's nervous system and controls for his body but quickly learns the controls and cuts his own hand to show blood as Tsunade still has a fear of blood. Naruto, Jiraiya, and Shizune show up and Naruto summons a frog that has a funny has voice. He never gets summoned at all because he's useless. He's able to endure whatever Kabuto throws at him. Catches Kabuto's hands and proceeds to use the Rasengan to hit him with the main theme playing in the background for a great moment. Number 139 and 138, The Era of Warring States and Hashirama and Madara from Naruto Shippuden episodes 368 and 367. Both Hashirama and Madara knew something needed to change because they were at war at a young age. They had all these plans to stop wars and creating a village full of schools where children want to go to war. But Hashirama's version of the future is very idealistic. Not everything can go according to plan and you can't control what people do. Which is why his plans for the future fail. Things never changed. They had to become a soldier at the beginning of the series. Eventually, both Hashirama Hashirama and Madara found out by Tobi Rama. It gets to their fathers and all the plans that they had were just maybe a pipe dream. Both were great friends as well, fought and trained with each other, not being able to pee if Hashirama was standing behind him. But they were at war and both became leaders of their clans. Tobi Rama killed Azuna. Madara's love turned into hatred. The Senju ultimately won battle and pleads one more time with Madara to stop and pursue their dream of a better future and Madara accepts the offer this time. Number 137, an opening from Naruto Shibuden, episode 379. Obito is now in full control of the Dentails. Minato, Tobirama, Naruto, and Sasuke are finding a weakness. Minato's long ass title jutsu name doesn't work. Tobirama makes fun of him for that. Naruto and Sasuke use wind style Amaterasu Rasen Shuriken, and it doesn't work as well. I just made that name up. I don't know the actual jutsu name. Both Minato and Tobirama switching places with Obito was really cool as well. And of course, Obito has to put down Minato for not being there, and this pisses off Naruto, who realizes that. Sage mode is his weakness because Gamakichi shot his syrup gun and it nullified his black orb. Number 136, A Will of Stone from Naruto Shippuden, episode 332. Anokin uses his Will of Stone to free the rest of the Kage and continue the fight with Madara, which he reveals has Hashirama's face on his body, which is why he's able to use wind style. He also insults Tsunade. She's a senju and so weak, which then fuels Tsunade's Will of Fire to fight back even harder. And then Sasuke gets a chance to talk with Itachi about everything. He tried changing the signpost for Sasuke, but it just turned him into a criminal. Sasuke wasn't just gonna follow everything that he set up, especially after making him see his clan and parents get killed two times by him. Sasuke wasn't just gonna be like, okay, I give up or not go further and beyond for power. Number 135 and 134, a mistake from the past, a face reveal, and a shirker's call to action. A layabout no more from Naruto episode 72 and 70. Orochimaru perfected the immortality jutsu. He's able to live as long as he wants. If he has a body to get into like Sasuke, his switch from the female's voice and then to his, I always thought was creepy. Just sneaking around everything. He reason could have killed him when he was caught doing experiments, but he couldn't because he was a student. Even in the present battle, he still feels the same way, not wanting to kill his pupil that he taught and grew up to become a fine shinobi. And the Shikamar has a stand up because if he doesn't, then the Sound Jonin will catch up to Naruto and them. He's able to hold them with the shadows, but just when you think he's about to lose, Asuma comes in and gets rid of all of them. I think this is the only badass moment for him, I think, because most of the time he's getting beat for a new threat that's getting introduced. Number 133 and 132, Homecoming and Mission Cleared from Naruto Shippuden, Episodes 1 and 6. Hero's Comeback is one of the best OPs, get people hyped for the start of Shippuden. The opening scene is also a great way to draw people in. It does ruin the same moment in the Tenchi Bridge arc because it was shown here, but we see the new costumes for Team 7. We don't know who Sai and Yamato are yet, so they're just there. Sasuke looks cool with his sword and robe. He's able to get inside Naruto's head and touches the Ninetales to blast him away. The first episode goes into Konohamaru's mission with the cat. After two and a half years, 
years, Narder hasn't changed a bit, and then Deidara completes his mission in capturing Gara, and most if not all of the Sand Ninjas don't do anything until it's too late. Gara was also busy trying to protect the village while fighting Deidara at the same time. Number 131, Orochimaru vs Jinjuriki from Naruto Shippuden Episode 42. Naruto's Four Tails form faces off against Orochimaru and it's a good fight, but also kind of ridiculous because this guy Orochimaru comes out of his mouth, has lots of snakes coming out of his mouth, and then reattaches his torso when Naruto cuts his body in half. It gets to a point with Orochimaru where let's see how ridiculous things we can do with him because he's immortal. He slithers around like an actual snake just to punch Naruto. He then gets a sword out of his mouth and elongates his head to push him towards where and Yamato are. It's a ridiculous but fun fight. Number 130, Impossible Dream from Naruto Shibuden Episode 27. Chiyun uses the mom and dad to stab Sasori's heart. As a reward, he gives information about the spy at the Tenchi Bridge and he dies by the hands of his mother and father. Sasori was a product of war at the time. They meant from Chiyo about Sasori not being able to dodge her attack. I saw that as him still being human. The reason he turned himself into a puppet was so that he could no longer feel pain. He wanted to erase all of that. But the heart thing, I don't know what's it called, but I'm gonna call it a heart. That was the only thing about him that was human which makes it impossible for him to become completely a puppet so maybe when he started going towards Chio, he felt some regret because there's still a human element about him he was always waiting for his parents and in the end in a way he finally got to meet them Number 129 and 128, the medical ninja student in the third Kazekage from Naruto Shibuden episodes 11 and 24. Sakura gets a glow up. He's able to save Konkuro and get most of the poison out for him by checking inside his mouth, hearing his heartbeat and extracting it. She then proves that she can also hold her own on missions where she's fighting Sasori and his third Kazekage, Iron San. She pretends to be down and then surprises him by destroying the puppet with one punch. So not only does she have medical ninjutsu, but she's also capable of fighting and not just solely being the medical support. However, the episode is bogged down by team guys fights because we have to see what's going on with them even though it's the same thing that's happening every goddamn time. Number 127, Aesthetics of an Incident from Naruto Shibuden, Episode 30. Naruto's Ninetales cult starts taking over and Kakashi tries to talk with them, but he doesn't listen. He puts a tag on Naruto that was given to him by Jiraiya to calm him down. Team Guy is finally done with their fight and starts fighting Deidara, who has no arms by this point, so he decides to explode himself, but Kakashi uses Kamui to send him away. Once Naruto realizes that Gaara is dead, he gives a really good speech on how Chiyo and the Sand never took Gaara's life into consideration. They chose to put the tail beast inside people that had no family, and were alone, which didn't help Naruto or Gaara at all. It helped fuel the village, treating them like garbage and seeing them as monsters. So to atone for her past, Chiyo uses the reanimation jutsu to give her life to Gaara. Number 126, the Dintail Shinjuriki from Naruto Shibuden episode 378. Obito is the Dintail Shinjuriki and he is not in total control at all just yet. He messes up the four Hokages. Madara and Hashirama have their rematch, which is just the same battle. Meanwhile, Obito is suffering inside. He's getting ripped apart piece by piece because of how strong the powers of the Dintails is. Number 125, The Secret Origin of the Ultimate Tag Team from Naruto Shippuden Episode 282. A and Tsunade stop Naruto B from going any further because they want to protect the remaining tail beasts and not have to worry about Madara possibly getting them. Naruto doesn't think so who's on par with A's speed and B also doesn't think that they should be protected when they can help out. It then cuts into a backstory how the A and B combo came to be. They're not actually blood brothers. Each Rakage usually has a sibling to pass on their technique so they test which kick can handle A's big ass arms that are as big as the kids that are trying to do the double lariat. B was a perfect combo. His rapping skills were always bad but they never got better when he got older. The duo comes across Minato and he's faster than A. He was able to dodge A at his fastest speed and then teleport back to stab him and then he put the mark on B's go to a surprise attack but B was also ready. However, we don't see the results of the fight but they all got out alive. Number 124 Contact Naruto vs Itachi from Naruto Shibuden Episode 298 Naruto and B have to fight Itachi and Nagato. I love how they're just helping out Naruto and B about where they're at and just calling out their jutsu. Naruto is able to confirm with Itachi about Madara, the Uchiha, and Sasuke. And then Itachi pulls out a big brain move where the crow that he stuck inside Naruto's mouth comes out rehum of the reanimation jutsu. The crow was meant for Sasuke in case he wanted to destroy the leaf. Even after death, he still had plans for Sasuke. Thought about how his death would affect Sasuke but Nagato is still there and Kabuto wakes him up and he tanks a hit from B and absorbs his chakra to become young again. 
Number 123, Paradox from Naruto Shippuden Episode 301. The eye patch guy in this episode comes out of nowhere. He's there just to give exposition, but he really does come in and never comes back ever again. Eye patch guy was the right hand man of the third Raikage, who seemed to be pretty strong and scary. He fought 10,000 ninjas and the eight tails alone. He's essentially a stronger version of the fourth Raikage. No one could hurt him, but he has a scar on his chest, which he claims came from battling the eight tails. Naruto uses that scar as a way to defeat him and figure out that third Raikage gave himself that scar after falling over. Naruto uses Sage Mode and uses the Rasengan to push his fingers to attack himself. Number 122, something to fill the hole from Naruto Shippuden episode 372. The Hokage arrive on the battlefield and boost the morale of the allied forces. Hashirama doesn't concern himself with Madara just yet, who in the previous episode was super excited that he felt Hashirama's chakra. Minato was able to send away the tail beast bomb. If he wasn't there, most of the allied forces would be dead. He also has the nine tails chakra as half of it is sealed within him. And then Sasuke arrives and drops a big announcement. He wants to become the Hokage. <laughs> Shocks everyone, Sakura to relax, but she ain't leaving because she wants to catch up and be on par with Naruto and Sasuke. Number 121, the final valley from Naruto Shippuden, episode 475. So the war has come to an end, the tail beasts are freed, Kage is defeated, but Sasuke is out here still scheming something. He wants revolution, a clean slate for the entire world. Hagoromo tried to stop the cycle by sharing his powers with both Sasuke and Naruto, but it seems like each reincarnation causes them to fight. Sakura still loves Sasuke and just wants to help, but Sasuke still finds her pretty annoying and attacks her heart through Genjutsu, which honestly was probably the right call because he would have gotten in the way for one of the best fights. So both Naruto and Sasuke go to the one place where they first fought the final valley. Number 120, the number one most unpredictable ninja from Naruto Shippuden episode 463. Naruto's first initial plan to seal Kage away is to use the one jutsu that always is successful no matter what, and it's the sexy jutsu. He has a bunch of beautiful men, and it does stop Kage in her track, and it actually works because Naruto lands a hit on her. Sakura is pissed off but also in shock. Just when they're about to seal her, Kage switches to an ice dimension, leaving Naruto and Sasuke stuck in ice, but Sasuke uses Amaterasu to free them, and then Zetsu mentions that they should be separated and send Sasuke to a desert world and then at the same time Obito wakes up to help out. 119 through 118, Sharingan again and congratulations from Naruto Shippuden episodes 473 and 474. Before Obito goes away, he gets Kakashi, his Kamui in the afterlife, and he has not just one, but two on each of his eyes. He has the perfect Susano, Kamui Shuriken, he's able to slip through Kaguya's bones, Kakashi is able to help Team 7 fight Kaguya, cuts her arm, Sakura punches her head, and then Naruto and Sasuke seal her. It was a good call to have Team 7 be the ones remaining from the Tsukuyomi because they all got to work as a team for one last time but the eyes go away because it would be too OP to have a perfect Susano, Kamui phasing through objects just you know too much. Zetsu thinks he's gotten away but Naruto catches him and throws him towards Kage who's being sealed. Hagoromo summons all of them back. All the previous Kage are there as well because why not? Hashirama says goodbye to Madara. Naruto says goodbye to Minato and this scene always gets me. Naruto says anything that he can. Mentions Kushina, girls, and how it's gonna be alright. As Minato goes away he starts crying as well as Naruto. Number 117, Disappearing from Naruto Shippuden, Episode 125. Toby is revealed to be Madara Uchiha. This reveal is a bit jarring to go from wacky and Looney Tune character and then being the one to pull the strings. Just the complete opposite in terms of personalities. I will say it was cool going through the mystery of Toby and Madara again. He had a cool ability to go through anything and seemed unstoppable for a long time. Nobody knew how to stop him because he would just easily slip by. And if you weren't Minato, then you might as well just accept defeat and death. Number 116 through 114, three episodes from the Search for Tsunade arc, Jiraiya and Naruto see an attractive lady and both get really excited, but sends Naruto off to a room. Turns out this lady was in a genjutsu cast by Itachi to separate Jiraiya from Naruto. Sasuke finds out about Itachi's return and proceeds to kill him, but he ends up getting memed. Itachi shows him the night of the massacre like he did in the flashback, showing just how evil Itachi truly is. Which begs a question, did Kishimoto plan on Itachi being who he is in Shibuden? I don't think he did. I want to give Kishimoto all the credit in the world but I wouldn't be shocked if he just made some things up along the way. And then Jiraiya comes back and summons the mouth of a frog but Itachi and Kasame escape leaving Naruto with no choice but to get stronger out of necessity because if he doesn't then he's going to be killed. 
Number 113, Unforgivable, A Total Lack of Respect from Naruto Episode 90. Jiraiya finally finds Tsunade by randomly walking into a restaurant. He didn't inform Naruto at all that Tsunade was going to be the fifth Hokage, hence Naruto chugging on that fish when he was eating. Tsunade is the granddaughter of the first Hokage and skilled at medical ninjutsu, but Tsunade at this point dismisses the offer and is cynical, doesn't see the appeal of protecting an entire village and dying for them like the third and fourth Hokage. Naruto is obviously pissed off by her statements. It goes against everything that he wants and disrespects her past predecessors and both decide to have a challenge and it doesn't go well for him. He gets beat by one finger and both make a bet to see if Naruto can learn a Rasengan in a week which he does because Tsunade always loses her bets. Number 112, Battle of Unraikyo from Naruto Shibuden, episode 142, Madara asked Team Taka to go after the Eight Tails, Killer B. I like Killer B. At first, I wasn't sure whether his rapping was going to be annoying over time or just going to get used to it. In the end, I didn't mind it. His moments almost all the time are fun. The first part of their fight is B easily dealing with Sugetsu and Dugo alone while annoying them with his rapping. And then it takes all of Team Taka to take him on. Taka also isn't really a part of the Akatsuki, even though they have the robes. Sasuke states later on they're just using them for now until Sasuke sees no use of them. Number 111 and 110, The Mystery of Toby and Amaterasu from Naruto Shibuden episode 139 and 137. Toby buys time for the Sasuke and Itachi fight by messing with the 8 man squad. He teases them with a Wakamo Jutsu or he's about to do a Jutsu only for there to be a joke. Toby is able to escape Yamato's wood and she knows bugs that were supposed to suck him dry. The mystery of how his abilities work was one of the best parts throughout Shibuden. And then the spiky aloe guy aka Zetsu pops up to drop the news of Sasuke and Itachi. Sasuke getting his eyes taken out by Itachi was just a genjutsu. There's a genjutsu buffer during 137. The fight then goes outside with fireball jutsus and then Itachi's Amaterasu, black flames that cannot be put out. Itachi needs to be precise with it or else he misses, get tired, and overuse his eyes that are going blind. Sasuke pulls an Orochimaru where he gets hit with the Amaterasu and then comes out like a snake to escape. Number 109 through 102, 8 episodes from the Akatsuki suppression arc. Fight with Hidon doesn't go as he expected. His team stabs Hidon and he doesn't seem to die. After Hidon gets his blood, Asuma uses his fire ash jutsu and hurts himself. Shikamaru figures out Hidon's ability to kill people by using his body and licking their blood. But Shikamaru wasn't able to save Asuma because they walked in on an impossible situation. They didn't know that there could be people that were immortal. Asuma says his last words to Team Asuma, which he slowly does. Sometimes leading up to a fight, it can feel like you're waiting for the actual fight to begin but the entire fight with team Asuma, Hidon, and Kakuzu was good. Shikamaru traps them with a shuriken shadow and then Choji comes in with a spiky human boulder jutsu. Kakashi thinks he's killed Kakuzu but we learn that he has five hearts each of the chakra natures. Shikamaru has an end game for both. One of them need to get Kakuzu's blood and then Shikamaru would take Hidon away to trick him into thinking he's got his blood. Shikamaru buries Hidon as revenge but didn't anticipate Kakuzu still being alive and transforming into a monster. And then that's when Naruto comes in and it turns into a show again. It was Shikamaru Shibuden for a bit. Naruto hasn't perfected the Rasen Shuriken, but when he hits Kakuzu with it, it's great. Needles disconnecting all of his chakra points and network, and the music in the background again is always great. Number 101 and 100, Kakashi Gaiden Part 1 and 2 from Naruto Shibuden Episodes 120 and 119. The Kakashi Gaiden arc explains why he's so fixated on following the rules. Father Sakumo killed himself because the village and his comrades gave him crap for doing the right thing and abandoning his mission to save his comrades. Breaking the rules means much more to the village than saving your own ninjas. Sakumo is also a skilled ninja. Kakashi had to live up to him. Getting to see Minato kill that stone shinobi by teleporting would be a tease to see how fast he is. Obito is crushed by boulder and clearly dies. He doesn't come back to be Tobi or Madara, plans to unify the world, and Obito's words to Kakashi resonated with him so much that he would use it years later for Team 7, those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. Number 99 and 98, the 10th question, all or nothing, and start your engines, the tuning exams begins from Naruto episodes 25 and 24. First part of the exams are a written test, which is super relatable to anyone being told not to cheat or else you'll fail, but then also being encouraged to cheat, stress inducing. Naruto is all of us when we all have an exam that I certainly didn't study for, and having a guest on every single question and not answering. The point of this is to test whether teams can get information without being together and not getting caught cheating. Naruto was acting like he knew all along but Sasuke sees through the lie.
Number 97, I have the Hawk for Naruto Shippuden episode 114. This episode does a great job of keeping you guessing who's in control of Sasuke's body. We get Orochimaru's whole story. His parents died when he was young and found a snake skin that shed its skin. According to Hiruzen, it's good luck and he will carry that on until he dies. Over time, I think Orochimaru just grew desensitized, started doing experiments on people. He also saw Itachi doing his training and was amazed by it that he wants the Sharingan. Tries to take on him but is immediately cast in a Genjutsu. Then he goes for Sasuke but that doesn't turn out well. Orochimaru's greed is what led to his downfall. Sasuke is able to absorb him, walk away, and quickly have the news spread about it. Number 96, Pain vs Kakashi from Naruto Shippuden episode 159. This was a cool interaction. Kakashi is the character that's the strongest, or maybe not the strongest, but one of the stronger ninjas in the village and the fact that he wasn't even able to beat Pain shows how much stronger Pain is. Choji and Choza come in to help, but it doesn't help at all. They're able to figure out Tendo Pain has the ability to repel and attract objects. Choji needs to get this information to Tsunade, but one of the Pains, the one with the missiles, plans on preventing Choji from getting info out. So Kakashi uses Kamui to send the missile away and he dies going into the afterlife to talk to his father. Number 95 and 94, the six Okage Danzo and Sasuke's Ninja Way from Naruto Shippuden episodes 197 and 203. Danzo is a six Okage and he's already making some very questionable decisions. He made Sasuke a rogue ninja and wanted around the world, which I don't blame him for because Sasuke can have the eight tails and is a part of the Akatsuki. According to Team Asamui's information, he didn't ask Sai to watch Naruto because he probably plans on taking over or controlling the nine tails, but currently he's beloved by the village. Madara decides to go talk to Naruto about their destined fight. I guess this is the first mention of the Naruto and Sasuke being reincarnates of Ashura and Indira. I thought it was when Hagoromo met with them but I guess he just confirmed it. Sasuke using hatred as his weapon is his ninja way. He gets stronger in using it. Four Fry Kage uses wrestling moves on him. Liger bomb Sasuke but he shows his Susanoo for the first time. Sasuke uses Amaterasu and A doesn't care. He tanks it and plans on attacking more but Gar stops it asking Sasuke at least to open his eyes back to the light but Sasuke shut his eyes a long time ago. Number 93 and 92, Danzo's right arm and Danzo Shimura from Naruto Shippuden episodes 209 and 211. After hearing about Sasuke and everyone else's decision to kill him, Naruto breaks down and has a panic attack. He's trying to prevent fighting and hatred from occurring, especially after talking to Nagato about pain and believing in him. But it seems like each time he tries to proceed breaking peace, he finds that it's not very easy trying to convince everyone to stop all the fighting and hatred. The fourth fight Kage dismisses Naruto about revenge. Sakura decides to kill Sasuke. Gara made his decision to kill him as well. Naruto's the only one who still wants to see him as a friend and comrade. Danzo gets one shot for most of his fight with Sasuke. He thinks Izanagi is still active but Sasuke casts the Genjutsu on his arm and then Sasuke submits himself as a full on villain by shooting his Shidori both at Danzo and Karin. There's no turning back on this. He saw Karin as a tool that was useful. Seeing Danzo run away and pleading for his life was great to see because he says that he wants to protect the leaf but his methods and decisions have been the opposite and caused more issues later down the line like Sasuke. In a flashback, Danzo didn't have the will of fire to sacrifice himself like Hiruzen which is why he was chosen as a third Hokage to protect the leaf. Danzo activates a seal to seal himself with Madara and Sasuke but it does absolutely nothing. Number 91, the Tailed Beast versus the Tailless Tailed Beast from Naruto Shippuden episode 207. Kasame is an Akatsuki member that I would have liked to see more of because he would have some interesting fights. Mainly because of Samehara gets stronger the stronger his opponent is. B has the eight tails and Samehara absorbs some of his chakra and loves it. B also has to protect this one dude and his giant raccoon. They came out of nowhere? Hold on, do I remember them? You know what, forget, who cares? Kasame spits out a giant water prison and turns into a big ass shark. But Samehara switches sides because of how much he loves. B's chakra and then the fourth right kage shows up and both A and B perform the double lariat which cuts off Kasami's head and then Al is still chasing after Donzo but gets trapped by Fu's mind transfer puppet jutsu. Mei and Chojo arrive to help get Fu out slapping the hell out of Al. Number 90 Declaration of War from Naruto Shibuden episode 205. Madara's story is ridiculous. Tells a five kage how the stage of six paths became the ten tails jinjuriki but in his final moments split it into nine pieces creating the nine tailed beast. He threw the body of the ten tails up into the sky and it became the moon. He plans to activate the infinite Tsukiyomi and cast a Genjutsu on everyone in a dream to unite the world. And you know what? It's not a bad idea. It's impossible to have true peace because some people are just gonna do something that pisses off the wrong person and then leads to the five kage and then eventually war. Madara even mentions the current five kage haven't done much in terms of bringing peace. He demands them all to hand over the eight and nine tails but obviously they won't give it up. So he declares war on them all and start the fourth great ninja war. 
number 89 as one's friend from Naruto Shibuden episode 208. Fu and Tarun don't have a chance against Madara. Anything they throw at him, he just slips by and has Tarun attack Fu and vice versa. Tarun has the ability to give and take bacteria? I'll be honest, I forgot exactly what he does, but I'm just gonna say that his attack give the person bacteria and quickly eat their skin. And then Madara's just like, I'll suck you in with my Sharingan while Danzo slowly opens his arm. Danzo's arm has a bunch of Sharingan eyes. It's disgusting just to have all that on your arm. And since he's not in Uchiha, he can't shut the Sharingan and off cover his eyes like Akashi does with this Sharingan. Number 88, Naruto's plea from Naruto Shibuden episode 200. The five Kage talking to each other was a really cool moment just to see how they run their own village and see how they view the current Akatsuki situation. Gara is the young Kage who's inexperienced and doesn't even know that his own village did some dirty deeds. Anuga is the old one who has outdated rules and regulations and views about how things should work. Mei seems to not want to engage because the Akatsuki may have started from their nation. A is the one pointing their finger at all the other Kages for messing things up but isn't willing to admit that his village wanted to to seek more power during a time where each nation agreed to stop seeking power. And then there's Donzo who's just chilling, waiting for his time to talk about forming the allied shinobi forces. But we later find out that all of this was Donzo using Koro Matsukami. Fune was gonna choose him to lead the allied forces because the leaf has a nine tails and they've never used the Akatsuki for military strength. Number 87, Secret of the Transportation Technique from Naruto Shibuden episode 342. I forgot how much I really like Toby's fight with Naruto, Guy, B, and Kakashi. They're all moving so fast because the rocks that are falling off move kind of slowly. Naruto uses a Rasengan, Toby slips by, pulls out some weapons, then Toby slips by. However, if someone made a small crack for the first time, Kakashi thinks it's his kunai that he kamui. So he confirms this theory by using kamui on Naruto's Rasengan and lands a hit on Toby for the first time. And he suspects that both of their Sharingans are going to the same place, meaning that both have the the same eyes coming from the same person. Number 86 and number 85, Bushy Brow's Pledge, Undying Love and Protection, and Akamaru Trembles, Gara's Cruel Strength from Naruto episodes 31 and 34. Sakura is dealing with the sound team and is having a bit of trouble, so when Lee is busy grabbing 20 leaves to ensure his love for Sakura, he helps out this squirrel that's going to burn alive because of the tag on his back and it leads to Sakura. He comes in with the squirrel with leaves falling around them. He holds his own, but the sound gets into his ear, leaving Sakura with only one option, which is to stand up. And then Gara has Akamaru shocked because Gara made a rain ninja rain their own blood. He had no emotion whatsoever. He's also not friendly with Hankuro and Tamari. He doesn't really see them as his brother or sister. They're just in his way. Team 8 sees all of this and at the end sees them again and just gets intimidated by their look. The Anbu and Anko also notice that Gara is untouched setting up a certain person with Taijutsu to finally hurt Gara later on. Number 84, he flies, he jumps, he lurks. Chief Toad appears from Naruto episode 57. Naruto summons Gamabuta and immediately gets along with him because Gamabuta doesn't affect him and Naruto demands him to be his master. So they come to a compromise. If Naruto can stay on his back throughout the entire day, then he'll make him his master. Naruto goes underwater. He jumps really high, swings him around like a little snot. Gamabuta jumps on the waterfall where Jiraiya was doing his research. Naruto almost falls down but uses his shadow clones as a rope. Naruto essentially almost died trying to prove Gamabuta the wrong but he makes it through the entire day and as a reward he takes them to the hospital leaving a big ass frog footprint Number 83, Hospital Besieged the Evil Hand Revealed from Naruto Episode 58. This episode played out like a horror movie. Gara is at the hospital finding Lee's room. Sakura goes there and Gara stalks her, but every time she turns, there's nothing there. Naruto just woke up from his long ass sleep and scares Shikamaru. Joji is also at the hospital for eating way too much barbecue. Gara finds Lee. Naruto and Shikamaru stop him. Gara's reason to kill is his purpose to live. Purpose is to be a weapon for his village. He has Shukaku inside of him. His mom died giving birth to him and now he hurts others. Naruto sees a lot of him and Gara and thinks how he could have been different if he didn't have Aruka. And then Guy comes in just to say, stop it and wait for the final rounds. Did he not hear or see what Gara was doing? Like he was just super relaxed and chill about it. Just kind of brushed it off. Number 82, late for the show but ready to go. The ultimate secret technique is born from Naruto episode 67. The reason Sasuke and Kakashi took so long because he was teaching Sasuke the Chidori. It's one of the jutsus that Kakashi didn't copy and the Sharingan completes the jutsu. Both with speed and the Sharingan, Sasuke and Kakashi are able to control and focus a lot more easily. The sound comes from 1000 birds and the way that guy explained it as well was really cool. Sasuke is the second person to only hurt Gara, who is inside a circle getting ready to sub in Shukaku. Sasuke only sees an arm reach out and a tail inside however their fight would be interrupted with an invasion. 
Number 81 through 76, 6 episodes for the Sasuke retrieval arc. Choji stays behind in order for the rest of the team to catch up with Sasuke. Choji got his pills so that he can handle Jirobo, enlarge his body parts and throw him around. Kitomaru decides to have some fun with Naruto and his clones, but it's cut short because Neji stays behind to deal with him. When the San 3 shows up to help out, it's always awesome. Tamari blows Toyuya literally away from her fan. Conqueror does his puppet show on Sakon and Ukon, which seems like a nightmare having all those knives in you. Kimi Maru uses his bones against Gara, but Gara's sand is much stronger than ripping his own spine out as a whip. Bone flaw, which is strong as bone, but Shukaku's defenses is stronger. And while Kimimaru knows that Orochimaru sees him as a tool and pawn, it really doesn't matter to him because even Orochimaru can help a kid with his loneliness. Kimimaru was willing to die for Orochimaru, knowing everything that he knows. Kakashi is the only one to be like, you seen a bunch of Genin to go after Sasuke? But also, there's no one else aside from Genin available. And by this point, there were three episodes where they were teasing a final valley fight but episode 132 brings the emotion to the fight or i guess before the fight naruto chose sasuke as his rival because he wanted to be like him both were alone and someone else understood what he was going through wondered if their friendship was even real sasuke uses chidori to pierce naruto's heart but that would be a mistake the nine tails begins to start coming up and leads to a great battle Number 75, the all-knowing from Naruto Shippuden, episode 366. Hard not to love Hashirama. He's known as the god of shinobi and everyone praises his wood style and his fights with Madara and I love that he's just a normal dude like everyone else. Both Sugetsu and Orochimaru are disappointed by this. They didn't expect someone like him to be regarded as one of the best and well-known shinobis. Tobirama would be the person responsible for setting up the stability of the village but also some of the rules and jutsu that he created later on become issues. The reanimation jutsu being the big one or setting up the Uchiha come the police force. People who have power tend to not be liked. Sasuke wants to ask them why a village matters and why Itachi sacrificed his life for it. Tobi Rama also explains why hatred seems to be the Uchiha's most powerful weapon. They suppress their emotions and once they know love and lose that love, they awaken the Sharingan. There can be hatred if it doesn't come from love. And then Hashirama proceeds to tell Sasuke his story and it starts off with Mada and Hashirama fighting each other. And he summons the 1000 wood arms thing, which seems ridiculous by the way. And it also explains why Mada Madara wasn't faced by anything by the five kage because he was dealing with wood style giant 1000 wood arm thing that would fist the hell out of you number 74 eat or be eaten panic in the forest from naruto episode 28 sasuke wants team 7 to learn a password and this password long as hell don't know how sakura memorized all of it the point of it is to see if anyone listening to them and immediately a wave of wind attacks them naruto didn't dodge it and got swallowed by a giant snake he eventually gets out of it with shadow clones and explodes the snake meanwhile you have sasuke and sakura dealing with orochimaru who swallows his throat which is a horrifying sight to see and then i guess he uses genjutsu or you know what I never knew what this was. Did he use fear as a weapon or genjutsu to scare them? Either way, Sasuke gets them out of there, but the snake keeps on coming, just slithering around for Sasuke. But Naruto, with no fear at all, comes in super confident and obviously doesn't remember the password. Number 73, Kakashi and Orochimaru face to face from Naruto episode 40. Both have a face off which is talking about Sasuke and what he's gonna do with them. Sacrificing pawns, it coincides with the Shino and Zaku fight. Zaku thinks Orochimaru sees him as a valuable asset to the sound village but he really sees him as a sacrificial pawn. Shino puts bug in his holes and blows his arms out. There should have been more bug stuff in Naruto because it's gross and kind of scary to see hundreds of not thousands of bugs coming at you and sucking up your chakra. And then Orochimaru does his scary thing again and Kakashi is just sweating standing there in fear and this is memorable because Kakashi up to this point is the coolest character in the series and for him to just be in fear was great it makes Orochimaru feel scary and unstoppable Number 72 and 71, Byakukan battle, Hinata grows bold and a failure stands tall from Naruto episodes 46 and 47 <laughs> The Hyuga fight and the exams was really fun. These exams give the other characters a chance to shine and show what they're made of. The Hyuga have some inner conflict and tensions between the clan. Neji straight up tells her to give up. She only joined the exam so that she wouldn't let down Chino and Kiba. Love that Naruto gets pissed off and encourages her to not give up because everyone told him that he could never be a shinobi but he never gave up. The clan uses gentle fists. They target the internal organs by using their Byakugan and seeing the opponent's chakra points. It sounds like their hands are clapping with each other and despite all the encouragement, Hinata can't 
can't be Neji. She gets up a couple of times, but each time Neji just beats her, prove if she could improve, and she did, even if she lost. The fact that she was willing to take the fight and keep on getting up was the improvement. Number 70, Lee's Hidden Strength Forbidden Secret Jutsu from Naruto, episode 49. Lee has no talent. He can do any ninjutsu or genjutsu, and I love that in order to keep up with everyone else, he just has to work and train two times harder or even more, honestly. He's putting himself through extreme and vigorous training. Guy was able to help out and hopefully reach his goal to prove that anyone can become a shinobi. Even if you have to work a lot more harder than others, you just have to have the guts to never give up, which is why I and most of, if not everyone, loves Lee and Guy. They've always been the outlier. Wasn't born with special eyes or chakra, they just have taijutsu and that's it. The eight inner gates are introduced and Guy, of course, passes it on to Lee and he starts opening them to kick Gara's ass for a bit. Number 69, Ada Ai Sharingan vs Sharingan from Naruto episode 82. Kakashi Sharingan can't compete with Itachi's. He tortures Kakashi by stabbing him and slowly doing it. And what felt like minutes turns out to be one second of 72 hours and only seconds in the real world. Jirai tells Kakashi about the Akatsuki and how they're after Naruto. Kasame is about to go after Kakashi when Mike guy shows up with a great smile kicking Kasame right in his face. Both him and Itachi leave because Itachi's use of the Tsukiyomi tires him out and Anbu and other ninjas would probably come back and they don't want that. 68 the third Hokage forever from Naruto episode 80. Naruto starts crawling his way towards Gar to give him a headbutt or something because both are out of their chakra but Naruto is able to understand Gara's loneliness. Like with Zabuza his words cuts deep into him and Gara starts becoming more human by apologizing to Konkuro and to Mari. The tug of war finally ends for what felt like a long ass time. The third seals a word Mari's arms and dies fighting for the village. There's a funeral for him. The reason for Kakashi always being late isn't because of laziness but he stands at Obito's grave and thinks about all the past mistakes for hours. Jirai thinks back on his time with the third Hokage when he was a kid. Aruka thinks back to when he told him sacrificed himself in order to leave behind a legacy to be remembered. I will remember him for being in a tug of war for six goddamn episodes. Number 67 through 65, three episodes from the Sasuke retrieval arc, Kakashi talks to Sasuke about revenge, how it's something not to look forward to because once you get your revenge, you'll be left with nothing. Plan can be replaced with new comrades like Kakashi and Team 7, but this talk would do nothing because Sound 4 comes in, love that Shikamaru has to stand up and be a tuning, only one that was promoted because he would become a great leader. He gathers the team which includes himself, Kiba, Choji, Neji, and of course, Naruto. Even the team is shocked someone that's lazy as Shikamaru is being a leader. He doesn't really care about Sasuke, but but he's a leaf shinobi and they're willing to sacrifice themselves in order to complete their mission. And Naruto and Sasuke's encounter on the rooftop is pretty good and will be a tease to their final valley fight. Sasuke feels inferior to Naruto who he always saw as a loser to validate himself by challenging Naruto. Both use their Rasengan and Chidori to charge at each other and Sakura runs towards the middle. Number 64, The End of Tears from Naruto, Episode 134. Naruto and Sasuke conclude their fight by using their Rasengan and Chidori, but Naruto uses the Nine Tails Chakra to form his Rasengan while Sasuke uses the curse mark to enhance his chidori both fly at each other and clash sasuke is able to hit naruto's chest while naruto scratches sasuke's headband signifying that he's not coming back just like itachi they create a black sphere and sasuke is the one left standing doesn't kill naruto because he's not going to follow everything that itachi told him he's going to find power through another way kakashi was too late which is fitting for his character takes naruto back to the village while zetsu comes up and watches Number 63, I'm in Hell from Naruto Shippuden, episode 345. This episode went from Tobi talking about poop and then ends with a bloodbath with Obito. Obito is getting stronger and older in the cave. One of the Zetsu tells him Ren and Kakashi are in trouble and leaves the cave, but Madara is already scheming for him to come back. Once Obito makes it, he sees Kakashi pierce Ren with his Shidori and Obito just sees Ren. He and Kakashi both awaken their Mangeko Sharingan right there. Obito brutally kills some of his hit and miss ninjas and then eventually kills all of them making the moon red and seeing blood all around him, claiming that he's in hell. So cool. Number 62, I Will Love You Always from Naruto Shippuden, episode 333. Itachi shows the entire truth to Sasuke and I thought, how much more did we not see or know about? But it turns out, Itachi didn't kill Shisui. Donzo had already taken one of his eyes, gave the other to Itachi. He kills himself and that's how Itachi awakens his Mangeko Sharingan. He was given a horrible choice and went with the one with less casualties. He didn't mercilessly kill his parents. There was a conversation before he had to kill them and it's a great scene. Itachi doesn't want to kill them but has to in order to prevent further war. He starts crying while killing them. After showing Sasuke everything, he starts walking towards him and instead of tapping his forehead, he puts his forehead to his and says he will always love him no matter what. No matter what, I will love you always. 
Number 61 through 58, four episodes from the tale of Jiraiya the Gallant Arc. Jiraiya stays behind to help train Yaiko, Nagato, and Konan because one of them might be the one to bring peace. Jiraiya sees Nagato being the child of prophecy. He was talking to him about having to grow up even in the harsh times of war. Nagato has a Renegon, and according to Jiraiya, the eyes are from the Sage of Six Paths. After making sure that they're able to defend themselves, Jiraiya re-orphans them because he needs to get back to the war, but was told by his frog that they died. Years later, Jiraiya meets Konan, thinks she's an angel, and then pain comes in all the pain David endured forced them to grow up. It would have been impossible for all of them to be optimistic when they grew up around war. Pain wants to force the world to grow up just as the world forced them to grow up as well. Using the tail beast to inflict pain and stop future wars. Pain made the series much more mature. Not to say that the previous arcs were kid friendly or anything but it was clear that the anime was geared towards kids so when Pain showed up and talked about war bringing peace to the entire world it felt like the series was maturing through Pain. Jorah's fight with Pain feels like Pain had all the cheat codes because he can summon a bird, rhino, chameleon and crab and then when Jirai goes into sage mode pain summons two more of the pains Jirai uses the frog song jutsu which doesn't sound the best but defeats three of the pains but another pain shows up rips his arm and the six paths of pain line up ready to kill him Number 57, Mystery of Pain from Naruto Shippuden, episode 160. The leaf is still fighting off the pains. Someone named Ambu members summon Buddha Buddha to stop the dogs. Inochi is searching the brain of the pain body that Jirai captured. I like the way that it's shown with all those scrolls coming down from the brain, but that's cut short from the summoning path. Ibiki is back, which he hasn't been seen since the line of T filler arc. He tortures the summoning pain, but finds out that the body is cold and dead already and summons another summoning. His torture jutsu is cool, and using pain as a way to get info. It's just too bad that. It was used against pain. Number 56 and 55, Danger Sage Mode, Limit Reach, and Explode Sage Mode from Naruto Shippuden episodes 164 and 163. Naruto's back and ready to fight Pain. He crushes the Asura path when it tries to attack Tsunade. Three frogs that are with him deal with the Summoning Dog. Katsuya helps him feed information to Naruto about Pain's abilities. Knocks out the Pain that can absorb Ninjutsu. Uses Rasen Shuriken and Thursa to get rid of the Soul Ticker Pain. This fight shows how much smarter Naruto has gotten as well. Both Ma and Fukasaku can't get on Naruto. Naruto's shoulders because the Ninetales don't like them so Naruto has two clones absorbing nature energy and anytime Naruto needs more he can summon one of them and then he gets rid of the summoning pain before the episode ends. Almighty push. Number 54, Assault on the Leaf Village from Naruto Shippuden episode 157. Pain surprises the leaf with his assault, comes in and starts stabbing ninjas with rods. He's able to infiltrate with one and then summon all the pains, making everyone think that it's one intruder. They show this little girl and a grandma walking, being very happy and cheerful, but then pain awaits them. Luckily, Sakura saves them so that I don't have to see a girl die or see her grandma die right in front of her. Eventually, it gets everyone's attention. Shikamaru saves Kuranai. Sakura stops the giant centipede and pain continues the assault. And I don't know if this is just me but it takes maybe a bit too long for everyone to notice and then start defending but again maybe that one dude that senses intruders by the water bubble thing only saw one so everyone was like it's just one person. Number 53, surname is Sawatobi, given name Konohamaru from Naruto Shippuden episode 161. Konohamaru has grown up. He claims that Naruto taught him a new and amazing jutsu, but his team thinks it's a new version of the sexy jutsu, which I don't blame them for thinking because that's all he really has. One of the pains is near him. This one gets information by touching the tongue of a person and gets their soul or something. It's disgusting, but also kind of horrifying. Ibusu comes in to help so that Konohamaru can get away. Love that even him, who was Naruto's teacher but didn't really like him as a student, is willing not to give up his location and then Kono Harbor has the balls to stand up against the pain kind of throwing his life away but he wants to become the next Okage and there's no shortcuts and the pain was really gonna kill this kid but Kono Harbor isn't just an ordinary kid <laughs> He has the Rasengan and defeats Pain. This is his best moment in the entire series. The fact that he was able to learn the Rasengan is the amazing part. <laughs> Number 52, Pain to the World from Naruto Shippuden, episode 162. Shino and his dad deal with Konan and her paper, throwing paper bombs at them. Kiba and his mom pee on one of them. Zuna gets her soul taken out, but before Pain goes, he needs the village to truly understand what Pain is. Even in the past, the leaf has gone through pain and hardships. However, Pain doesn't think that they know what Pain truly is, so he uses Almighty Push, and it's great. He was able to destroy most of the village with one move, and then Naruto comes in with the new costume and Sage Mode activated, with his squad, the music, and the pan out of the entire thing was great. 
Number 51 and 50, Origin of Pain and Meeting, from Naruto Shippuden, Episodes 173 and 172. Nagato decides to tell Naruto his story. He was born in a land full of war. Things were tough for him. Leaf Shinobi killed his parents who they thought were enemies. He killed them out of fear and rage. Had to leave his home due to food. He walked for a long time before knocking on the door, asking for food, but the man couldn't accept him in. But the window has a ton of bread, which I would have just stood outside like he either let me in or had to deal with my dead body. Nagato finds a dog and now has to feed both Conan finds him and allows him in the group. Yahiko, Conan, and Nagato only had each other. They had to steal to survive. Sucks they had to be this way, but it is what it is. Yahiko wants world domination, a world where there's no war and everyone can be happy. It almost seems too good to be true. This would be Nagato's dream. After Jirai trained them and left, the team did well for themselves, set out the Akatsuki, and had an entire group, but Hanzo came in and set up a trap. Hanzo wants Nagato to kill Yahiko. Yahiko throws himself to the kunai, says that Nagato would be the savior of the world, the one person who gave him his dream and the optimism for the future had died and Nagato no longer believe in there being a world where there's peace. He summons the ghetto statue and stabs the rods on his back. Number 49, the two students from Naruto Shippuden, episode 169. Naruto is on his way to meet Nagato, but is stopped by Shikaku and Inoichi to ask for backup. But Naruto seems to understand a little bit about pain now. Shikaku allows him to go because of Shikamaru. Back when he had to convince Naruto not to get all depressed, he told him that he sees Naruto as an important person and wants to follow him. Naruto wants to exact his revenge, but doesn't because he realizes that nothing in the world isn't all that simple. Like every nation in Naruto has done something messed up or bad. The only reason they leave is so peaceful was wars and how they profit from it, leaving the rain village to suffer the aftermath and creating hatred towards other nations and people would use violence back for their own vengeance. Number 48, the fourth Hokage from Naruto Shippuden, episode 168. Naruto finally meets his dad, Minato, the fourth Hokage. Naruto is happy to see him, but also pissed off for his sealing the nine tails inside of him. He had to suffer through so much just because he had it. But Minato had to seal it inside of him because of Madara. Tells Naruto that he's the one pulling the strings. Says that as long as there's shinobis around, there can't really be true peace. It's a pipe dream, and Naruto needs help in finding it. But Minato believes that Naruto will someday find it, saying goodbye to him, and has to finish his fight with Tendo Pain. He can use his sage mode and one of the rods to find Nagato in a paper tree, pulls out the shadow clones to overwhelm him. I love Naruto telling Pain to stop telling him to give up and hits Tendo with a Rasengan. Almost defeating Pain, he just needs to talk to him. Number 47, Tale of Naruto Uzumaki from Naruto Shippuden, episode 174. After Nagato finishes his story, he doesn't believe that this world isn't worth saving because hatred comes from the shinobi world, which makes it impossible for there to be true peace. So I love that Naruto won this fight by reading a goddamn book. Naruto doesn't kill Nagato to break the cycle of hatred and takes the word from the book and says it back to Nagato because he was the one that inspired Jiraiya. He wasn't able to believe in himself to find a way to bring peace. He instead brought destruction. Nagato's method will have more deaths, but peace will be achieved. Naruto wants Nagato to believe in him because he's gone through pain. The village is not treating him right, losing to Sasuke, losing Jiraiya. He didn't let any of those things stop him from believing in himself. Number 46 through 47 episodes from the War Countdown arc. I forgot about Naruto going to the island and getting a Nine Tails Chakra, and you know what? I loved it. For meeting Killer B, then his mom, and then saying goodbye to her. Naruto expects the island to be this nice island, but it's the Cloud Village's version of the Forest of Death. Naruto's first impression of B is that he's a meathead with weird rhymes. Naruto starts rapping for him, and he's decent at it. Probably better than B, though. B's not getting any better. Motoi tells how much of a hard time B had as well, but B just brushed off the eggs being thrown at him and kept doing his thing. Which is good on B for being like that, but also sometimes it can be a facade for some people to hide that they're suffering. Naruto has to fight his inner self because there's still a part of him where he thinks some of the villages still see him as a monster and weren't there for him when he was alone but now wants his autograph. But he can't have thoughts like this because he needs to believe in himself and hugs himself, accepting that everyone in the village has his back. While playing tug of war with the nine tails, he meets his mom and it's just a wholesome moment. Being able to fight with Mia's mom, ask her a bunch of things. She tells him how she met Minato through the academy. She was immediately bullied and called Tomato, and then later on the Red Hot Habanero, which is an awesome nickname. She hated her red hair but made her fall in love with Minato, Minato by finding her hair and saving her. Naruto was just eating up every second with her. During her birth, Madara came in to get her and take the Nine Tails out and summon it to the Leaf Village. And then every time they show this incident, it has the same cool animation of the very dark and bold lines. When it shoots the Tail Beast Bomb, Minato is able to teleport it away from the village, which is ridiculous. Minato's fight with Toby was awesome, and luckily it was 
Minato because if it was anyone else, then they would have lost the fight. Madara should have kept the chains. It was helpful to let people slip by and then catch them, sucking them up with Kamui. Minato is just a bit faster, and since he has no time to steal the Nine Tails anywhere else, he steals half of it in him and half of it in Naruto. But the Nine Tails impales both Minato and Kushina, trying to protect Naruto, and so they say everything that they want to Naruto, not to drink until you're old enough, and just anything a parent would say to their kids. She then says sorry to Naruto for making his life harder, but Naruto says it's okay knowing that his parents gave their lives to him. It's the best reason she could have given him, and it ends with her hugging him, thanking Naruto, and saying goodbye. Number 39, gotta see, gotta know, Kakashi Sensei's true face from Naruto episode 101. I think this is the best filler episode? I think. Well, I mean, I guess it's not filler anymore. Either way, Team 7 wants to see his face. And so they go as a team, it doesn't work. They go individually, it doesn't work. They're on a mission with a couple of stops. They go to a hot spring, and Kakashi has a mask on. They have clothes from the other team who are there to get the revenge because Kakashi disrespected them, and it ends in the same way. And then when Team 7 finally asks him to take it off, it's another mask. And then Naruto states, what the hell? kind of ending was that which is kind of a meta line for wasting their time and ours as well Number 38, the unison sign from Naruto Shippuden, episode 478. Yes, this episode is heavy with the flashbacks. However, it is the best news of it because it's about damn time that Naruto and Sasuke do the unison sign. This sign symbolizes friendship and honor to each other. Both Naruto and Sasuke did not make it back at the academy, now seeing and walking through both of their memories. And then there's this dripping noise throughout the entire episode and it's their arms. Their dominant arm is gone and blood is just dripping from it. Sasuke wanted to continue the cycle by fighting. Naruto broke the cycle of Ash ain't that by wanting Sasuke to join him. Throughout the series, Naruto kept wanting to be Sasuke's friend despite how much he does. Naruto never gave up on him being his friend. Seeing Sasuke take on so much hurts him. Number 37, Battle Formation, Ino Shikacho from Naruto Episode 33. Team 10 steps up and it's awesome because the entire time that you're with them, they're just too scared to fight. There's even one point where Neji finds them and Ino puts her fist up for a fight and then Neji notices that and then the team quickly runs away. Of course, Zaku calls Choji fat and Team Ino Shikacho helps out Sakura. Choji uses Human Border Jutsu to go after Zaku. Shikamaru shows his shadow possession Jutsu for the first time and Ino mind transfers to one of them. But then Sasuke wakes up and he is now a scary dude because the curse mark is all over him goes out there zaku and dislocates his arms but sakura stops him because he's not acting like sasuke and then the sound team leaves terrified as well number 36 tuning challenge rock lee versus sasuke from naruto episode 22 please introduction or not his introduction but introduction to his abilities and wanted to fight sasuke i always thought was really cool lee sees sasuke as someone who was born gifted because of a sharing gun lee had to work a lot harder to get where he is sasuke can't copy lee's speed and is about to perform the hidden lotus but but then Guy shows up with his turtle, hits Lee for using the Hidden Lotus before the exams even started. Guy just grabs your attention. He has a bowl cut, big bushy eyebrows, and a green jumpsuit. You just want to laugh at him, but also moves really fast behind Team 7 and claims to be Kakashi's rival. Both Guy and Lee have their power of youth, so immediately already love them. Number 35, goodbye old friend, I'll always believe in you from Naruto episode 114. Choji gets his moment by punching Jirobo's chest in and the episode plays it out as if Choji is going to die because there's these flashbacks to his childhood and how he couldn't make any friends but Shikamaru was the only one to come up to him and be friends with him. And then even after defeating Jirobo, he sees the tree that shows the others believing in him with arrows and message. Then it seems like his heart gives out due to eating the pills but this was all just a tease, he would be fine. It does feel like a cop out. See the flashbacks getting a cool moment would feel like choji is going out but then it just didn't happen for 34 and 33 losing is not an option and 360 degrees of vision the byakugan's blind spot for naruto episodes 117 and 16 now it's neji's turn his fire with kitomaru is kind of like a hunter watching its prey doing its work then when the predator knows everything about the prey he goes for the kill kitomaru somehow disappears quickly right in front of neji and then he summons his spider and the smaller baby spiders crawling down and neji one by one gets rid of them with the 64 palms and then he upgrades to the 128 palms rotation isn't working after one use kitomaru finds the blind spot and Neji has to run away and then he uses his second state curse mark which it looks pretty cool. He has a third eye and shoots his arrows more accurately but Neji's able to send his shark out through his mouth after purposely getting hit by an arrow but that's not good enough. Neji still has a one and losing is not an option. He gets close enough able to hit his shocker points and finally defeat him. 
Number 32, Deadlock, signing Shodown from Naruto, episode 96, signing Reunite and fight each other, or Tsunade and Jiraiya fight against Orochimaru, but it's mainly Tsunade. Jiraiya combines some of his oil with Gamabuta to create a giant firebomb jutsu. Orochimaru still has no arms, so he's fighting with just his mouth, which means swords coming out from his mouth, and Tsunade just punches the hell out of him. It's to a point where he'll be dead by this point, right? Because he goes flying to that giant sword and then drops down, but it's Orochimaru and he's in another body, so he'll go for now come back whenever he wants to and it was cool seeing another kaiju battle when there was already one in the previous arc i thought watching naruto for the first time that there'd be less of those large scale battles with giant animals but nope it's a part of naruto with the summoning dusanos and tailed beasts and then of course naruto hasn't forgotten about his promise with tsunade they go out and have a second battle only for there to be a kiss forehead and give him the first okage's necklace Number 31, Fake Out Shikamaru's comeback from Naruto episode 122. His fight with Toyuya is like any other Shikamaru fight. It's much more tactical. Toyuya is the best sound for member in terms of her second state curse mark. Look in her powers, she has a flute that can control three monsters with her own weapons. One of them eats Shikamaru's chakra, able to learn her finger placements when she was playing the flute, and even has a couple of fake outs and uses a light bomb to cast shadows on the summonings, but she just unsummons them, thinks that she's dying, but already has a shadow going around to possess her. Then she goes into her second state and casts a genjutsu on him but Shikamaru breaks one of his fingers to be free from the genjutsu and holds her with a shadow for about three episodes at least it wasn't as long as the tug of war between Orochimaru and the third Hokage Number 30, Zero Motivation, the guy with Cloud Envy from Naruto, episode 64. Shikamaru has no motivation at all, which is why he's so relatable. Everyone knows what it's like to not want to do something or just have no motivation for anything really. His fight and attitude towards Tamari is relaxed in the beginning, but because he doesn't want to lose, and in his words, especially to a girl, he needs to have a game plan. Also, my dad explains how he has an IQ over 200, so he's not an idiot, but he's just super lazy, sleeps in class, and doesn't put any effort. Starts using his shadow to get Tamari further towards the hole and uses his jacket to cast a shadow from above. Once he's got her, the shock on her face and everybody is always great. Nobody expected a lazy kid to somehow put on an entertaining match, but of course, he forfeits because it would be too much work, but it impresses the judges and the third Hokage because you don't have to win your match and the finals just need to impress and prove that you can be promoted to a tuning. Number 29, Unfulfilled Scream from Naruto, Shippuden Episode 79, Asuma and Shikamaru walked into an impossible situation and they paid the price for it. Cutting off Hidon's head didn't kill him, Kakuzu didn't help because he probably knew Hidon would be fine, reattaches his head, and the other two leaf ninjas, they have names but I forgot about them. Starts fighting Kakuzu and pretty much loses. Asuma and Shikamaru have to deal with Hidon once again and they almost lost the first time around, so the second round right after doesn't look good for them. It goes back to his ritual in the circle, I'm thinking someone's gonna help them right but he don't succeeds in stabbing himself and Shikamaru runs seeing his sensei die right in front of him one thing in Shibuden that I do appreciate on a second watch is that they kill off characters Asuma dying was kind of unexpected Jiraiya dying was much more obvious because of the bet with Hinata in the backstory they gave him Number 28, Truth from Naruto Shippuden, episode 141. This is still the biggest moment for Sasuke and change for his character. Madara tells him everything about Itachi. Killing Itachi would make him the hero that avenged his own clan, got the curse mark out of him, and Sasuke would awaken his manga go Sharingan. Even if Kishimoto didn't plan all of this out for Itachi, which he probably didn't, still somehow made it make sense. Sasuke's entire goal was to kill Itachi, and now that he's gone, where does he go from here? Vengeance, because after what hearing Madara said to him, he plans on destroying the Hidden Leaf Village. He could just kill the two elders and die but he's gonna kill the entire village. He doesn't care about them. He wants his brother and family back. He wants to exact his revenge on the leaf for causing his brother so much pain. Number 27, The Eight Tails vs Sasuke from Naruto Shibuden, episode 143. Team Taka walked in on a level 1000 boss battle because even teaming up on B doesn't really work out for them. Sasuke thinks putting him under Genjutsu will work, but B wakes back up because he has control of the Eight Tails. B then transforms into his tailed B state and Taka is pretty much not gonna get out alive. Jugetsu stops him for a bit, but he wasn't gonna dodge or tank an entire tailed beast bomb, which looked really cool. B almost kills Sasuke with his lariat, but Sasuke has Amaterasu and burns B until he stops screaming in agony. Karin almost gets burned by the Amaterasu. Sasuke can control it with one of his eyes and completely shut the black lames off as well. Tukutsu is just dripping water and Jugo stands tall with Sasuke. 
Number 26 and 25, Art and Clash from Naruto Shippuden, episodes 124 and 123. Deidara and Sasuke's fight isn't the most important thing in the series, kind of a side thing and roadblock for Sasuke to get by before getting to Itachi, but it's always stood out as being a really good fight. Toby gets sliced by Sasuke's sword, but he just gets up. Deidara decides to introduce some new clay inventions, like his big ass dragon or weirdly shaped plate things. I don't know what they're called, but Sasuke isn't amused by them. Sasuke had every single advantage. He uses lightning nature, which is invulnerable to earth nature. Anything that they did a threat at Sasuke, he could easily find a way out. The bombs that Toby set up, Sasuke was able to see chakra from it because of his Sharingan. They did a took one of his wings and then Sasuke took one of his. They did also has a vendetta against Itachi for seeing him and his Sharingan as art, which is why he goes after Sasuke to confirm that his art is better, but Sasuke just keeps on clapping back. And then I think he's the only person that dies because he just rage quits. He didn't want his art to be beaten, but at least it ends with his art because his art is... Number 24, The Terrifying Secret from Naruto Shippuden Episode 85. I feel like the studio that animates a show has a switch button. Kakashi is dealing with Hidon, but also with Kakuzu's hearts that are attacking him and Team Asuma. Choji and Ino don't really do much in this fight. They're just kind of there. Hidon is tricked by a shadow clone. Kakuzu and Hidon continue to have their fun banter. They need to be separated. Kakashi takes on Kakuzu in a good hand-to-hand -hand battle with some water clones and hidden lotus. While Shikamaru gets an amazing moment where he becomes the shadow. Has Hidon in a shadow possession once again. Number 23, the Sharingan revived Dragon Flame Jutsu from Naruto episode 30. Sasuke decides fear isn't gonna control him and puts up a really good fight with Orochimaru. Orochimaru is just slithering around really fast. Sasuke uses his fire style Dragon Flame Jutsu to burn his face away, but this was just a test for Sasuke. He mentions Itachi for the first time and plans to use Sasuke in the future, giving him a curse mark. Orochimaru right from the start was a great and menacing villain. He swallowed a scroll, put a seal on Naruto, put fear in all of Team 7, and Anko is worried he's in the exams and took over the body of a grass ninja so he was a perfect villain to show up Number 22, Puppet Fight 10 vs 100 from Naruto Shippuden Episode 26. This is Sakura's best moment of the series, having 3 minutes to get rid of Sasori, and at the very last second she crushes him with one blow. Get over here! Oh, and get over here, but wait there's more. Sasori puts himself back together, Yu gets her arm back, summons the 10 puppets that move with each of her fingers, and then Sasori just has to one up them and summon 100 puppets. This fight keeps escalating and it gets better every time. Sakura punches the hell out of them. Chiyo sucks, beats, and slices a lot of them. Chiyo hands Sakura some teeth to throw at Sasori, and she throws it so hard that there's a different animation for it. But then, wait, there's even more because Sasori's heart thing is gone and proceeds to stab Chiyo, but Sakura takes the hit and has a sword inside of her. Number 21, Beyond the Limit of Darkness and Light from Naruto Episode 79. Entire Leaf Village defends itself. Hinata's dad does a massive rotation. Kiba's mom and her dog who looks really cool go after some sand ninjas. Ino Shikacho dads are using their jutsus, kind of a tease to what Team 10 can do in the future. The music and heroes and speech to Orochimaru makes all of it work, showing no matter what the village will have their back and be okay by the end of it. Unlike Orochimaru who uses his followers and doesn't make them feel like they're a part of a team, all have the will of fire to protect and sacrifice themselves. Naruto meanwhile, is dealing with Gara and he opens up the Nine Tails Chakra. He goes in for a headbutt and makes himself and Gara bleed. There's a cool shot with the split image and then Naruto gets one last punch on him. Number 20, Confessions from Naruto Shippuden Episode 166. Hinata finally confesses to Naruto that she loves him. She's the only one to jump in and help out. And then the flashbacks were also good, just to contrast what would happen to her, but also seeing how much of the village saw Naruto as an annoyance rather than a kid or a human being. She attempts to get rid of the rods, but Pain keeps on slamming her until he stabs her with the rod, giving the impression that he killed her. She was willing to die for him and Naruto didn't even notice her until the war arc, or I guess the last movie. And then Naruto seizes and now knows pain, awakening the nine tails. Number 19, The Demon in the Snow from Naruto Episode 19. This episode was the one where I was like, okay, I want to watch and follow this show. I watched Shibuden first, but then was told to watch Naruto first. The episodes prior were good, but I wasn't sure if I was going to stick around for the long ass journey. This episode showed that it was much more than fighting or being a ninja. Naruto's words were able to cut deeper into any blade into Zabuza which he claims that he only saw Haku as a weapon, but after spending as much time with each other, there's bound to be much more than seeing him as a tool, probably saw him as a student, little brother or son, and while Zabuza is known as the demon of the hidden mist, he's still human, and then seeing him kill some of Gato's men, just his mouth holding a kunai and then eventually Gato, was awesome, getting to die next to Haku. 
number 18 two-man team from Naruto Shippuden episode 329. There was so much potential when the Nine Tails was introduced. Was he gonna help Naruto when he needed help? Does he see Naruto as an annoyance? Is he slowly releasing the seal by letting him use some of his chakra? So to see them go through so much by using each other, taking his chakra out, and now officially working together was awesome. Being a two-man team, I don't know how, but apparently opening up the seal to have new drip. This tail beast mode looks great. Running and beating down all the other tail beasts. Naruto gets to meet the other Jinjurikis. All are able to talk to each other. This reminds them of when Hagoromo split them up and said that all of them would meet one day again, which, you know, would be a long ass time because they're around for like eons essentially. Number 17, The Tale of Jiraiya the Gallant from Naruto Shippuden Episode 133. This episode still hurts. After all these years, it still hurts to watch. Jiraiya still wants to stick around and find out who the real pain is. Once he does, it's too late. Pain crushes his throat and sticks a bunch of rods into him. There has to be this painful inner monologue from him about not being able to save his teacher, friend, or student. He wasn't able to find the child of prophecy and the one that he thought was it turned out to have only brought destruction. He wanted the hero in his book to be just like the child of prophecy, but Naruto seems to be like this hero and confirms to himself Naruto is indeed a child of prophecy. Jiraiya writes a message on the frog's back and gets away and he sinks underwater with a smile on his face knowing that he fulfilled his purpose by finding the child of prophecy. His death was much more telegraphed two episodes on him and his bet with Tsunade but even knowing that it still hurts to watch. 16 following the master's shadow from Naruto Shippuden episode 153 Naruto still dealing with Jiraiya's death just kind of thinking about his time with them reading his books training with them and Tsunade is also dealing with it as well however she still has to be a Hokage get everyone at work on Pain's body have Shikamaru search for what the code means but eventually she breaks down when she's walking in the hallway these moments with Naruto and Tsunade are great spending the time to sit with them about Jiraiya's death Shikamaru goes to Kakashi about the code and all he's thinking about is 106 centimeters referring to Tsunade's giant boobs but Kakashi doesn't think that's what it means. Then he makes it to Naruto, though depressed. So Shikamaru takes him to see Kuranai. Her pregnancy is going well, but Naruto straight up roasts her. Shikamaru wanted Naruto to see that they need to grow up. It makes sense for Shikamaru to come back into the story. He knows what Naruto is going through. Sitting around and sulking won't do anything. They're gonna be the teachers one day grow up in order to become great shinobis like Asuma and Jiraiya. Number 15, Naruto's Ninja Handbook from Naruto, episode 78. The fourth OP made this episode great because Naruto spams his shadow clones and hit 1,000 years of death on Gara's ass. Then it explodes his ass. Naruto summons a bunch of clones to beat the hell out of him. He summons Kamabuda and then they both fight Gara and Shukaku. Takes his sword and chops off one of his arms. Sasuke's like, what the hell kind of battle is this? It turned into a kaiju battle. And then Naruto transforms into the Nine Tails for a better grip to hold on him. Like, not only is the new OP great, but the episode is paced better because previous three episodes weren't paced the best. Naruto uses a new jutsu that's a joke but uses it to explode an ass and then he summons everything that he learns. Number 14, The End from Naruto Shippuden Episode 138, Sasuke has tamed lightning. He shot his dragon flame fireball jutsu up to the sky so that it can create clouds above them. Plans to take advantage of the area around him to use lightning and kill Itachi was awesome. Kiden is a lightning dragon. Sasuke thinks he's won but Itachi is still alive and shows his final ability, the Susano. Sasuke can use way too much of his chakra and the curse mark takes over, leading a giant eight-headed snake that just spits out Orochimaru. He just loves coming out for mouth whether it's from his own mouth or not but Itachi puts a stop to this by sealing the snake with the Totsuka blade and then after this we all know how it ends he comes closer to Sasuke trying to get his eyes taps his forehead falling down and dying Sasuke has quote unquote won the fight thinking he's killed an evil person and brother to avenge his clan Number 13, an unrivaled match, Hokage Battle Royale from Naruto Episode 71. The third puts up a hell of a fight against the first and second Hokage, getting to see the wood style and water style jutsu used by them for the first time. Don't know how trees can grow out of the roof, but it doesn't matter because it looks cool. Enema is summoned, who is this cool looking monkey that can also transform into a pool for a weapon. He can extend and even bend the pool whenever he wants, place tags on the Hokage to explode, but since they're reanimated, they can come back. And then of course, there has to be a sword coming out of Orochimaru's mouth. And this is also the first time seeing the third Hokage fight. It means that he should be the strongest ninja in the village. So seeing him take off his Kage hat and clothes for his battle costume was really cool. Despite being old, he can still hold his own. But the Anbu members watching the fight says because of the old age, he can't summon more than three clones and other little things like that. My pain is still far greater than yours!
number 12 planetary devastation from Naruto Shippuden episode 167. So the animation might turn some people off about this fight. It's kind of wacky especially when Tendo gets hit but I didn't mind it. Love that Tendo punches the ground and it looks like a looney tune. Naruto has been taken over by the nine tails and he's getting more tails the longer the episode goes on. He's able to withstand the almighty push. Nagato is pushing his body for a planetary devastation which just sounds cool when you hear it. Naruto isn't able to beat the anger and hatred fills and pleads for help and of course the nine tails help so he can be free. Naruto starts going towards the seal to rip it off but Minuto comes in to help out. A master of the drunken fist. Number 11, The Beast Within from Naruto Episode 124, Drunken Fist Lee is the best. He's able to give Kimimaru a decent but fun fight and it's only hand-to-hand -hand combat. Kimimaru is confused due to the unpredictable nature of the movements. Lee falls down and blames him, sleeps during the battle and bamboozles Kimimaru. The guy describing Lee's incident to Tsunade when he accidentally drank sake was great but the Drunken Fist can't live on forever. Kimimaru snaps him out of it with a bone. That's when Lee starts struggling and the others as well are struggling with their fights until the backup arrives and it's an amazing backup with great music. Music, the Sand 3 split up to help out Shikamaru, Kiba, and Lee. Number 10, a plea from a friend from Naruto episode 133. They needed three episodes of padding things out for this amazing fight. Naruto punches the hell out of Sasuke, sends him underwater and creates a hole in the water. There's some talk about not being able to understand each other because Naruto had no family to begin with, but whatever, let's get back to the fight. Sasuke has a third Kama or Tomo for his Sharingan and is able to see Naruto's movements before his attacks. Comes out of the water like missiles ready to hit Sasuke, grabs him by his feet and starts swinging him. Sasuke uses fireball jutsu to burn him away and then power drives Naruto on his head. But that's not it. Naruto gets back up with a Nine Tails Chakra and punches his face, starts running like a fox on all fours, and grabs Sasuke by using Nine Tails Chakra, and then forces Sasuke to use the curse mark. Did there need to be three episodes where mostly nothing happened? Maybe, probably not, but it's still a great fight. Number 9, Nine Tails Captured from Naruto Shippuden Episode 165, Pain's Cycle of Hatred Speech. Everyone knows about this. It's impossible to have peace in a world where shinobis exist, which causes conflict and hatred. And even if you do somehow stop all the conflicts and wars, there's still someone or a group out there still wanting vengeance. Not everyone's gonna want to be on the same page. That's why he wants to wipe out all the nations and rebuild the world until the cycle of hatred repeats itself. The cycle of hatred is systematic and almost unfixable unless one side gets wiped out so that there's no more vengeance to even seek. Pain's better will have more people killed but lead to peace and i love naruto's response he doesn't know how to bring peace doesn't have a response which he usually has something to say back at his enemies but this time he had nothing because all he cared about was his village Number 8, Team 10 from Naruto Shippuden Episode 82. Usually when the animation changes, it's for a fight, but in this case, it's for Shikamaru's headspace. There's a funeral for Asuma, and Shikamaru hasn't really said anything about it, how he feels, or letting it out. The shogi games that he plays with his dad was great, just holding on that shot of them playing and talking about Asuma. He lashes out, but his dad just tells him just to let it out. Can't hold in all that anger, you're gonna have to let it out at some point. Shikamaru begins to break down and cry. And then Shikamaru putting and fixing the shogi pieces, scrambling in his brain on how to get his revenge, because he can't let it go. He gathers Shoji and Ino to go get the revenge. Tsunade stops them but Kakashi has other plans and goes with them because they're not gonna stop. Number 7 and 6, The Final Battle in Naruto and Sasuke from Naruto Shippuden, Episodes 476 and 477. Round 2 of Naruto and Sasuke is also great and better than the first fight. Callbacks to their first fight with Naruto throwing him and then seeing every form of them was a nice touch when they first clashed with each other. There's no music at the start, hear the waterfall and fighting, start off with hand-to-hand -hand stuff and then gradually have them use their power forms. Some flashbacks between the fighting but I don't really mind it here, creating a natural disaster. Then both fight at their lowest form, call back to Naruto's Uzumaki Barrage, Sasuke and uses Chidori to hit what he thought was the real Naruto but turned out to be a fake because Naruto put less chakra in himself. Sasuke just beats his face for like 15 seconds or something like that and they fight a long time until the sun sets, slowly zooming in on them with no strength but still fighting. Sasuke steals some of the Nine Tails chakra and proceeds to kill his one and only friend. Damon gives Naruto the encouragement that he needs to dodge and punch Sasuke, restating what he said about being his one and only friend. Both use their final moves, Sasuke is Chidori with Amaterasu and Naruto's Rasengan that gets bigger with everyone's hands helping him out and then right before that there's a great moment with with Naruto bumping his fist with a nine tails to say goodbye just in case he doesn't make it. Number 5, Kakashi vs Obito from Naruto Shippuden Episode 375. This fight is slightly better because it's able to tell a story just by fighting. Kakashi and Obito know each other super well and are able to constantly counter each other. Past fight cutting back to the present was done really well, showing how much they've changed but also how similar they still are. But in the end, when Minato tells them to make the unison sign, present day Obito pushes past Obito back to get rid of the past bonds in order to create new ones in the infinite Tsukuyomi. It doesn't do anything new in terms of new jutsus, it's a simple fight with two people that know each other really well 
and still do, but with slight differences. Onoki. Number 4, Madara Uchiha from Naruto Shippuden Episode 322. Madara arriving in the war, getting rid of most of the entire unit was badass on his part. You can't introduce him and not have him do cool stuff. He runs an entire unit and is unfazed while some of the allied forces are sweating because one man is running at them. Madara whips their ass, catches a kunai with a tag and tags it on another ninja to push him towards other ninjas. Brings out his Susano. Naruto uses the Rasen Shuriken but had way too much power and awakened his Renegon. And then he drops a goddamn meteor right on them which shocks everyone. Anoki is the only one to fly towards it and attempts to stop it with Gara's help as well and they both succeed. However, Madara decides to drop another one, wiping out most of them. Like this is a way to introduce a character that's been mentioned a bunch of times and regarded as a powerful shinobi. <laughs> Number 3 and 2, Gara vs Rock Lee, the power of youth explodes. In the 5th gate, a splendid ninja is born from Naruto episodes 48 and 50. This fight is still awesome. Lee going up against Gara, who's never been touched before, was bound to have something cool happen. Lee dropping the weights is always great, just making him really fast and inch by inch, just getting closer to hitting Gara until he does, which makes him first person to land a hit on him. He uses the primary lotus. Lee has to open up the 8 inner gates in order to defeat Gara. He's got veins on his forehead. His eyebrows are even bushier than before before, hits Gara back and forth and opens the 5th gate for the hidden lotus, but it's not enough. Lee gets hit, damn burial, as Gara attempts to go for the kill, a guy steps in, making Gara the winner, but Lee isn't a quitter, still wants to prove that he's still a splendid ninja, but he already has. Despite losing, everyone who watched this fight came out loving Lee because he was able to hit and damage Gara in a way no one has seen at this point, just already making him a splendid ninja. And number 1, Hero of the Leaf from Naruto Shippuden episode 175. So I wanted to see if there were any episodes that weren't a battle in the top 10 entries and most of them were battles but episode 175 from Shippuden is the best episode because Naruto has mostly what he wants. He wanted the acknowledgement of the village since the beginning of the series he would have played pranks to get their attention but almost everyone found him to be annoying. This time he got everyone's attention by saving the village from pain. He's now known as a hero. I love the montage showing the past arcs and hearing the village just kind of talk about him. At first they're a bit apprehensive about him being a ninja and don't really see a future for him but then each arc that passes by they start to believe in him when he uppercut neji everyone in the crowd was shocked to see an annoying kid with the nine tails inside of him be a hyuga member when he couldn't get sasuke back and learn of jirai's death the village was worried about him the only thing he hasn't achieved yet is becoming hokage which he's pretty much there already he just needs to not be a genin because he's still a genin could have used the anger and hatred in the nine tails to destroy the village for how badly they treated him but he doesn't want that he loves the village and wants the village to accept him and as usual, I will be ranking all the seasons. Here's the thing about Naruto. There are seasons, but some seasons have just like entire arcs or some of the seasons have two arcs in them. Like season one of Naruto part one has the Land of Waves arc and like the first 14 episodes of the Chunin exams. So instead of ranking the seasons, I'll be ranking all of the arcs, including the filler arc. I've kind of 56 arcs. I'm including arcs that have two or more episodes that follow the same story. So in dead last, what I think is the worst arc ever is Jiraiya's handbook arc. This entire arc is just fan fiction, you have Toby Hyuga, everyone's alive, which means that Naruto and Sasuke should be happy, but Sasuke isn't, and it's a redo of the Pain and Sasuke retrieval arc, but done horribly. The Mecha Naruto arc is just bad as well. It has a really cool fight, but everything else surrounding it, Orochimaru building it, the whole point of this arc was to promote the game, and it's like, okay, don't really care about that either. Buried Gold arc is just a big waste of time. Tsunade wants Naruto, Kiba, and whoever else is on the team just completely waste their time because they need to learn how to work as a team and the treasure wasn't even treasure it was bills for like all the services in the village the quest for the fourth Hokage's legacy or whatever again just another big waste of time and why have it in between the pain arc i don't know why they took two weeks off to be like let's have an arc about minato i don't know like why curse the warrior arc at first i was interested because it seemed interesting and there supposedly is a ghost which there is the more it goes on the more i thought to lose interest they deal with like this one dude that kakashi fights and naruto goes missing or dies they meet people that i don't care about like it really should have been about the ghost land of rice fields arc sakura gets some growth which is good because she needs it and then everything else is okay like the fake kabuto and it's kind of the same mission that Tsunana gave shikamaru but now it's just jiraiya naruto and sakura the peddler's escort mission i'll be honest i forgot all about this arc what i do remember is that there's criminals and naruto has to escort a bunch of merchants and herb to another village that's it don't really know or care much about this arc the tenchi bridge arc 
pacing is just goddamn just the biggest issue in this arc there's a simulation episode so just to waste our time there's a hot spring episode because i don't know why sai is okay i don't really care about him but his abilities are cool yamato is pretty cool as well we have the mouth of snakes versus the four tails which was a pretty cool fight but that's the only good thing about this arc sunagaku arc this is essentially a sequel to the sasuke retrieval arc because now the leaf is helping out the sand gara student is being kidnapped being taken by these four people which then turns and combines their powers together to create this generic looking tech looking guy thing he is here for gara and the ending is like half filler half canon but like half of it is what the hell is this and then turns into okay this is kind of cool now mizuki tracking arc apparently this guy had ties to orochimaru he turned into a big ass tiger and had a wife and everything who hoped that he would turn back but that day never came and then there's the legendary stupid brothers because you know they have to be in there but i don't really care about this arc it's okay in naruto's footsteps arc or just the filler tuning exams arc at first it was really cool tsunade wanted to draw out the akatsuki by having this exams nothing really came out of it and then it also ends like the lamest way where everyone's like okay give up now and i guess everyone that passed but kind of not will just be promoted at least there's lee versus shira which is a pretty good fight in a filler arc Ooh, the seven tails is a super likable character the minima memory arc apparently this guy did not lose his memory at all because it was super obvious both neji and tsunade saw it except for naruto because he wants to believe that there's good in everyone and there is because now memo betrays his bandit and sacrifice himself the land of tea arc is just all about running kid has to run and run until he needs to save like a family or something or keep them on a bridge whatever it is but this kid has a brother named ibiki and he's you know not the most nicest person but he is because now he's proud of his younger brother for growing up the 12 garden ninja arc this arc has zombies they're moving blue skin you know just white eyes clearly zombies it's not i mean it is weird but this show also has aliens and water style dragon jutsus so it's not like you know weird zombies sure sora is an okay character kind of like naruto in terms of being alone and being an outcast and he also has the nine tails chakra inside of him and then asuma gets some screen time because you know he's a good character the team minato arc this arc is in between the war arc i think episodes 4 16 and 4 17 it's just more of team minato back in the academy obito being jealous kakashi though being cool ren is there you know just more of that the konohamaru arc again just more of konohamaru stuff it's episodes 4 22 and 4 23 again just why i have two weeks of that no idea but more of konohamaru being like i'm naruto's rival i'm his best friend and all that the hanabi arc again in between the war arc 389 and 390 he loves her bigger sister Hinata we see how hard it is to be a Hyuga because both of their fathers are really strict and hard on them more Hyuga stuff but don't really care and it's okay Tintin arc apparently she has her own arc and the dream world and 427 and 428 both are about her dream and how she wants to be acknowledged by the village selling weapons that's it but there's also Guy and Lee in summer outfits because why not it makes no sense the war filler arc these episodes were spread throughout like 280 90 ish and then all the way to 3 tens but there's some good stuff you know in Tarun, that episode was pretty good the clone traps those are really good data is always amazing but then we also have the swordsman filler arcs don't really care about them aside from their swords we have an episode about the allied moms because a bunch of sumo wrestlers show up during the war super random we have a hayate and his girl episode that's fine what else do we have oh Conqueror. he gets a moment of chio cool i don't know why that wasn't canon but okay and then the weather girl who was pretty cool so starting from here from number 37 7 through 1. All of these arcs I either like are pretty good or just great. So the Gentetsu arc is a very predictable like story because this guy obviously saved those kids from that burning building. But then we have this guy who wants revenge but his revenge would be for nothing because he was saving kids. But it's fun just seeing quote unquote villain not be the villain. The third great beast arc. Not gonna lie. I only like this arc because of Guy and Lee. I think there's a challenger in the village and beats Lee or Guy or something or Guy defeated their father and now they want revenge but it was all a miscommunication yakumo arc it is good but the only issue is current i should have just been more transparent because this girl draws her paintings and these paintings come to life and eventually put the whole village in a genjutsu seems really cool but also really op the konoha plans we capture arc this arc is mainly yeah i guess it's useless because in the end there's no real big threat or bombs this guy named geno was supposed to destroy the village but over time kind of stopped and then after meeting naruto both bond over ramen and he loves his own son naruto reminds him of and so that's why he turns his bombs into a scavenger hunt paradise life on a boat arc there's a lot of episodes that i don't care about but you have guy 
Kai and Kakashi's internal rival episode, eating mushrooms, which sounds good. Ghost ship, obviously, gotta have it. Pirates, of course, fishing, because why not? Which I thought would be boring, but you know what? Naruto hoping this guy out for a fish was quite entertaining. Naruto has an imposter, which just looks like a big ass barbarian. And then Naruto has to get married because Jiraiya, like, I think not pinky promise, but was like, okay, I beat you, but I'm not gonna marry you. And now years later, finds out Naruto is his pupil and is like, okay, marry this girl. The past arc, again, just a bunch of like small stories throughout 20 ish episodes. We have the Aruka 3 episode where Naruto was just treated horribly. We have Inari catching back up, which that episode was okay. I was like, oh man, I just wanted to see Inari like do something in the present, not in the past. We have Naruto being sick, which is super kind of relevant now. We have the two and a half year training with Naruto and Jiraiya for some reason. It's kind of pointless. They just use Rasengan. That's it. We have cats put on cat ears to talk to cats and have cat paws and whatnot. Really fun, adorable episode. Kakashi's love song falls in love with this one lady but then lets her go because she's a criminal there's a ghost guy that died twice the akatsuki arc so i actually don't know what to call half of 346 and then all of 348 and 347 about how gahiko set up the old akatsuki but then died and then nagato took over it's kind of the same stuff that we've seen kind of retreading the same things but then we also get new stuff so it's like, okay you know what i like it kaima capture arc we have this monster girl who looks like a sea monster and naruto treats her pretty well she doesn't like being a monster she's being experimented on by Kabuto and of course Orochimaru and we get some uncle screen time which she should have been more in the series because she has ties to Orochimaru and she just seems like a cool character and then both Shino and Ino are just there because maybe the voice actors were available or I don't know but they're just kind of there. Kurosuke family arc so this guy has a lightning blade and he's not the most interesting character. He has a casket which I thought was basket case from the movies but no it's this little boy or girl that really likes him but then the best part is Lee his love for curry and drunken fistly you gotta love it every time he shows up it's always great gonsu cookie arc this is the bounty hunters arc and this arc feels completely different which i welcome because there's a lot of episodes so any variation of the lore or just anything else that's not ninjas that you know what pretty much like bounty hunter wants to prove his innocence and then we have also another bounty hunter hunting this guy and then the thief that the team are going after is connected to that guy so it's just going around in circles but it's a fun and different arc the shikamaru arc i'm not gonna lie i kind of expected more because the mission he goes on to search for a sai and his team i really couldn't care for this main guy that wants to unify the world by shinobis sure okay but the most interesting parts were shikamaru at the village doing his work sitting on a job doing paperwork just how things are like after the war ashura and Indara arc again this is like the stage of six paths slash hakuromo slash kaguya arc she's an alien that arrived and saw conflict just to prevent all of that she ate fruit and became the mother of all chakra hakuromo and Hamura don't really want this and seal her away. He set up the whole like Ninja Creed stuff and then Black Zetsu came along and ruined everything. Kind of corrupted Endara, wasn't a successor, created the reincarnations, which again, I don't really mind much. The Kakashi Anpu arc, Kakashi still washing his hands because all we see is blood. We get to see Yamato or Tenzo have some things in here. I didn't expect and was kind of bored by it. It's fine, but it wasn't really all too interesting. Danso's again, a piece of shit because he has to be. And then this arc is kind of like, it's good. I like it but especially the jonin we're just showing everything now and then like the last episode is mainly recap as well and then we see the uchiha massacre which again we've seen a bunch of times the itachi arc is slightly better but again we know most of it from the uchiha massacre which we have to see again it's better animated but it's like come on i don't want to see this again on a cat mission which is kind of ridiculous and confirms that there are cats that can get high drunk and have their own like system and stores and then we see some new akatsuki stuff like david and sasori going out there Orochimaru and then Kakasu and Hidon meeting for the first time. The three tales of parents arc. Gurren is the best part about this arc because she is a really good character. Very sympathetic cares about this kid. She has an amazing theme and her crystal style is really cool but it does go on for a bit too long because most of the girls they redo the same seal two times in a row. Then we also have Deidara and Toby. Their fun scenes together getting the three tales. The star guard arc. This star breeds greed and power in his village. It's a good arc just about that about power and greed. The childhood arc was just a really well done arc just seeing a young Jirai still being pervy Naruto being Naruto being punished bullied and having to find his own food Kakashi being alone as well Gara being alone just all these damn kids not growing up the best Killer B Rapudin while I was expecting a lot more rapping from him the actual story of gathering all the tail beasts and then having matching costumes was really good the Sasuke arc pretty interesting and good but then the more it went along the more I just start caring less about it but again what's keeping it up here is the life after the war arc just seeing how Shikamaru is Naruto 
one of them. This is after the movie. The Naruto cares about Hinata. Sasuke still looks pretty damn cool. And then apparently there's this clan that uses blood and has these like eyes explode human beings and control them. And apparently they were rivals with the Uchiha, but we've never heard of them. Bikochu arc, Naruto, Shino, and some other people search for this bug for Sasuke's scent. They find it and they lose it because they have to. There's this bug clan which were rivals with Shino's clan. Again, just never heard of them. But Hinata gets her moment with her weird but also really cool version of the 64 palms. The wedding arc. It's a really fun, wholesome arc to end off the entire show. You have everyone that's involved looking for a gift as a mission. Naruto asking Ruka to be his father was a really touchy moment. And then to end off with them being married and walking off. The six tales are Urukara is a good character. He doesn't want to be involved because his teacher saw him as a monster and burden only, which he doesn't want to repeat. But eventually he's like, okay, you know what? I will be your teacher. However, there's no happy ending for him because Pain shows up and just kicks his ass. The war arc. This arc initially was like very low, but looking back on it, I do like it. However, there's still, you know, it's too long, too much characters to be involved. Madara's end was lazy. The speech at the beginning was like, why? Neji dying was like why only him however I don't really mind Kaguya also having his moment was really cool Hanzo and Mifune that fight was actually pretty damn good about just being true to yourself we have A flashback to B and Minato all of the Kages and Forho Kages showing up that was really cool Madara arriving was perfect Naruto and the Nine Tails finally working together Kabuto sure Izanami just another forbidden jutsu Obito being revealed is awesome team 7 reuniting doing their summoning and then being the final team to fight off against Kage was really cool and then of course the final battle so there's a lot more good than bad the power arc nicely animated decent story about a couple trying to be a couple again this special kid that's special for some reason it is a bit weird because Kabuto looks weird and he's testing out jutsu but whatever the five Kage summit arc seeing the other Kages and having the meet was really cool just seeing how they run their own village Sasuke is going more towards darkness because he's killing the samurai awakening Susano using a Matarasu burning the fourth Kage finally dealing with Donzo. Sakura's plan is real stupid. Her plan and her involvement is what makes this arc like, okay, why is this in here? It really doesn't need to be here. It really bogs down the arc. The search for Tsunade arc. Itachi and Kasame show up and immediately show their dominance, but run away because Jiraiya stuck them into a toad mouth and Itachi is tired from using his eyes. There's the balloon train, which can be boring, but you know what? I liked it all the way through. This would be Tsunade's best written arc or just the best version of her being written on here because later on it's like she's cool but you know she's just kind of there giving out missions and then we get another kaiju battle with the frog snake and slug the itachi pursuit arc sasuke kills orochimaru which is still the most maybe not the most shocking but definitely up there of like oh i did not expect him to kill orochimaru like that he has his own team now naruto and his squad comes in to search for them they and sasuke have a really good fight about art and then toby is madara tuning exams kind of shocked that this isn't high mainly because there's that large stretch of like training episodes which were fine to good but it definitely was like okay can we just get to the final rounds but we have more training and hospital with Gara and Lee having Lee Neji and just other characters to shine Konoha crush the only thing that's not good is the tug of war like god damn do not come back to it but the fight with the Kages was really good the leaf defending itself was awesome Naruto summoning Kamabuta and then Heba and Gara was awesome the land of waves arc is still a really good arc just kind of setting up well hold on maybe not everything but ninjas being as tools and weapons that would be true throughout the entire series because Madara saw Obito as a weapon and tool, Zetsun used Madara as a weapon and tool, Zabuza saw Haku as a weapon and tool but he really did like him a lot and saw him as more than just a tool. It maybe goes on for a bit too long because there's episodes where stuff happens but stuff doesn't happen, pacing issues aside from that it's a really good start. The Kaze Kage rescue arc, Gara is taken by Deidara and Naruto has to go save him. Sasori is the best part about this arc, him just being a product of war and you not being able to tell him the truth made him not want to be human being a puppet they did is also awesome just kind of talking shit showing his art kamui gets introduced through kakashi and then guy is always great to have around because he's just a great friend faded battle between brothers their fight at first is very slow very like why is there mostly 15 minutes of recap and then finally having a battle between the eyes and then telling the story of madara okay cool but let's get to the fight and once it does it's a pretty damn good fight kirin awesome susano awesome what else orochimaru's head snake thing awesome and then the truth which would change Sasuke's character tale of Jiraiya the gallant arc child of prophecy Jiraiya finding Nagato training them believing that he could be the savior of the world but he only brought destruction him dying still hurts it really really hurts and then the six paths of pain was awesome pain is 
what made the show kind of more mature for shinobi war countdown this is everything from the boat to the water killer b the wrapping stuff which gets a bit weird but whatever meeting his mom was wholesome and amazing finally getting to meet her and then saying goodbye was awesome toby versus minato was awesome as well kasame is a really cool character even after death guy opening the seventh gate and finally acknowledging kasame number three will be the shikamaru shubuden arc or akatsuki suppression or hidan and kagazu arc shikamaru really comes to his own in this arc because he loses his sensei and then he exact his revenge take kakashi with them because why not the fight was awesome him burying kidon like six feet deep or whatever that was really cool but then of course this is the naruto show comes in with his rasen shuriken and just needles inside kakazu's body number two will be the sasuke retrieval arc choji and neji not dying felt like a cop out because it was kind of set up to be hey this is their last moment and it's really cool and they're dead but then they don't either way choji kiba neji shikamaru and naruto's fights were all pretty damn good lee showing up for dragon fist awesome san 3 showing up awesome final valley but then there's those three episodes that are like just padding out for the final fight and then number one is obviously paints of salt but i believe is the best in my favorite arc it has everything konohamaru badass moment kakashi quote-unquote dying still trying to figure out the mystery of pain buddha fuda torturing doesn't work naruto showing up was still goddamn awesome him defeating all the pains pain speech still amazing that wacky animation still awesome naruto talking to nagato about the book and everything his backstory of growing up in war all of it is good and yes him bringing back all those characters does feel like okay why are you like backpedaling but it leads up to naruto being the hero of the leaf so you know what i don't care naruto is finally acknowledged as the hero and that was it for every naruto episode rank it is now september 5th five six days of recording give me about a month to complete this entire video it was supposed to be two months by the way but then i got distracted by these goddamn yakuza games but either way there were some entries where i had to go through it really quickly because if i were to talk about all 720 episodes for one minute then the video would be 12 hours long and i know i would not watch a 12 hour video so i'm gonna try to go for half that time six hours maybe a little over i don't know but hopefully it's around six and a half hours I grew up in Naruto, it had way more pacing issues and writing for some of the narrative beats weren't done too well like Sakura stuff with Sasuke and Kaguya just showing up but it has a lot of highs. Pain, Madara's introduction, Orochimaru, Naruto being able to earn the respect of the village. There are ups and downs and also this is me kind of closing the book on Naruto after not watching it for 5 years and then revisiting it. I'm glad that I did because it brought me back to waking up at 6am 2 hours before school just to watch an episode. The relatability of being alone, depressed, acknowledgement life not being fair because you're not born with a special ability or being born with ability and having to live up to it can there really be true peace being oblivious to a person that's really interested in you and of course talk no jutsu all these themes still hold up naruto isn't the best anime or series but having grown up with it it remains sentimental to me so that is it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching